Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Chapter 1 X769, Kingdom of Fiori, Unknown Underground Lab As Jack slowly woke up, he lifted his head with a tired face. He was now five years old, and he had been the victim of torture for as long as he knew. In the beginning, it wasn't awful as there were other children along with him. Of course, he didn't wish for them to be captured and tortured just like him. However, having some people to talk to while you were slowly healing from your injuries helped ease the pain. The ones experimenting on them were researchers of a dark guild. Jax didn't precisely know what they were researching, but he knew that by using certain rituals, they were hoping to awaken the magic potential in ordinary people. All of the children who had been abducted and experimented on had never shown any signs of magical possibility. By going through the various rituals, they were hoping to find a way to awaken more mages. As for a reason for their research? Jax had no idea. He only knew two things. First, it hurts a lot. The rituals were often through blood, and the dark mages made various markings on the victim's body. So, for each ceremony, they would bleed him to fuel the ritual's power, and they would cut him up to make various symbols on his body. The first time he arrived in this underground lab, Jax couldn't even walk. Now that he had grown up, he knew that it had been at least three or even four years since they abducted him. The other children Jax met during those years were countless, and the ones who made it back after a ritual were minimal. He wasn't stupid. He knew that most of the children who went through the ceremonies never made it back alive, and he was merely lucky to be still breathing. To this day, from the thousands of children who had been present in the past, merely ten of them survived. The ten of them knew each other but never saw one another due to the door and the walls, which blocked their vision. However, he knew one thing, their number was decreasing and decreasing fast. Finally, two weeks later, as he was in a depressing mood, all alone in his cell with no one left to talk with, he heard the steps of one of the researchers. Considering he was the last one present in the cells, he knew that everyone else had already died. However, at this point, going through torture one day after another for who knows how long, already numbed Jax to the pain of loss and physical pain. He didn't feel anything at this point. In the last few rituals, he never screamed or moved under the knife of the various dark mages as he didn't feel anything anymore. As the cage's door slowly opened under a screeching sound, a bald man covered with a dark robe and a staff in his hand entered the cell. He first used binding magic before slowly pulling him towards the ritual room. It didn't take long as they arrived at the room three minutes later. At this point, Jax was bruised from all the bumps and was bleeding from the various sharp edges there was on the ground. As they entered the room, another mage appeared next to the bald one and got him up to tie him to a big flat stone. He knew that this was the ritual stone as he had been on it countless times. However, this time, he knew that this would be the final ritual because dried blood covered the ground, and he could hear the mages talk between themselves. Recently, mages of the fairy tale guild has appeared in the surroundings. They have been looking for us, and we can't get any more test subjects. After this last experiment, we will have to move the base. We don't have much time before they find us. So, let's get started. In ten minutes, we will be leaving this base. Said the mage with a white and red robe and a necklace made of small animal skulls. All right, we don't have much time. Let's get started. Said the other mages as they approached Jax and started to cut him to create the various marking necessary for it. As Jax was bound to the stone plate, the mages started to rapidly make the various markings on his skin by cutting him out. The markings were deep enough just to be able to draw blood from him, which started to drip down onto the cleaned white ritual stone. As the blood dripped on the stone's grooves, it slowly started to light up with the help of the other mage's magical power. Once they finished carving up the markings on his skin, they continued. All right, it is time, carve his eyes out. The mage with the white and red robe said chillingly. Yes. They answered as they reached out towards another instrument that Jax had never seen them utilize before. As Jax heard the words, he immediately closed his eyes. 
He knew that even if he didn't feel any pain from the carving they did on his body, he wouldn't be able to handle it if they were to carve his eyes out. However, no matter what he could do, they would continue with their ritual. As such, they forced his eyes open before they inserted the instrument right under his eyeball and popped it out. Under the cries of pain of Jax as he felt his eye pop out of its socket, he cried tears of blood as the mages who didn't care one bit about his pain continued with the ritual. After taking his eyes out, they left them on each side of his head as they continued the carving. After what seemed like an eternity under this pain, they finally slashed a straight line from above the left eye in the middle of the forehead, which stopped right above the left cheek. Once they completed the carvings, the mages circled the ritual stone and Jax, who was still bound on it and started chanting in a language he had never heard of before. As they were chanting, Jax's body began to glow in a white light, which seemed to have excited the mages as they continued their chant with even more enthusiasm. Half a minute later, as they stopped chanting, a white cocoon had appeared all around Jax, and when they tried to come closer as they wanted to leave with Jax, who was the only successful test subject, they were repelled by the white light as the mage burned his hands upon trying to take him off the ritual stone. Frowning, the leader of the mages had his subordinate prepare to move the entire stone. However, they weren't successful as two mages from Fairy Tail appeared at the entrance and started to attack them with weird purple fire magic and smoke magic. As they entered the laboratory with great caution after having taken down the mages in the room, they saw a bright white light on a stone platform. They could see through the glow as they saw a young boy with silver hair with blood flowing from his body and two eyes on the side of his head bound to the platform. Chapter 2 as the two fairy tale guild mages wondered what to do, Jax had stopped feeling pain as he was now in a bright white space. Nothing was present in the white area. No matter how far he looked into the distance, he could only ever see a white light. However, everything stopped as ten statues with five grooves in each of them appeared in front of him. Each statue had a different picture engraved on it. The first one was white, and just by approaching it, Jax could feel a gust of wind blowing through his hair. As he touched it, he understood that the statues the silver-haired boy saw were seals, and the one he touched was the seal of air magic. The next one was of the color blue, and as he approached it, he could feel himself get a little wet, which he understood to be the seal of water. Afterwards, he continued to look at the other seals. The brown seal was of the earth magic. The red seal was of the fire magic. The orange seal was of lightning. The purple seal was of the sound. The pink one was of fairy or healing magic. The green one was of nature magic followed by a yellow and a black seal, which represented light and dark magic. After he went through the ten different magic seals, an immense pressure fell on him as the seals one after another entered his mind through his forehead. As each of them entered, he received information on the magic as it crammed itself in his mind as the seals entered without any stops. As Jax had a massive headache, a soothing wave passed through him, which seemed to have healed his headache as he instantly calmed down and asked himself. How can I see? They dug out my eyes. He thought with a frown on his face. However, as if the white space knew what he was thinking, a mirror appeared right in front of him, and for the first time in his life, he could see himself. He had long silver hair that reached in the middle of his back, fair but dirty skin as he could only clean himself with a water bucket they gave him once every week. At the beginning of the ritual, the mages had torn off his clothes, so he didn't wear any. So, one could see how skinny he was. However, the most striking were the two pale blue eyes. As Jax was looking at himself, he looked in the white void in front of him and asked what was on his mind. Who are you? And thank you. However, the only reply Jax received was a single written sentence that appeared in front of him. If you want to know who I am, collect the five pearls for each of the ten seals, and we will meet. As the being simply waved off the thanks he gave, Jax understood that he finally had a goal for the future as long as he managed to leave the underground lab. A moment later, a bright white light appeared in his vision, which blinded him and forced him to close his eyes. As he opened his eyes, still lying down on the ritual stone, he was surprised to see that none of the mages came to torture him for a bit before moving him. 
However, he understood as he turned his head to the right and saw the unconscious dark mages and two unknown mages dressed in what he could guess to be ordinary clothes as they weren't wearing any mage robes. As Jax frowned, wondering who they were, both of them came forward and helped him break the bindings which were holding him. Immediately, as he was wondering if they would let him leave freely, they started to talk to him. Hey kid, are you okay? The man with a cigar in his mouth asked as he finished unbinding him. Why why yes, I I am f fine, Jax answered the man as he turned to try to get up. Jax had learned how to talk in the few years the mages had imprisoned him. Thanks to it, he had been able to speak with the other kids around him. Once, there weren't enough cells, so they had mixed the children, and his cellmate had been kind enough to teach him how to talk since he knew before being imprisoned. Unfortunately, only six months later, he was taken for a ritual and never came back. However, the last time he had managed to talk to someone was a long time ago, as the other children in the cells never had the energy to talk too much. Moreover, usually, the first ones tortured by the mages were the ones talking. So, can you tell us what happened here? The other man asked as nicely as he could. T they captured us to do experiments on how to awaken the magical potential of people without any magic. They have been testing rituals on me and the others for a long time, and I am the last one alive. The others all died at some point. Jack said as he pointed to the ground, which was completely red from dried blood. The two mages, hearing his words, looked sick as they looked around in extreme disgust and fear as they saw the dried blood all around them. Afterwards, they looked at the young boy, sitting there silently without moving an inch, fearing that they would kidnap him to continue testing on him. Kid, do you know where your parents are? The man with a cigar asked while Jax was looking down at his hands. No, I have been here for as long as I remember, Jax answered their question with no emotion in his voice as he wasn't sad to be unaware of who his parents were. Anyway, it wasn't as if he knew them or had any feelings for them. I see. Can you tell me where the cells are? I'll go and verify whether there is someone left here or not. The other man asked, to which Jack simply pointed to a door that led underground to the cells. As that man left, the other man with a cigar stayed next to Jax and continued to talk with him as his companion went to verify the underground lab. So kid, what's your name? I'm Wakaba, a mage from the fairy tale guild. He said, trying to start a conversation with Jax. I'm Jax. He answered lightly to the man from the fairy tale guild. From the moment he heard that the man was from fairy tale, he visibly relaxed as he had listened to the dark mages saying that the fairy tale wizards were a pain in the ass and that the light guilds were their enemies, in other words, good people. I see. Nice to meet you, Jax. Now can you tell me whether you can use magic after the ritual? The dark mages seemed excited when you were in the light sphere. Wakaba asked carefully and while giving a side glance to Jax. Yes, now, I can use magic, Jack said while lifting and turning his palm, making a small tornado appear in the palm of his hand before it extinguished by itself. Unknown to Jax, when he used his magic, in the first groove of the air magic seal, a small dot of white appeared in the previously gray track. Jax, considering that you don't know where your family is, what do you plan to do? Do you want to come back with us to fairy tale? Wakaba asked, seeing that he could use magic. Sure, Jax answered with no expression while nodding his head. He didn't have anywhere else to go currently, and he had heard from some children that Fairy Tail was a good guild that wouldn't let him suffer the same pain he had felt while being stuck in this dark place. As Wakaba's partner came back from the underground with a pale look, the three left along with the mages, and after leaving, the man with blue hair, known as Macau, waited for the rune knights to come and take the prisoners away. Once Macau and Wakaba's job was completed, and they received their payment, the two mages along with Jax left, and they made their way towards Magnolia to their guild, Fairy Tale. Chapter 3 As they entered Magnolia, the three of them started to go towards the guild. However, as Macau looked at Jax, who was still wearing the rags they found in one of the underground lab rooms, he decided to make a stop at a child's clothing store. He couldn't have Jax continue to wear those clothes. Jax, looking at the city, something he had never seen before, followed the two mages of fairy tale across Magnolia, and they stopped at a clothing shop. Jax, 
what kind of clothes do you like? Macau asked him with an employee waiting beside him. Looking at Macau for a moment, who smiled and nodded his head, Jax turned around and looked at the great variety of clothes. However, having never been to a clothing shop before, he only looked for a moment before simply taking a black shirt with black pants, which were the closest to him and fitted his taste. He then looked back at the two mages with these two pieces of clothing. I'd like to have those two if possible, Jack said as he kept those two pieces of clothing close to him. Perfect. Now go change yourself in the changing room over there. He said while nodding his head at Jack's, who knew nothing of the exterior world and pointed at the changing room at the end of the store. A few moments later, after wearing the new clothes, he came out of the changing room with his previous garments in his arms. Honestly, he didn't particularly like those rags since it made him remember the lab that tortured him. However, he also knew that he didn't have any money, and those rags, as Macau called them, could be washed and worn again. After leaving the clothing shop, the three went to the guild, which wasn't that far under the lead of Wakaba. In less than five minutes, they arrived in front of the guild. It was at the moment that they saw the guild building that Jax finally understood that in the future, the mages wouldn't torture him and that a bright future waited for him. Jax smiled upon finally seeing the light and the chance to turn his life around. The two mages, seeing Jax's behavior, sighed lightly. They knew that Jax didn't have a good childhood, which could be considered terrifying. Just by looking at the various scars on his body and the one on his left eye, they knew that being tortured was the norm for him, and the two mages had noticed when they were making their way back to Magnolia. After all, when they had been walking in the forest to go to the closest town to take the train, Jax, at a certain point, had fallen since he didn't have any muscles after being stuck in a cell for all of his life. However, when he fell, a sharp tree branch had deeply scratched his arm to the point where blood just fell out without stop. However, upon seeing this, Jax hadn't had any reaction as he merely pulled the tree branch out of his arm and used a piece of clothing to block the flow of blood. In all of the operation, Jax never flinched or made any grimace as if he didn't feel the pain, while both mages who saw this frowned and couldn't help but feel pain for him. As Jax was following the two mages, he didn't stop in front of the entrance and directly entered through the doors. What awaited him in the guild hall was a few dozen members who immediately turned their heads upon seeing the three of them enter, wondering who came back. Master! Macau shouted as he made his way towards the older man sitting on the counter while Wakaba had Jack sit down at a table. We have found a kid of about five years old who had been captured by the Dark Mages. They experimented on him with rituals ever since he can remember, and he was the last one alive. He said while whispering the last sentence. Upon hearing his words, the older man who seemed a little drunk and joyful turned severe instantly. He made his way towards Jax as he asked Macau, So, you bringing him here is because he is interested in joining Fairy Tale? Seriously asked the old man as he looked at Jax from a distance. Indeed. Wakaba talked with Jax and invited him to the guild. I already confirmed that he has magic. From what Wakaba told me, he possesses air magic. He answered while following behind the master of the guild. The guild master continued on his way, and the various members of the guild made some room for the master as he came to the table and sat down in front of Jax, who was sitting quietly on the table. As he sat down, he looked at Jax and saw all the bruises and cuts he had on his body. He frowned a little at the torture the kid had to go through before he started to talk to Jax. Hello, Jax. I'm the guild master of the Fairy Tale Guild. I heard from Macau that you wanted to become a member of our guild. The master asked while looking at Jax. Yes, Wakaba told me that I could join Fairy Tale since I don't have anywhere else to go and I could learn how to control my magic properly. Jax nodded with no expression on his face as he stated facts. I see. I have no problem with you joining us, but I will have to ask you to show me your magic first. After all, we won't be able to help you if we don't know what magic you can use. He said with a small smile. He didn't doubt what Wakaba had said. However, since he was experimented on by the Dark Mages, he needed to know if there were any problems with his magic. I see, Jack said before turning his palm and making a mini tornado appear in the palm of his hand. 
He kept at it until he didn't have any magical power left and the tornado stopped by itself as he clenched his fist. Oh, you have air magic. Is it all the magic you can do, or is there something else? The master asked as it was customary for mages to know a few different magics. Of course, he didn't expect Jax to say yes but was surprised when Jax nodded his head and started to use other types of magic. He made water appear in his hand, move a bit of dirt on the ground, a fire light up on the tip of his finger, lightning appear around his hand one after another before turning to the less obvious magic. He said sound as the sound resonated with magical power, lighted up his hand with pink energy on one of the bruises on his body. Making it fade away slightly before using the previous dirt gathered with his earth magic and the water from his water magic to help in making a bud of a plant appear from the pile of dirt from nowhere. Afterwards, he made one of his fists light up with light magic while the second one turned utterly dark with dark magic. After he finished showing his ten different magics, he stopped as each of them was empty of magical power, and he couldn't use them until they recharged themselves. However, just this presentation had made everyone stop talking as they were stunned to see such a great use of magic. There are only two types of mages recognized on the continent. The first type was natural-born mages who were born with their magic. The second type was learning-type mages who had learned from a magical book or a teacher. Amongst those two types, the learning-type mages were more present in the magical community as natural-born mages were rarer. Amongst those mages, being able to use one kind of magic was decent and being able to use two types of magic was extraordinary. On the other hand, natural-born mages were born with a type of magic that they only needed to learn to control, which made them superior in strength compared with learning-type mages as long as they put as much effort. On this site, in addition to their natural-born magic, being able to learn new types of magic was slightly easier for them as those mages had acclimated to magic since they were born. However, being able to use four types of magic were already amongst the best ones and being able to use more than that was extremely rare since there could be problems in their bodies by using so many different types of magic. Because of this, mages generally stuck with one or two types of magic and brought them to the pinnacle. However, from what the master could see, Jax in front of him didn't have any problems in using so many types of magic, and he could even use them at the same time. Jax was simply doing an impossible feat. After being stunned, the master was brought out of his thoughts by the food one of the members had brought in front of Jax and the master as they stayed silent in front of each other. Seeing that the master didn't speak, Jax looked at the food, which looked very tasty as he tasted it before starting to wolf down his food. It had been very long since he had the chance to eat as much as he wanted. Now that he thought about it, it had never happened in the past, and today was his first time. While Jax was wolfing down his food, Makarov finally spoke, so, there is no problem in you joining Fairy Tail. However, you are currently too young to join Fairy Tail since you can't take jobs at your age. Luckily, the guild possesses a program to adopt young wizards in your circumstances. There are currently two choices in front of you. The first one would be to live with one of the current members of the guild. The second one would be to live alone in an apartment in the guild. You would be able to live in the guild apartment until you can take jobs free of charge, and after that, you would have to pay a certain amount to continue living there. Normally those who stay in the guild's apartment are older wizards. However, considering your circumstances, I decided to open this option to you. He said with a gentle smile. I'd like to live alone. Jax didn't hesitate a second before asking for the second option. Since he didn't know anyone and didn't want to bother either Wakaba or Macau, Jax decided to live alone. Anyway, he had lived alone for as far as he could remember with only the voices of other children to keep him company. Well, I figured this would be your choice. I'll have someone show you to your apartment later. It's right behind the guild, so every morning you will come to the guild, and in the evening, you will go back there to sleep. Within that time, some wizards who have nothing to do will help you learn basic skills like reading and calculating. They will also teach you how to control your magic. Is everything alright with you? Yes, thank you. When will I start my lessons to control my magic? Jax asked with a small tone. He wanted to protect himself as soon as possible. After what he went through, being retaken into custody was something he wanted to avoid. Well, we can start right after you finish eating. 
what do you think? I'll teach you a little bit today, and tomorrow other mages will start teaching you, alright? After all, you have so many kinds of magic that one wizard can't teach you everything there is. The master said with a smile as he finished the food in front of him. No problem. I'm ready to start. Jax couldn't wait to start learning how to control his magic. Chapter 4 After a month of his arrival in the Fairy Tale Guild, as he was relaxing by practicing a meditation technique taught by one of the guild's wizards, he had once again entered a space. However, this time it wasn't an endless white space, but it was a small island with ten statues of himself with another colossal statue at the back once again representing himself. As he inspected the ten smaller statues in front of him, he saw that each sculpture had one of the seals he had seen in the white space in the middle of the chest, and the seal had changed into the form of a star with five points. The five grooves were on each end of the figure, and the highest track had started to change color from the plain gray. As Jax frowned, trying to think about its use, he used the air magic while in front of the statue with the air seal and thought he noticed a change in the first air groove. As he thought of this, he frowned and looked closer. He stared intently at the track and used air magic once again, only to notice that a tiny part of the gray color had turned to white by using the air magic. After this try, he thought that he understood the use of changing the groove's color. He was already aware that he had to collect the good pearls, which were somewhere in the world, to unlock a track, and in his opinion, for the pearl to fit in the groove, the color had to be the same as the seal. Moreover, as he tried his water magic instead, he noticed that his water magic was weaker than his air magic, and concurrently, the top groove of his water magic wasn't as colored as his air one. As such, with this small experiment, Jax was able to confirm that the more he used his magic, the more the groove would be colored and the more powerful his magic and the less magical power it would take. At the same time, in his opinion, he would have to unlock the groove by inserting a pearl inside to continue to improve his magic once the track was completely colored. This idea had come from the bottleneck the master had once mentioned to him. At some point, in the mage's magic, the mage would face a wall they would have to overcome to continue to improve his magic. In Jax's opinion, he would have to get the pearl to break the said bottleneck. After his small experiment, he turned towards the more prominent statue, and as he approached it, he saw that the gray figure had some colors on it. He started looking for the tiny details on the statue. He then noticed that on both feet, legs, hands, arms, on the chest, and the head was a different color, and each of them was one of the colors of the seals. However, at this point, he really couldn't tell what it was. Maybe at some point, when he mastered his magic, the giant statue would be completely colored, and the magics would fuse or something. However, at this point, he wasn't aware of it and merely shook his head before leaving the space. Now, knowing that he could follow his progress in magic, Jax decided to work harder. The best way to improve his magic is to use his magical power for as long as possible to increase the groove's color and decrease the gray color. X770 As such, for the year following his arrival in Fairy Tale, Jax continued to train his magic. In the morning, the mages taught him how to write, read, and do basic maths. In the afternoon, he learned how to control his magic. The morning classes continued until he was able to read, write and calculate correctly. As for his magical control, the training stopped after six months since he could control his magic without a problem. Instead, he would use his magic as soon as possible to increase his magical strength and magical reserve for each magic he possessed. In exchange for the magic control training he didn't need anymore, he turned towards cold weapons mastery. He learned that those were useful by some older mages and he decided to start learning with every weapon to become a weapon master. Thanks to the help of the wizards of the guild, Jack slowly integrated into the fairy tale guild. Although he still preferred to be alone, Jax didn't have any problems having a conversation with the other guild members. In the year he spent in fairy tale, Jax found a new passion that allowed him to relax. He loved to read and laze around. After being taught to read by the various guild members taking a break from jobs, he found out that reading and learning was quite enjoyable. Finally, with the end of his basic training, which consisted of magic control, reading, writing and calculating, in addition to being six years old, the master officially admitted him to fairy tale. 
As Jax had the chance to choose where to have the Fairy Tales Guild mark, he decided to cover his whole back in the color red. At that time, just before imprinting the guild mark on his back, the master had asked, is there a reason you want to have your whole back covered? He asked with a raised eyebrow. Jax's answer to this had been, the guild saved me and took me in when I had nowhere else to go. They became my new family, accepted me and helped me through my hard times. Because of this, I'll make sure to always stand in front of the guild. To open the way and protect it with my life. Jax's answer had been with great determination, and the master had smiled before accepting his reason and printing the fairy tales guild mark directly on his back. On this day, the master had been pleased to have received Jax a year prior and proud of the new member's resolution. Not only the master. Even the other members who had been listening from a distance had a surprise in their eyes. After all, they didn't know that Jax had appreciated how they acted so much. After all, they didn't do anything special, but Jax seems to have taken it to heart. However, even if he officially became a member, he still couldn't take any jobs before turning seven years old, which was the minimum age to accept employment. So, for the next year, he spent time with Laxus as they trained together and improved their magic. They had become close after so long, mostly since there wasn't anyone else of their age around. As such, by the time Jax became seven years old, he became a weapon master. He was able to fight with anything that came under his hand, and any items under his hand could become a deadly weapon. On the side of his magic, he became extremely good with the air, water, fire, lightning, sound and nature magic, having reached like he had guessed a bottleneck he couldn't break without a pearl. On the other hand, the four remaining magic of earth, fairy, light and darkness were only 75% full. He had trained his magic outside of the guild to learn to control and use it proficiently. But his fairy magic couldn't be used on the outside world and as the magic used for healing or boosting others, he mostly used it for healing the guild members when they came back from their jobs. Not only did he help the guild in his way, but he also improved his fairy magic. Finally, he used the fairy magic to heal the healable scars he had on his body. Unfortunately, some spots seemed permanent. According to the master, the reason they couldn't get healed might have to do with his magic. After all, he got his magic from a cursed ritual, which may be why he couldn't or anyone else, for that matter, heal them. Thankfully, he could recover his face. However, out of all the scars he had, he kept the straight one that started above his left eye and finished under it. He kept it as a reminder of his past and proof of it. So once his magic reached a full state, he trained more physically and focused less on his magical power, which wouldn't improve no matter what, although he still worked on a little with it each day not to become rusty. With the extra time, he focused on his remaining magic. Some were slower and had yet to be full, and he improved his combat instinct by fighting with Laxus. In all the fights he had with Laxus to train and become stronger, he managed to beat him nine times out of ten due to the diversity of his magic and the continuous physical and weapon training he did. However, as they were friends and were only thinking about improving with each other, it didn't matter too much. Unfortunately, they couldn't spend too much time together as Laxus often went on different jobs. Due to this, Jax was left alone at the guild. Finally, in the year X771, after a year of training and exploring his powers, he became seven years old and was thus allowed to start taking jobs. Chapter 5 One morning of the year X771, the master came to the guild hall and called upon Jax, who was currently reading. That one morning, while he was lazing around in the guild with a book since Laxus had gone on a job, the master called him to his office. Nodding his head to the master, Jax finished his page before leaving the book on a table and making his way to his office. When he walked through the door, Jax directly asked, Master, you wanted to see me? The master lifting his head, smiled at Jax before answering, Yes. I was wondering how your training is going. For weapons, I can use pretty much everything. As for my magic, I have reached a level where I am quite proficient, and I can beat Laxus most of the time. Jax answered with a proud and happy smile. I see. Even though we don't know when your birthday is as there are no records, I decided that this would be a good time for you to start taking jobs. What do you think? I know you have been bored in the guild these days. 
Makarov said while showing a paper he signed which approved of him taking jobs. Really? That's great. Then I'll go right now. Jack said while getting up and running towards the door. He was extremely tired of always having to stay in the guild and having nothing to do except read when Laxus was working. Moreover, he had been hearing about jobs for two years, and he really couldn't wait to work himself. He wanted to adventure the world and complete various tasks. As for the pearls necessary for his breakthrough? Nothing. After all, he hadn't left the magnolia yet, and he hadn't found a single magic pearl yet. As he was walking out of the door while thinking about all of this, he vaguely heard the master said, don't forget to register your job before you leave. Jax was making his way rapidly towards the request board. He saw Gildarts making his way out of the guild. He had been staying in the guild for the last week, but it seemed he had just taken a job as well, and he was leaving after drinking for the past week. Usually, he would have started to talk a little with Gildarts to ease his boredom, but this time, he went directly to the request board while saying good morning at the same time. After all, he couldn't wait to become a real wizard. Finally, in front of the request board was the ever-lurking Nab. In the two years he had been in the guild, he had seldom seen Nab take a job. Once, he had asked him the reason for never taking work to satisfy his curiosity. Nab had told him that he was looking for a job that only he could do. In Jax's opinion, Nab wanted to feel special, which was why he had been waiting for a job specifically for him. Since the time he had asked this question, which was a year ago, he had seen him go on two jobs, and he had abandoned one, saying it wasn't challenging enough. Looking at the various requests, Jax decided to take a job that didn't take him too far since it was his first job. The master had only allowed him to take D and E rank jobs for the moment since he was still new at this. As he was looking at the E-class jobs, he frowned, quite disappointed in those jobs. They were small jobs about being a waiter, finding a lost animal or cleaning the streets. While some wizards would be happy with these jobs, he wanted something a little more challenging and exciting, something which would help him improve himself. After all, he hadn't trained his magic so much just to find a lost animal. He wanted to become stronger, and he knew that he would have to challenge himself for this. Looking at the D-class jobs, he found three which could be taken by him. However, only one of those jobs was in Magnolia. My Violin. Mission Level, D-Rank. Requirements, None. Location, Magnolia. Type of Mission, Item Retrieval. Details, A resident of Magnolia Town has recently reported that a group of bandits have stolen her highly cherished violin. The bandits have reportedly set up a camp within the surrounding forests, and the soldiers' attempts to retrieve the instrument have met failure. Joanna has requested to recover her violin without any damage. Also, she has asked that these bandits be dealt with once and for all, as they have been causing Magnolia Town trouble for a long time. Reward, 75,000 jewels. Requester, Joanna Leslie. He was seeing this job, which seemed to be perfect for his current requirements. The requester had posted the task for less than a day on the job request board, Jax felt it was an excellent first job. Immediately taking the job from the request board, he went to the master sitting on the counter and gave him the job request he had decided to take. While the job rank was only D, it would be a great first job, and there wouldn't be much danger. Not to mention the reward of the job, which was relatively high for such an easy job. Master, I'll take this job first. It's in Magnolia, so I'll be back later. Bye. He said as he turned around and left the guild as fast as he could. From what he had learned from the mages of the guild, the first thing a mage had to do once one started a job was to go and meet the client to get additional information such as a picture or at least a description of the violin and to learn how many bandits there were. Having learned the address of the studio, Jax immediately made his way to her studio. It didn't take long, only half an hour, and he arrived in front of her studio. With the help of his air magic, the silver-haired boy accelerated slightly. He couldn't wait to find a pearl for the air magic since he believed that with enough power, he should be able to fly in the air. As he arrived at the studio, he saw a large building. Three-story high entirely made of white stone, and white tiles made the roof he could see from far away. 
It wasn't hard to find the studio as it distinguished itself from the other buildings all around it. Walking to the door, he knocked on the door and waited for a few seconds before a tall and slim lady in her twenties opened the door. She had blonde hair, which was cut a little under her shoulder, and she wore a pair of green glasses and a green coat that covered her whole body. Her green eyes fitted well with her dress and glasses. As she saw Jax at the door, she looked down at him and asked with a beautiful smile and one hand on her waist, Hi little guy, what can I do for you? Chapter 6 Hello, Miss Leslie. I am Jax from the Fairy Tales Guild. I am the one who took your item retrieval and bandit capture job. I was wondering if you could take some time for me. I only have a few questions for you before beginning this job. Jack said with a slight smile. You're the one who took my job. Aren't you a little too young to be working in a wizarding guild? She asked with doubt on her face. There is no need to worry about this, miss. As long as the item isn't damaged yet, I have the strength to defeat them and to retrieve your item in its best state. Jack said with a calm smile on his face. He had already expected this kind of situation. And how exactly are you going to stop them and bring back my object safely? She asked with her brows frowned. I have myriads of ways to accomplish the task. I could blind them, burn their surroundings to make them panic, drown them, simply steal your violin back, or slash them. I'm certain that you have some apprehension about me taking this job due to my young age. However, Please do understand that the master of the guild was the one who gave me the necessary permission to take jobs and also the one who registered this job to me. As such, you don't need to worry. After all, if I were to fail, it would damage Fairy Tales' reputation, and obviously, the master wouldn't dare play with this. He said calmly, as a matter of fact, while staring at her straight in her eyes. Since he felt his speech wouldn't be very impactful if she had to look down to see him talking, he used some of his nature magic to grow a small tree that would lift him at her height to speak to her face to face. And indeed, as he demonstrated some necessary prowess of his magic, she was automatically a little more convinced. After all, for regular civilians, mages are mysterious beings and being able to grow a tree from nothing was rare even amongst the magicians. She sighed a little bit before inviting him inside of the studio as he made the tree move to create a new decoration in front of the door of the studio. The studio was quite big and furnished, but Jax wasn't interested in this. He only felt like he had to ask the questions, complete the job and go back to the guild hall to read. So, what were the questions you wanted to ask me? She asked while sitting down on the couch, leaning her head on her arm and lifting an eyebrow. I only have a few questions. Do you have a picture of the item to be retrieved, and can you let me see it? As for the second question, do you know how many bandits there are in their group? Asked Jax as he sat down on the opposite couch. Yes, I have a picture right here, she said as she went to a drawer and picked up a picture of her and her violin. As for the number of bandits, I have no idea, from what I heard, there should be around thirty of them. Said Joanna as she handed the picture to Jax and sat down again. Taking a close look at the picture, he could see that the violin had some distinct features, such as the jet black wood with red and blue lines on the instrument's body. He wasn't an expert on violins, but he was confident that there wouldn't be a lot of stolen violin, it was probably the only one, but he needed to confirm its appearance in advance just in case. As such, there shouldn't be many problems. All right, thank you for the information. I will go straight to it. I'll be back as soon as I retrieve your violin. Jack said as he handed the picture back to the young miss in front of him. Hum, all right. I'll see you out. She said as she got up. Thank you, Jax answered with a smile. From the moment he left the studio, he immediately went to the closest exit to the forest. For him who had fought and trained so much with Laxus, the bandits who didn't even possess magic were undoubtedly not his opponent. As such, he directly made his way to the forests outside of Magnolia. The problem at this time was that no one knew where they were at this exact moment. So, Jax figured he would simply go into the forest and use his sound magic to create sound waves and use the echoes to locate anything within the forest. Indeed, with Jax's improvement in sound magic, he could use the echoes to tell whether there were people, monsters or animals. He believed that with enough practice, 
he would detect everything and eventually make it possible to create a mental image to see everything around him. In Magnolia, on three sides of the town were forest, the east, the south and the west side, while water was on the north side. So, Jax decided to start his research from the east, which was the closest exit to the town from the studio and go around all of the city by accelerating himself with his air magic. According to his estimates, finding the bandits would be easy since they obviously didn't have magic and thus wouldn't be able to counter or even notice his search for them. As he arrived at the forest, he used his sound magic in all the directions and finding no one, he moved further along the forest and repeated. He would do so until he found a small or large group of people together as there would be high chances of them being the bandits. After 20 minutes, Jax managed to do the east side of the city entirely and a part of the south side. However, he wouldn't have to continue since he had already found many people residing in the forest. From what he could tell from the echolocation, the group had four magical chariots to move, and there were a few tents where they slept. From what he could tell, there were not many possessions in the chariots, and the members of the group were currently around a fire, eating together as a group. Coming closer, he enhanced his earring to hear from afar to confirm whether or not they were the bandits, and it didn't take long to ensure it. So boss, we have been in this town for almost three weeks now, and we have stolen a lot. We have attracted not only the attention of the guards of the town but even a magical guild. I heard that the girl who we stole the violin from published a request in the fairy tale guild to get her violin back and to take care of us. One of the bandits said with a slightly worried voice. Don't worry about it. We managed to repel the guards once, and they can't do anything to us. As for the magical guild, I also heard about that rumor. Do you think they will bother to take care of our group? Not to mention that most mages are weak in close combat, and with our group, we can easily take care of a lone mage, can't we? A voice which, Jack's guest, was the boss, said. Moreover, we have already sold most of the stuff we stole, and now we can leave this town for the next one. In the beginning, I was thinking of going to sell the violin back to the lady we stole from, saying we got it from the bandits. However, considering she sent mages after us, she won't see it ever again, ha ha ha. Said the boss of the bandits. Hearing this, Jax had an eyebrow up as he was stunned by their reasoning. However, now that he had confirmed that they were indeed the bandits, it was time to take care of them. Chapter 7 Coming closer to the bandit group, Jack stayed behind a tree and started to use his natural power to make small roots come out of the ground, which would undoubtedly help him were there to be a physical fight. As he slowly pushed them to come out from the earth to overcome obstacles, the bandits invested in the conversation never noticed the environment's changes. Once everything was ready, Jax used his lightning magic to create a chain lightning attack and disable the bandits as fast as he could. As soon as the first bandits screamed from being hit by lightning, Jax amplified the sound via sound magic, making the bandits panic even more and confuse them. He only needed a short moment to take them out. There were precisely 37 bandits as he had counted them beforehand. With the first getting hit by lightning, which soon followed a few more as the chain lightning attacked them one after another, Jax used earth magic to shake the ground and lift a few small walls around the encampment. After all, he didn't want them to flee while taking care of the rest of them. As the bandits finally found him, they rushed towards him but soon stumbled on the tree roots. As soon as they fell, he used water magic to make the one who fell panic while he used nature magic to entangle and bind them with the roots. Once they were out of the combat, he turned to the six others who were still rushing towards him, albeit wet due to the water magic and once again used chain lightning on them. They were extremely conductive due to the water. While Jax focused on the lightning that fell upon them, he noticed an arrow shot by the bandit just before getting hit by lightning. Moving out of the way, Jax shot another lightning bolt on the said bandit, making him fall unconscious. As Jax finished the bandits, he looked around, and after confirming that all 37 bandits were unconscious, he used nature magic to bind them all on the ground. Once done, Jax went to the chariots and rummaged through them, finding a suitcase with jewels in them. Seeing the jewels, he knew that under normal circumstances, the items found by completing a job are the property of the wizard. As such, he didn't feel shame in taking the money as he needed it to pay for his accommodation. 
After setting the suitcase full of money apart from the rest of their loot, he continued to search only to find a small box which looked very precious with three silver keys inside. Looking at them and wondering their use, Jax figured he might as well take them as he could just ask the others in the guild what their functions were. Anyway, he could tell they were not ordinary for two reasons. Firstly is because they were in a small high-quality box. The second reason was the most important. There was no such lock that went with this kind of key. As he set the keys apart, he continued to look and finally found the violin, which was similar in a high-quality box. As he saw the violin, he set it apart and continued to look through their belongings before confirming that there was nothing else he planned to take. He took the box of keys and stored them in his pocket while carrying the box and the suitcase. Confirming that the bandits were still perfectly tied down, he left towards the town of Magnolia in a hurry. However, before leaving the forest, he felt that going into town with the suitcase would look weird, especially since he would get the guards. As such, he used his nature magic to make a hole in the tree and store the suitcase inside before sealing the hole again. He then demarked the tree by making a small wall of dirt around the tree, and he then left to get the guards. As he entered the town, he didn't wait for long and directly went to the town guards. After showing proof of being a member of the fairy tale guild by showing his back, the guard captain looked shocked at the fairy tale guild mark but still took twenty subordinates and a few carriages to follow Jax as he led them through the woods. Merely five minutes later, Jax and the guards arrived in front of the bandits who were still bound by the tree roots. Here they are. Do you want me to neutralize the bandits again before unbinding them or just unbind them, and you'll take care of the rest? Jax asked as he didn't want to waste too much time on this. EUM, mind neutralizing them again before unbinding them? It'll be easier to transport and arrest. The capital said with a hand on the back of his head and a small laugh of embarrassment. Yeah, sure, no problem, Jax answered as he simply shot another chain lightning at them, hitting them all one after another and bringing them to unconsciousness. As the guards were ready, Jax moved the roots to lift them, and the guards rapidly went to arrest them and put them in a specially made carriage to bring them back to prison. As they did so, Jax used some magical power to set the roots back in place in the ground and covering them up nicely. Once Jax set everything back in place, he lowered the wall of earth he had made and stopped the fire camps the bandits had started. Right afterwards, the silver-haired boy used some water magic to water the trees appropriately and, in a sort, thanked them for the help. Although he knew that they didn't have a consciousness, they had helped and watering them was relatively easy to do, so he figured he would show his thanks to the trees this way. As Jax had cleaned up the battlefield and the land went back to normal, Jax turned around and brought them to the magic carriages of the bandits. Right. There was a bounty on this bandit group of 50,000 jewels, and at the same time as the one who caught them, you have the right of their possessions. As such, we propose to buy the four carriages for 10,000 jewels each including the items in them unless you want something. The guard captain said respectfully as Jax who although he was only. That's fine by me. Do I need to come back with you, or are you able to pay directly here? Asked Jax as he didn't want to return to the forest once again after dealing with the guards. Ha, huh, there is no need to worry about that. We always have bank check with us in case something like that ever happened. The captain said while going in their chariot and getting a blank check. He soon came back and filled in the information for an amount total of 90,000 jewels. As soon as he gave it to Jax, he nodded and wished him a happy day as he left with the caught bandits. Jax was still surprised. He had just made an extra 90,000 jewels in addition to his job reward, the suitcase full of jewels and the three silver keys he had found. However, no matter what happened, he had to move on. As such, he went back quickly to the tree he had stored the suitcase, and Jax collected it while making the mini wall of earth disappear, and he once again watered the tree before leaving towards the studio of Miss Leslie. Half an hour later, Jax stood, once again, in front of the door as he knocked on it. A moment later, the same beautiful young woman with a green dress appeared at the door and seeing Jax. She was shocked. Especially since she saw her special violin box, as she received the package without saying a word, she opened it quickly, and upon seeing the violin unharmed, Jax saw her smile in relief. Thank you for the help, Jax. 
I appreciate it. She said while giving him a sweet smile. Give me a moment. I'll go and get the money I owe you. She continued while she turned in the house and left the door open. As Jax was waiting, he looked around the house and saw nothing in particular and just listened to the sound of the young woman walking rapidly in the place going to collect her money. It didn't take very long as a few minutes later, as she came back with a small paper which was another bank check of 75,000 jewels. Well, thank you, and I wish you a good day, Jack said as he turned around and started walking back towards the guild. Thank you, you too. The young lady wearing a green dress said with a charming smile before turning around and closing the door. I hope you liked it. Chapter 8 Half an hour later, Jax arrived back at the guild with a suitcase full of jewels, two checks and three silver keys, which he still had no idea of their use. As he arrived at the guild, some members turned to him and started asking him questions. So, Jax. Today was your first job, how did it go? You didn't miss it, did you? If so, the master is going to be mad. Nah, no problem, I finished the job with no problem. Jack said with a smile as he went to see the master who was sitting on the counter. Master, I finished the job I took. There weren't any problems, and I even got more money thanks to the bandits I stopped. I got the 75,000 jewels from the job, 90,000 jewels for the bounty on the bandits and their carriages, a suitcase full of jewels. I have no idea how many, and I also found these three silver keys. I have no idea what their uses are. Jack said. He then showed his loot to the master with a bright smile on his face but a troubled one as he showed him the three silver keys he brought back. Congratulations on finishing your first job Jax, I was sure you would be able to complete it easily. The master said with a sincere smile on his face. As for the jewels, the guild has a banking system if you want to store your money here. You don't have to worry about it since the money is safely stored, and even if the guild were to disappear, the money would still be safe. It's also useful when you want to use the money since you won't have to go to the bank to get money and can get it directly from the guild. The master said while taking a small pause to drink from his mug. In that case, please do master. I have no idea where the bank is anyway, and I don't know what to do with those two papers. He said while showing the two bank checks to the master. In that case, you leave your money with me, and we will take care of it. Right, since you started to take jobs, you will have to pay for your accommodation. You were aware of that, yes? The master said with a light tone. Yes, I know, master. How much is it per month? Jax asked with concern about not being able to pay for the month. It is currently 50,000 jewels each month since it is a small apartment. The girls have Fairy Hill at 100,000 jewels per month with a better environment, but since you are a boy, you'll have to stay in the apartment or rent your own. However, you don't have to worry about this month since it has already started and the guild collects rent on the first of every month. As such, you still have three weeks of free lodgings. The small man answered Jax and gave him some extra information along with information about Jax's circumstances. I see, master. Said Jax as he nodded his head. Right, can you tell me what those three keys are? Asked Jax as it had been bothering him for a while already. He did indeed find the keys to be quite exciting, but if they were just standard keys, then he would just get rid of them without wasting another moment on them. Yes, they are celestial spirit gate keys. Those three are silver keys, which are simply uncommon, but they still sell for about 20,000 jewels, even for the most useless ones. Celestial spirit mages use them, but there aren't a lot of them. Jack seeing that you are interested in those keys, why don't you keep and collect them? You don't currently need the money, and the gate keys can be a memento of your first job. If you want to know which celestial spirit keys they are, you can go to the guild library. There should be some information about gate keys there. The master said with a grandfatherly smile. I see. I'll keep the keys in that case, Jack said while continuously looking at the three celestial spirit gate keys. Well, master, I'll go and look at that book a little bit before going to sleep. Tomorrow I'll take another job. Jack said as he left the master, never looking away from those three keys. As he left the counter where the master was watching over the guild, 
he made his way directly towards the guild library. The library was in the guild's basement and wasn't often used as most mages, once they started doing jobs, didn't care much about reading. Jax was slightly different as he still loved reading despite the thrill he felt while on assignments. As he got down the stairs at one corner of the guild hall, Jax pushed the door and habitually went towards the shelves full of books. As he looked at the dozens of stands, Jax felt a little discouraged, but after thinking about those keys, which he found extremely interesting, he decided to spend some time searching for the book. As such, Jax spent the next few hours reviewing the books one by one until he found, on the ninth shelf, a book related to the Celestial Spirit Keys. Taking it off the shelf and confirming that it was indeed what he was looking for, he took the book and went back into the guild building hall. As he returned to the guild hall, he went to the building's bar and ordered a few cookies, a small cake and a glass of juice. When he was younger, for about a year, he had been influenced by the women in the guild and had been very careful about what he ate. However, once he learned that with the amount of training he did, there was no need to worry about overeating, the silver-haired boy started to eat whatever tasted good when he was reading. He had to enjoy life, didn't he? Going to a free table far from everybody else with his book, food, and juice, he started to read his book, only to be interrupted when a random fight started in the building hall. Looking at them with a lifted eyebrow, Jax confirmed that there weren't any strong wizards in the group, meaning the fight would be pretty tame. As such, he just continued to ignore them and returned to his book. As he lifted a cookie with careful use of his wind magic, he turned the page and started to take in the explanation of the celestial spirit gate keys. From what he could understand, the gate keys were the keys that allowed a celestial spirit mage to summon a spirit from another dimension to help them. There were various uses for them, but they were most useful as fighters or pets for the more tame ones. The mages separated the celestial gate keys into two types of keys, the gold and the silver ones. There are a total of twelve gold keys and countless silver keys. No one knows how many different silver gate keys there are. However, according to a rumor in the book Jax was reading, there is supposedly another completely black key. However, it was merely a rumor, and he couldn't confirm whether or not it was real. Furthermore, from what he could gather, a mage or another supernatural being had named the keys after each constellation. After reading this part, Jax mostly understood the use of the celestial spirit gate keys. However, he couldn't understand the reason for him liking the keys so much. After thinking for a moment, Jax didn't think further into it and merely figured that in the future, the silver-haired boy could just collect them while on his mission. Anyway, it wasn't as if he was in significant need of money, and even if he was in the future, he could just sell them for the same price. So, as Jax was continuing to read the book to find out which keys he had, he decided that in addition to the collection of the pearls, he would collect the celestial spirit gate keys on his missions. Once Jax understood what the keys were, he decided to find which one he possessed. So, he slowly started to turn the pages, comparing the keys he had with the book's pictures. Finally, after another hour of research, he confirmed that the three keys he had were of the gate of the Canis Minor Key, the gate of Estes Key and the gate of Eritra Key. Happy with his discovery, he put them back in the small box he kept on his person before bringing back the empty plates and empty glass of snack and juice to the bar counter. After which, he took some snacks and went back to his small apartment. All right, tomorrow morning, I'll take a job in the exterior of Magnolia. I want to explore, but most importantly, I need to find those pearls to continue to improve. He thought as he left the book on the side of his bed, changed into his pajamas, brushed his teeth and shut the light before going to bed. Chapter 9 The next morning was a warm and bright day. There were a few clouds in the sky with a warm breeze, which could improve anyone's mood. The smell of flowers as Jax made his way to the guild seemed just perfect for such a good morning. When Jax arrived at the guild, a few members were already present and were sitting on the tables to eat breakfast. So, while saying good morning to the other guild members, Jax made his way to the counter where he would be able to buy breakfast. He didn't say anything as he looked at the waitress, and she simply smiled and made a sign to Jax to go and sit down as she prepared his breakfast. Jax wasn't harsh with whatever he ate, something he picked up from his early years when he had to eat whatever was in front of him. However, the waitress still always made something different for him each morning. 
As he was waiting for breakfast, he noticed that he hadn't seen Wakaba or Macau in the guild for almost a week. Remembering that they usually only took small jobs, which would take at most three days, Jax frowned but eventually put it behind his mind as his breakfast arrived. As he thanked the waitress with a smile that made her smile back, he turned his head to his breakfast two toasts with an omelette and some strawberries. With his eyes lit up, he started to eat as more guild members entered the guild hall. As he finished eating both his toasts, he turned towards his omelette as he saw from the corner of his eye a fight that started. As soon as the fight started and some people started to get thrown everywhere, Jax became more guarded. He didn't want someone falling on his breakfast, and indeed, just as he felt that someone was about to get thrown on his side, he expertly evaded the falling wizard with his breakfast in his hand as he got further from the fight to continue eating his food. A few minutes later, just as the fight was getting even rowdier, a little man came through the guild's door. As he saw the war, he used his giant magic before simply swatting the fighting mages aside, making them stop fighting instantaneously. Once the fighting stopped, the master simply reduced back to his original size and went to the side of the counter, jumping on it. Seeing this, Jack smiled knowingly and focused back on his food. At this time, there was only his favorite fruit left, strawberries. They were just juicy enough, tastier than other fruits and the feeling when eating them was perfect. On the contrary, other fruits such as apples were just too juicy, and the juice would get on his fingers when he ate them. Although he didn't hate other fruits, he didn't appreciate them either. He simply preferred strawberries from other fruits. As for vegetables, they were simply tasteless in his opinion, especially the broccoli, which was his less favorite vegetable. As he finished eating his strawberry while thinking of the good points of strawberries and why it's the best fruit there is, he got up and brought back his plate to the counter. At the same time, Jack stopped next to the master to talk with him. Good morning master, how are you doing today? Asked Jax as he was genuinely concerned for the aging older man. Ah. Uh, Good morning Jax, I am well, thank you for asking. The master answered with a smile while taking a sip from his mug. Well, master, I was planning on taking another job, this time out of Magnolia to see the world a little bit. I've never left Magnolia since I've joined the guild. Jax said to the master, who looked at him as he spoke. However, I don't know what I have to bring in jobs outside of town. Do I have to bring a suitcase full of jewels to pay for my expenses? Asked Jax as he was wondering about this. Indeed, you have to bring money with you. However, there is no need for a suitcase as you can change your money with bills of 1 jewel, 10 jewels, 100 jewels, 1000 jewels, 10,000 jewels, 100,000 jewels or 1 million jewels. As long as you take a few bigger bills with you, you won't need to bring a suitcase. The master said while taking a small pause. However, you will need a wallet to store your money when you leave there is a store a few blocks down which sells those things. So, before leaving for your job, go and buy a wallet and come back here to make your preparations and have enough money for your travel. The master said as he pointed towards the general direction of the store selling wallets. All right, thank you, master, I'll go right now. So, can I grab some money from my account in the guild? Jax asked immediately after hearing about buying a wallet. The master nodded as he lifted an arm to attract the attention of one of the workers in the guild. Please go and get 5,000 jewels from Jax's account. The master said directly when the worker came closer. Seeing a nod from the finance worker of the guild, the small man with a weird orange and blue hat turned his attention back to the mug in his hand. On the other hand, Jax was waiting for the finance worker to come back with his money before going shopping for the necessities he needed before leaving for his job. He waited a few minutes as he looked at the guild members either eating or talking between themselves. At this point, Jax remembered the disappearance of Wakaba and Macau for the last week. Master, do you know what job Macau and Wakaba took? Normally they don't take a week to complete a job, and they stay in the surroundings of Magnolia. Jax asked with slight curiosity and a hint of worry. Yes, they took an investigation mission in the Phoenix Mountains. It seems that there are some changes in the mountains, and they took along with Eno the job to search for the reason for the changes in the environment. The master calmly said as he wasn't worried that they hadn't come back yet. 
After all, it took at least a day to get there and then they had to search for clues and the reason for the change. As such, there was no way they would be back within a week unless they were lucky. I see, master. Answered Jax as he was slightly relieved there was a reason for not being back for a week. At the same time as he answered, the finance worker came back with the 5,000 jewels which he would use to buy a wallet. Jax collected the money before leaving the guild building. He directly went into the direction the master had pointed. Walking for a few minutes, the young boy stopped in front of a small building with a wallet logo. He entered the building and immediately started to search for a wallet which he would like. Browsing them rapidly as he didn't want to waste too much time, he finally settled on a slim black wallet. When one opened it, there would be a section to store the bills at the very top, and there was also room to hold six cards. However, the space for cards was simply useless for him as he didn't have one. However, the most important feature was that the wallet was water and fireproof. Those qualities were quite useful for mages as they never knew where they might go. Going to the counter, he paid 4,200 jewels for the wallet before leaving and making his way back to the guild rapidly. He didn't want to waste too much time as a new job was awaiting him, and a pearl was out there somewhere. Arriving at the guild, Jax went directly to the guild's job board, ready to find his new job. Looking through them, however, Jax frowned. E and D ranks were too low. He would have to ask the master to upgrade his permission soon. Looking at the D rank, only two jobs brought his attention. The first was a transportation mission, but they needed two mages for the job. Currently, everyone else had a team, and apart from Laxus, he wasn't interested in teaming up with anyone else. Looking at the date, he knew Laxus would be out of the guild for at least a week. As such, he forgot this job and looked at the other one. Vacation in Selim Escort. Mission level, D rank. Requirements, Tolerance for Teenagers. Location, Divide Island. Type of Mission, Escort. Details, My daughter, Sarah, is going on a trip to Selim, and she needs an escort across the islands and then back home. My fishing empire has made her a target for many people, and I need to make sure my precious Sarah is safe while she's on her vacation. A weak group of dark mages could target her, and she needs to be protected. On top of outside threats, Sarah tends to be difficult, especially with strangers. Don't be too hard on her, or your job might get ten times harder. Reward, 240,000 jewels and a two-week paid vacation in Selim. Requester, Walter Rice. Chapter 10 As Jax saw this job, he immediately took it. Although the job might seem bad compared to his previous one, it was because the violin's employment was unique. The requester had no idea what might happen to her violin, and if the bandits left, she would never have the opportunity to see her cherished violin again. As such, the price was naturally higher. However, the new job Jax took was also slightly above the market price as there was some small danger in this job. Nevertheless, Jax immediately took the job. Since the employment would allow him to travel, he would have a greater chance to find some pearls. After all, nothing ever said that the pearls had to be in fury. Approaching the master with the job request, he gave it to him. The guild master looked slightly surprised at the job he took, especially since he had to escort someone older than him. However, after reviewing the job, he approved it and gave the address of the client. After receiving the approval of the master, Jax went to see the finance worker and asked to take 50,000 jewels. After all, he didn't know what he would encounter and having some spare money with him was important. A few minutes later, the finance worker came back with the money and taking this chance, Jax asked a question he had on his mind. Miss, could you tell me how much I have in my account? I still have no idea. Jax said while looking at the finance manager of the guild. Hum. She said as she looked over the files. You still have 135,000 jewels in your account. In the suitcase you brought back yesterday was a total of 25,000 jewels. She continued once she found the number. All right, thank you. Said Jax as he turned around and left while simultaneously inserting the money in his magically protected wallet. Going rapidly back to his apartment, 
he took a bag and filled it with necessary items such as clothes and the hygienic necessity such as a toothbrush and a deodorant. Taking less than five minutes, he handled everything and went to the train station of Magnolia. Buying a ticket to Margaret Town, which was at the southwest of Harjan, was surprisingly inexpensive at 1,000 jewels. Getting on the train, Jax relaxed and took out the massive book about the Celestial Spirit Gate keys and started reading. The train ride was uneventful as they arrived in Margaret's town about five hours later. Looking at the time, Jax hurriedly went to the docks to get to Divide Island as soon as possible. He didn't want to waste half a day in this town when he could get to Divide Island in advance and consequently finish the mission in advance. As he arrived at the dock, he saw a passenger boat docked and a few passengers getting on it. Approaching the boat, he found a sailor right next to the boat collecting tickets. As such, Jax went to get information, hoping that the ship would by sheer luck go to Divide Island or at least dock there for a short moment. Sorry to bother you, sir, Jax said as he looked at the sailor. The sailor, hearing someone talk to him, turned his head, and when he saw Jax, he smiled and stayed polite despite being bothered during work. Yes, what can I do for you? Asked the sailor as he continued to collect tickets from the passengers of all ages who boarded the ship. Could you tell me if this boat is going to Divide Island or at least dock for a little while? Asked Jax with hope in his eyes. Indeed, the boat will stop at Divide Island for the night before continuing to sail to Sealham tomorrow at eleven in the morning. Answered the sailor still patiently due to the young age of Jax. I see. Do you know if there are still tickets available for Divide Island? Asked Jax as he looked at the passengers already on board the ship. Yes, there are still some. The cost of the ticket is 4,000 jewels. Answered the sailor. All right, here is 4,000 jewels. Could I have a ticket, please? Asked Jax as he took out the money necessary to board the ship. Sure. Said the sailor, full of enthusiasm at having sold another ticket. As he received the ticket, Jax climbed on the boat and looked at his ticket to find his room number where he left his travel bag before going back on the deck. It was the first time in his life that he went to sea and he wanted to enjoy the moment. Going in front of the ship, Jax sat on a bench facing the sea. Seeing that there were still passengers coming on the boat, Jax decided to train his magic, which yet hadn't reached the full state. This way, Jax waited for the boat to depart while his magical training attracted some kids. After all, for regular civilians, it wasn't every day that one could see real magic. As there was only four magic that needed some training to reach the full state, the earth, fairy, light and dark magic, Jax practiced the last two. The earth magic would dirty the boat, and while his fairy magic was for healing and support, there wasn't anyone hurt or sick next to him. As for boosting himself with the fairy, he could but considering that some people watched him, he decided to entertain them by using light and dark magic. With his light magic, he created an orb of light, a ray of light and even tried to make some forms to train his manipulation. On the other hand, with his dark magic, he made his shadow move, rise in the air and finally created chains made of shadows to train his manipulation. Soon enough, Jax emptied his magic power. However, it didn't matter as the sailors started the boat, and Jax could feel the ship beginning to move. So, under the disappointment of the other passengers, Jax got up from the bench and went to the side of the boat, seeing it get further from the coast. As Jax was looking at the bright sea in front of him, he couldn't help but wonder when he would be strong enough to simply use his water magic to surf or walk on the sea. He had never thought of it before, but now that he was on a boat floating on the sea, he felt that his thinking was too limited. Why create something with magic when you could simply use what already existed, just like the young boy had done with the tree's roots when the silver-haired boy dealt with the bandits? Not only would using something which already existed improve the strength of his magic, but he would also save a lot of magical power. Still lost in his thoughts, the boat continued to sail towards the destination, and after about half an hour, Jax decided to go to his cabin to read. After all, he loved to read and to consider that the subject of the book was something that interested him deeply. Jax felt even more motivated to finish the book. Touching his left chest pocket where he stored the box with the three keys, Jax made his way to his cabin. Chapter 11 A few hours later, as Jax was engrossed in his book, 
he heard the other passenger start to move. Looking through the porthole of the ship, he saw that night was starting to make its appearance. Storing the book in his bag, Jax got up and left his cabin. Following the other passengers, he slowly got out of the ship, and a beautiful town appeared in his view. The city, Whale Star, was located on the west division of Divide Island. Around it was impressive walls, most likely to stop the waves and block the water from causing massive damage to the town. The builders have mostly built the townhouses with black rocks and built the road with sparse stone. Jax rarely saw this kind of road on the mainland. Of course, he had never gone far before. Taking out the address given by the master, Jax saw that the requester of the job came from the east side of the island. Looking around, Jack saw a train station not far away and once again booked a ticket to reach the center of the island. From then on, he would have to walk across a bridge before taking a train on the other side. Jax didn't understand why they didn't merely make a bridge for the train to pass through the division between the two sides of the island. However, it was none of his concern as he made his way to the train, which seemed ready to depart at any time. Honestly, Jax wasn't very interested in sightseeing in this town as he would have plenty of it while escorting the young lady. On the contrary, he was more interested in the job as he would get to go to another kingdom and maybe, with a bit of luck, find a pearl. Nevertheless, it seemed that he wouldn't have to wait until he departed with the young lady as he felt a tug from his magic, trying to push him towards a specific destination on the island. Closing his eyes, Jax meditated for a while to enter the small space containing the statues. Looking at the giant statue, which didn't show much change, Jax turned towards the smaller figures, and one of them, the one with the water seal, was slightly glowing with a blue light. Approaching it, he could feel that the statue was resonating with something not far from him as the figure was shining brighter and brighter as the train went further towards the middle of the island. Seeing this, Jax subconsciously knew that what he had been looking for since he got his powers, a pearl was close to him. Moreover, if we could judge by the magic the statue represented, the pearl which wasn't far from him was the water pearl. Going out of his mindscape, Jax looked outside of the train with his mind entirely focused on the pearl he would soon get. Already, he was happy to have taken this job, which would allow him to continue to improve his magic. After what felt an eternity, Jax got down from the train at the halfway point of the island. Looking at the colossal fissure which separated the island in half, Jax finally felt for the first time the strength of nature. Lost in his thoughts, Jax wondered if he would ever have that power, the power to do whatever he wanted in this world. Going towards the source of the attraction, Jax slowly stopped in front of the same ravine which separated the island in half. Looking left and right, he saw that some stairs were leading to the bottom of the crack. Maybe it was a tourism attraction during the day when the sun could shine on the bottom of the aperture. However, now that the moon had shown up, no one was looking at the stairs and considering that the feeling came from the fissure, he decided to get down the stairs. In the beginning, it wasn't too bad, as the moon could still light up a bit of the crack. However, merely a few minutes after entering, he was plunged into total darkness. Using his light magic, he made a small orb of light and made it float in front of him to light up the way. This way, Jax got down the stairs, and surprisingly, ten minutes later, he finally reached the bottom. With complete darkness, Jax made a few more orbs of light, which he sent in his surroundings. Still following the attraction of what he assumed to be a pearl due to all of the clues which pointed to one, Jax started wandering at the bottom. Surprisingly, from what he could see with his orbs of light, the crevasse's base was used as a beach. The sand was on the side of the walls while there was a large river in the center, deep enough to swim in but not deep enough to be dangerous. Looking at this marvel of nature, Jax soon stopped thinking about random things as he focused on what he assumed to be the pearl. Moving in the direction of the tug, he made his way to the center of the river and saw that whatever was attracting him was at the bottom. He dived down. Thanks to his water magic, Jax was a pretty good swimmer, and as he was advancing in the darkness of the water, something which sent chills in his bones due to not knowing what was down there, he saw a faint blue light. Swimming towards the only light in the darkness, Jax stopped near what he could confirm to be a blue pearl. The pearl, shimmering with blue light, seemed extremely attractive to Jax. He didn't waste a moment more, and with a lot of excitement, he took the pearl in his hand. However, 
contrary to his expectations, he didn't even touch it as the pearl directly entered him through his palm. Going out of the river and onto the beach, Jax immediately closed his eyes as he re-entered his mindscape to look at the statues. And indeed, as he went closer to the blue figure, he saw that the previously filled groove had a pearl inserted into it. Seeing nothing else of interest on the statue, he reopened his eyes and tried using his water magic. Making a wall of water rises in the air in front of him, Jax opened his eyes wide and clenched his fist in happiness with a small smile appearing at the corner of his mouth. With the addition of the water pearl, he had an easier time using his magic, the strength had easily increased, and the consumption of magic had visibly decreased. If he were to compare his magic to before then, the first time he arrived in Fairy Tale, he barely had the strength of an E-rank mage. Once Jax filled the groove, he increased to a D-rank mage. However, with the pearl completing the first groove of the seal, he could easily compete with the average B-rank mages. With happiness, he took his bag he had left on the beach before diving and started to climb back the stairs. However, there was something he had forgotten. The train had already left. Frowning slightly, Jax looked at the train schedule and saw that the last one would leave three hours later. Lifting an eyebrow while thinking, he decided not to care and wait for the next train, not that he could do otherwise. It would allow him some time to train his water, earth, light, darkness and fairy magic, which still hadn't reached the maximum. His earth magic was about 90% completed, while his light was about 85% completed. As for the darkness magic, it was at 80%, while his fairy magic was still at 75%. As for his water magic? It was obviously at 0%. Jax had previously discovered that to color the grooves faster, using magic while fighting with his life on the line was the best way. It was something he had noticed when he had fought the bandits as his earth magic had increased rapidly at that time, growing about 10% in one go. In his opinion, the reason for the magic increasing was because, when you were fighting with your life on the line, you didn't have the luxury to think and concentrate on your magic. You had to use it instinctually to survive. Even mock battles were no good as no matter how much you tried to forget. You knew that you wouldn't die in that fight no matter what. It was also another reason why the master always said that fighting using all of our potentials was the best way to improve ourselves. So, although he wasn't fighting for the next three hours, Jax trained his magic until he had no mana left before changing to another one. In those three hours, he managed to increase approximately a percent in all of his magics except for water, which seemed harder to improve. The second groove, the right one, seemed a lot more challenging to fill. If the first groove, the top one, could be compared to a glass of water, the second groove was like a barrel. It was a few times harder. Finally, as the last train arrived, Jax bought a ticket and sat on the train. He couldn't train his magic on the vehicle, not that he would, as Jax pretty much emptied his magical power before going on the train. As such, he took out the book Everything There Is To Know About Celestial Spirits. This book, much like other books about magic, had a spell on it, which shrank the thickness of the book. The book had a few thousand pages, and Jax was only getting started. However, considering it was about celestial spirit, especially celestial spirit gate keys, Jax did not mind. Anyway, he had a lot of time on his hands. Three hours later, the train finally made a stop at Beachwell, the only town on the east side of the island. Looking at the time, Jax decided to take a room in a hotel nearby and meet the client the next morning as it was pretty disrespectful to knock on the door of someone who was probably about to go to bed. Buying something to eat at the hotel, Jax went into his room and immediately went to sleep. Chapter 12 The next morning, a little after 7 in the morning, Jax woke up. Going downstairs to eat at the buffet, he took a few pancakes and strawberries along with a glass of apple juice. Right after finishing eating, Jax left the hotel and decided to spend some time walking around. He couldn't just pop up at their door at 7 in the morning. They were probably still sleeping or having breakfast. Walking in the town, Jax saw the civilians starting to get active and soon enough, there were people everywhere. As the silver-haired boy slowly visited the city, Jax found a magic shop. Seeing that he had time to spare, he went inside. After all, maybe the young boy could find something interesting in it. 
before taking jobs from the guild, he had no money. The guild would give him accommodation, food and other necessities, but he didn't have any luxuries such as entering a magic shop previously. As he entered the shop, he noticed that there were only two other persons in the shop. One of them was most likely the owner of the shop. He was a small white-haired man, little enough to be competing with the master on their height. He had a short trimmed beard, wore a pair of black glasses and a yellow mage robe. When Jack saw him, his first thought was how weird he dressed up, but after thinking about it, everyone could dress however they wanted, and with this, he brought his attention to the other person. The teenage girl was, in his opinion, in her sixteen or seventeen. She wore a yellow floral dress, and she was holding a small brown purse with one hand while the other had a little pale blue ring. With her tan skin, brown eyes and brown curly hair, she was pretty. After giving a quick look at the two other persons in the store, Jack started looking through the merchandise. There were many things, but most of them were subpar and would only be useful for ordinary people who didn't use magic. As for the other items, there was a lacrima crystal ball, a magical sheet that transferred messages over short distances as long as half of the sheet was with someone else or even a magic pillow that allowed the user to have a better sleep. All in all, those items were mostly useless for the majority of mages but was quite helpful for regular civilians if they could afford them. As Jax looked around, he quickly lost his interest in searching for something useful. So, he decided to buy a, colors, and a second grade, Galeforce reading glasses. The first one could get pretty handy in the future. Just changing the color of one's clothes seemed pretty basic. However, it was perfect for tailing someone as they just had to change their clothes color and put on a hat or something, and no one would notice that you stalk someone. Of course, currently, it wasn't needed but maybe in a future mission. As for the second grade reading glasses, they were the highest grade this shop had, which allowed one to read 18 times faster. These glasses would help him in reading his seemingly endless book. Going to the counter, he stepped behind the girl who was bargaining with the boss about the price of the ring of protection she bought. As Jax glanced at it, he saw that the item was well made and just by feeling the magical power in the ring, he could tell that it would be able to block a few B-ranked magic but not more than that. Jax lifted an eyebrow at that since such a ring would undoubtedly cost around 50,000 jewels. However, it merely interested him a few seconds as in the end, he knew that it could block a few B-rank attacks but as long as the magician was there, he could attack more than a few times. In other words, this ring could be of use for a limited defense. However, if there were no means of attacks, it would merely push back an irreversible result. Just as Jax lost his interest in the ring, the girl in front of him glanced at him, and after brief eye contact, she turned back to bargaining with the boss. Seeing that they were not close to being done, Jack simply took out his book from his bag and started to read it. Of course, he didn't use the reading glasses as he hadn't bought them yet, and he was only reading to pass the time, not to cram stuff in his head. Finally, after ten minutes of intense bargaining, the girl paid and made her way to the exit. Seeing this, Jax made his way to the counter. Hello, young lad, I'm sorry you had to wait for such a long time. He said as he deliberately raised his voice so that the young girl would hear him talk. It's fine sir, it wasn't that long, Jax answered as he closed his book with one hand making his long silver hair slightly move due to the wind generated. As he finished answering, Jax put the two items he was planning on buying on the counter before hesitating for a few moments and asking another question. Do you have any celestial spirit gate keys by any chance? Asked Jax as he did not understand his obsession with those keys. No, I don't have any in my possession. While celestial keys aren't rare, they aren't common either in considering the gate keys high price. I don't own any. The older man said while shaking his head. I see, it's fine. How much will it be for the two items? Continued Jax as he saw from the corner of his eye the previous girl was going out of the shop with an angry red face due to the way the shop owner treated her. The colors cost 2,000 jewels while the glasses cost 3,000 jewels for a total of 5,000 jewels. Answered the man while looking wearily at Jax, scared that he would also try to bargain. All right. Answered the latter as he took out five bills of 1,000 jewels from his wallet and left them on the counter before taking his items and leaving. 
Looking at the time, Jack stored both new items and his book before making his way to the villa of M. Rice. The villa was on the east side of the town, near the ocean. So, Jack spent close to twenty minutes walking towards the requester's location. Arriving near the sea, he walked silently on the road for almost two minutes before noticing the same girl he previously met in the shop walking in front of him. Frowning slightly, Jax knew he was currently on the private land of M. Rice. However, the young boy didn't do anything and merely continued towards his destination. From all he knew about the girl and the job he had received, he was confident at 95% that she would be the young miss he would have to protect on her two-week trip. However, this didn't matter as he merely had a job to do and continue looking for pearls and gate keys if he met any. A minute later, as he finally saw the villa, the girl in front of him turned around and fixed him as he continued to walk towards her. She frowned as she had expected him to stop, but he merely continued on her way until she finally started talking to him. You know that this is private land, right? She asked directly. Yes, I am fully aware of this fact, Jax answered her as he stopped walking. Then why do you continue following me? She asked with an even deeper frown. I think you are mistaken. I am not following you. I came here at the request of M. Rice. Jax answered back at her. What? What does my father want with a kid? She exclaimed at Jax. I am here to protect a certain young miss named Sarah during the duration of her trip of two weeks to Salem. I am a mage of the fairy tale guild, Jax. He answered as he looked up at her. Huh? How could a kid protect me? It was stated on the job that there might be weak dark mages coming after me. She said in a haughty tone. Oh, I am well aware of the job content, miss. However, I fail to see how my age is the problem here. I have the strength to deal with dark mages since the guild master sent me here to complete the job. Jax answered lightly. He was already aware that most would find it troubling that someone of his age could take jobs, especially for escort jobs where their security depended on the mage. Moreover, in the end, all that matters is strength. The dark mages won't care whether I am young or old. They will simply take care of me. However, due to my young age, they will look down on me, which gives us the advantage, and on the other hand, they will never think a mage's guild sent me to protect you. Meaning, they will search for someone who doesn't exist while I stand right in front of their eyes. Explain Jax as he was confident in his skills, even more so after obtaining the water pearl. Looking at Jax for a moment, she snorted and turned to walk towards the villa. Jax, not bothered by her comportment at all, simply continued on his way towards the estate as well. Chapter 13 Sitting in the Garden with M. Rice and the young girl with the bad temper, Sarah, Jax was quietly waiting for their conversation to finish while reading his book. One surprising thing was that when Jax had arrived, M. Rice had been very supportive in hiring him as an escort for her travel time. I won't be going on my vacation while I have to babysit some random brat. Shouted Sarah as she was red from anger. You don't need to babysit him. He's a mage and can take care of himself. Moreover, if you don't accept, you won't be going on that trip. The older man replied ever so calmly. I don't care. I want a real bodyguard. What is going to happen if a dark mage attacks me? Do you expect that brat to protect me? She continued while shouting even louder and gesticulating with her arms. Unfortunately, as she was gesticulating, she touched the ancient teapot of her father, something costly. However, by the time she noticed and tried to catch it, the teapot was already halfway to the floor. Jax noticing this from the corner of his eye, pointed his left finger at a nearby bush. By injecting his nature power, he made it extend itself to catch the teapot, effectively preventing it from falling to the ground. As the father and daughter duo were surprised, he moved his finger, making a small branch appear and set it down on the tea table. Jax, all this time as if nothing happened, continued to read his seemingly unfinishable book. As the duo came back from their stupor, the girl seemingly didn't have anything else to say as the father sighed in relief. However, no one knew if he was citing due to saving the teapot or because his daughter had stopped arguing. So, I can take it that you're okay with me. 
asked Jax while looking at Sarah. Humph, you will do. You better protect me properly, or I'm going to hunt you once I turn into a ghost. She said while thinking she was vicious enough. However, it wasn't enough to throw Jax out of balance as he simply replied, Ghosts are easy to destroy. Hearing a chuckling from the girl's father, Jax smiled slightly while the young women seemed ready to beat him up. So, when are we leaving? Asked Jax as he couldn't wait to start the job correctly. There's a boat leaving at two for Selim. We'll take it. Answered Sarah as she got up and walked. Jax looked at the clock on the top of the wall and saw that it was merely 10.30. Frowning slightly while thinking of how he would spend his time, M. Walter Rice coughed slightly to bring Jax's attention to himself. As Jax turned his attention to him, he started talking, this time, I'll entrust my daughter to you. I can't tell if dark mages will attack you. However, if there are, they should be weak dark mages. I just hope that you bring her back safely from her trip. He finally added before getting up and going back inside. You can stay here until she's ready. Upon hearing this, Jax decided to simply spend his time reading until it was time to depart, and like this, three hours went by. At 1.30, Sarah and M. Rice came to the garden and seeing them appear, Jax knew it was time. Closing his book and storing it in his bag, Jax got up and went to join them. Without a word from the young lady, they made their way to the harbor and boarded a passenger boat to Selim. Knowing that they would be spending two days on the boat, they had to have a room for each of them. Their tickets gave them rooms next to each other. Their rooms were under the deck, and they were at the furthermost of the corridor, with Jax's room being the second further and Sarah's being the furthest. This arrangement would lower the possibility of random passengers walking in front of the cabin, reducing the trouble of guarding her. As Sarah settled in her cabin, Jax went and knocked on her door. As she opened the door, she said, I don't need your protection on the boat as there's no way a dark mage is on the boat. They couldn't know that I would be taking this specific boat to go to Selim. Before slamming the door in his face. Shrugging his shoulders as what she said made sense, he went back to his cabin and started to read his book. However, he couldn't relax while reading and decided to switch to training his magic. Unfortunately, he couldn't work on his water magic as he needed it if something were to happen. It was the same with his fairy magic as he needed it in case he had to heal Sarah. As such, he trained his light and dark magic. For light, it was pretty easy just to control the light to create different forms while doing the same with his dark. While he was training his dark magic by making his shadow move, a wave suddenly hit the boat as the book he had left on the side of the bed fell directly on the ground in his shadow. It was all he needed as he got the idea of storing items in his shadow. Stopping his light magic training, Jax focused entirely on his dark magic. The basic idea was to use his own shadow as storage to bring items with him. Thinking for a moment, he based his theory on two different magics. The first one, Requip, is magic that allows the user to store items in a subdimension. The user of that magic would always bring items out of their dimension as long as they have magical power. As for the second magic, he was thinking of shadow magic, a subcategory of dark magic. Users of shadow magic could control the shadows. However, the only spell developed in this category that could help him is the shadow form magic. This magic allowed the user to sink in a shadow and travel in it. Now, he couldn't use requip magic. However, by using the idea of how it worked, by creating a hole in space and storing items in it, he got the idea to make a hole in his own shadow by using a part of the shadow form spell. Focusing on his own shadow with his dark magic, he tried to create a hole in his shadow for a moment, which would allow him to leave objects inside. However, no matter how much he tried, he couldn't create a slot. He knew that the shadow form magic was only used by A rank mages so, he knew that it would take some time to develop that technique. Thankfully, in the past, Jax had read a lot of books concerning magic. After all, knowing your enemy's magic function is an advantage in battle. Moreover, by learning more about magic, he had managed to create some variation for himself, such as the root binding of his nature magic. In the beginning, Jax only used nature magic to grow vegetation and boost itself by being in a field created by themselves. 
However, after tweaking his magic a bit, he quickly turned it into potentially dangerous magic. Continuing to train on his magic with a clear goal in mind, he only stopped when it was time for supper as he left the cabin escorting the young lady from afar. He was fully aware that she didn't want his protection. However, since it was his job, he could only protect her from afar and not bother her about security. Anyway, he would be there if something happened. The supper went well, and they both went back to their room at the same time. Sarah didn't bother talking to him all along, and Jax merely shrugged as he wasn't bothered by her attitude. So, after supper, Jax took his book and read a little before preparing to sleep. Firstly, he used his sound magic to reduce the noise from the right side of his cabin and the alleyway next to it and, on the contrary, increased the sound in front of his place and on the left side. Finally, he used his earth magic to put some grains everywhere on the ground in front of both his and the girl's cabin. All of this took little to no magic power for his earth magic, and it was a small continuous use of his sound magic power that allowed him to use it non-stop since he recovered at about the same rate he consumed the magical energy. The sound magic was to amplify any sounds in their cabin surroundings, while the earth magic, which was everywhere on the ground, would alarm him due to the amplified sound of shoes walking on grains of dirt and stone. He managed to make a simple alarm system that would wake him up quickly, were someone to walk in front of their two cabins during the night. With this completed, he changed into his pajamas and turned off the light going to sleep. Chapter 14 In the middle of the first night on the boat, as both Jax and Sarah had already fallen asleep with the help of the waves, the sound of someone stepping on dirt and small stones traveled to Jax's ears as he woke up instantly. Wearing his shirt back on, he walked close to his door while listening to the sound. Listening to the intruders walking on his earth magic, he could confirm that there were three different persons, and by listening to their whispers, Jax could tell they were three men. He continued to wait as he wanted to confirm that they were indeed here for the young lady and not just because they wanted to explore the ship late at night, which was quite weird but still possible. He amplified the sound in the corridor and the room and made a small sound barrier around the door so that he would be able to open it without making any noises if necessary. Waiting for a moment, he heard the three men starting to break the lock of the young lady's door with magic. As such, without waiting a second further, he opened the door, put a sound barrier around the two cabins and the alleyway to block the noise and make it impossible to spread. He then released a bit of water magic to get them wet. He released his lightning magic simultaneously, rendering them unconscious instantly due to the pain they felt upon receiving the shock. As he took them down quickly, Jax frowned slightly, wondering what to do with the three men. He obviously couldn't let them loose as they could spread the information about him escorting his client, and it would make the job harder. On the other hand, he couldn't keep them locked as they were on a ship, and there were no such things as a cell. As Jax was thinking about the two last options, killing them or throwing them overboard, which would probably kill them but give them a chance of survival, Sarah opened the door, still in her pajamas as she had perhaps heard the scream of the three dark mages. She was wearing pink pajamas with birds printed on them. The bottom was stopping at the middle of her tights and her top, which exposed her belly. What happened here? She asked while crossing her arms under her chest and looking at Jax, who was the only one awake. Those three were trying to break into your room with magic. So, they are dark mages who came after you and considering that they are on board this ship only means that you were already targeted back on Divide Island and followed us on board. You go back to sleep. I'll deal with the three of them. Jack said with a dark look as he decided on how to deal with them. As Sarah heard what happened, a frightened look appeared on her face for a brief moment before she answered him. All right, I'll go back to sleep, be sure to deal with them rapidly. Upon finishing her sentence, she turned around immediately and closed her door. With enhanced senses, Jax could tell she had locked the door and verified a couple of times before going back to bed. Smiling slightly, he knew that she was uncomfortable, knowing that there were indeed dark mages on the ship after her. Bringing back his attention to the three men, Jax knew he had to get rid of them somehow. He couldn't let them on the boat when there could be other dark mages. The silver-haired boy had to have them leave the ship, and the only way was to throw them overboard. He could throw them out alive. However, considering that they were in the middle of nowhere, he was 99% confident that they would die. 
In other words, they would simply suffer before dying. As such, Jax firmed his eyes and decided to end them himself. Mages were allowed to kill other mages in three different circumstances. The first one was when the enemy was a dark mage. The second one was when the person had a bounty on his head from the magic council. And finally, in self-defense. Such cases were rare but still existed nonetheless. Jax knew that as a mage, he would eventually have to kill not only beasts but also an enemy mage. Such things were everywhere in the magical world. Often, they would have to fight other mages, and they couldn't be lenient in a battle as this would mean their death. As such, fighting with your life on the line was dangerous, and you had to fight to kill when necessary because your enemy wouldn't have mercy upon you. Searching the bodies to look for their job request or other essential things, he discovered the abduction request on a young lady with a price of 500,000 jewels. Jax frowned slightly as this would never only be a weak group of dark mages who would take this job. It would be at least be rank mages. More importantly, the job had said it was for D-rank mages as only weak dark mages would take the job. In other words, the abduction request had changed, and the price had increased drastically, highly increasing the difficulty of the job. Pushing this matter behind, he figured he would clear the three guys before thinking about it. He continued looking through their belongings and collected the three men's wallet, which had a total of 28,600 jewels. Considering that his purse had shrunk to 34,800 jewels due to the train's price, shipped to Divide Island, hotel and the two items he had bought, this amount made him richer than he was before leaving the guild. Continuing to look through the three men, Jax found something which made his heartbeat quicker. Four Silver Celestial Gate Keys With a happy smile, he collected the four keys and, confirming that there was nothing of worth on the three men, Jax used air magic to slightly levitate them in the air as he made his way to the railings. He couldn't use air magic to fly in the air due to the high consumption of magic power and inefficiency at this level. However, transporting something at a low height was possible for short distances. As he stopped next to the railings while using his dark magic to make it even darker in the surroundings and sound magic to block the sound around him and at the bottom of the ship due to the splash the bodies would make. Jax hesitated slightly before pushing away his worries and hesitation as he broke the neck of the three men one after another. Feeling their necks breaking one after another, Jax felt disgusted, and he put his hand near his mouth to not vomit since he still had to throw them overboard. Using his air magic to help him, he lifted them and threw them out of the ship before immediately leaving the scene. He wasn't scared that others would see him since he used all of that magic to impede the others from noticing, but he had to go back to his cabin to vomit. Arriving at the cabin, the first thing he did was go to the toilet and start vomiting everything he had in his stomach. Tears gushed out of his eyes as he thought of the three men he had just killed. Even if it was customary for mages to kill someone, Jax had difficulty accepting it. One could say that he was unlucky as under normal circumstances, the first time a mage killed another person, they would be accompanied by another mage with more experience to help them go through this hurdle. However, due to the circumstances of this job, he was forced to go through this alone. Thankfully or not, it didn't take long for Jax to go back to normal due to what he had experienced in the past. He had experienced the countless threat of dying, and he had seen friends and cell neighbors disappearing forever. He was used to death, but it was the first time he had taken a life himself. Thinking back to his cellmates who used to tell him, when you are sad, you have to change your ideas. Come here. I'll teach you how to write. Smiling slightly at the only good memory he had from back then, Jax took out the four new silver keys he had found, and he dived into the research of those four keys. Slowly, Jax got more immersed in identifying the silver keys, and the matter of the three men disappeared from his mind. Not that he forgot what he did, but the young boy slowly gave it less importance, and he focused on the crucial things such as the four silver keys in front of him. As such, Jax continued to research those four keys with his book until morning. As the sun rose and the sun started to shine on the ship, Jax finally confirmed the identity of the four silver celestial gate keys. They were the gate of Nada, Tarida, Halytra and Situla key. Taking a box, he stored them inside with the other three keys and with a smile, he closed the box. Dressing up, 
he inserted the box on the inside of his clothes and went to knock on the door of Sarah on the other side. Although the keys attracted him, he hadn't forgotten to put his sound magic and earth magic back in the hallway since he still had to protect the young lady. Chapter 15 Knocking on the door, Jax waited for a moment before a heavily tired young lady opened the door. Last night, Sarah, who had finally understood that bad people were trying to capture or kill her, had difficulty sleeping. After all, had it not been for her young bodyguard being alert, she would have been kidnapped without being able to do anything to stop them. How are you doing this morning? Jax asked as he looked at the sixteen years old girl. I'm fine, thank you for asking. She answered without her usual haughty attitude. She probably understood that her life was in danger and that I was necessary to protect her from the people coming after her. Jax thought as he nodded his head. Would you like to go for breakfast? I'm fully aware that you do not want me in your surroundings but considering what happened the previous night, I hope to be able to accompany you to ensure your safety, Jax asked respectfully towards the daughter of his client. Yes, I'll go and do. Please come with me. She whispered back. Also, did you find anything on the three men from yesterday? She asked while consciously not asking Jax what he did with the three dark mages. Yes, from them was your abduction request. The request should have changed as the reward from your capture is of a total of 500,000 jewels, and this is a request B rank dark mages usually takes. Moreover, with that reward, more than a few dark mages will come, and there will certainly be a few strong ones. Jax explained what he had found from the three dead men with a severe look. Sarah's eyes were wide open at the revelation that the reward on her capture had increased so much. Can you deal with B-rank mages? She immediately asked Jax as she didn't want to gamble with her life. Well, I wouldn't say yes if we were not going to the beach, but as long as we are close to a body of water to supplement my magic, I can take care of B-rank dark mages. Jax nodded without hesitating. As for anything lower than this, there is no problem wherever we are, Jack said, full of confidence. All right then, when we go back home, I'll tell my father to increase your reward due to a change in the job. She said, already feeling calmer. Sure. Jax nodded his head. So, shall we go for breakfast? Jax asked while pointing in the direction of the cafeteria. All right, let's go. She nodded and made her way to the cafeteria with Jax walking by her side. In this way, the ship slowly made its way towards Selim without having any more passengers disappear from thin air. The last night on the boat had been peaceful, most likely because there were no other dark mages on the ship, or those mages had noticed the disappearance of a few colleagues. Arriving at Selim, Jax and Sarah immediately went to the small villa owned by her father, M. Rice. The small estate, in Sarah's words, was a three-story high house that had a beautiful view of the ocean with a private beach surrounded by reefs. In the beginning, the plan was to go and explore the village. However, following the events on the boat, Sarah pushed the program to the next day. In this way, according to the lady's plan, there was a small fair in the village twenty minutes from the house. She went there every year. Afterwards, she would enjoy the beach for a few days and from the second week, there would be a party with a few of her friends who would come and live in the villa for a week before she made her way back to Divide Island. The three-story villa was made of pale brown wood from top to bottom, along with pale stone slabs making the pavement leading from the road to the house's door. Flowers of various colors bloomed on both sides of the house, and the grass was freshly cut, showing that someone had been taking care of the villa. Entering the villa, Jax followed Sarah as he amplified the house's noise to his maximum capacity. With his sound magic, he would hear the breathing of anyone currently in the house. Confirming that there wasn't anyone in the house, the boy made a simple round in every room to verify that everything was fine. He knew that since dark mages had attacked back on the ship, it was highly probable that they had known about their whereabouts. As such, he looked everywhere in the house to look for traps or anything similar. Once Jax was done, he joined Sarah on the third floor. Her room stood at the very top of the villa. Her room faced the beach. Sliding doors made up of the northern part of the room with a balcony which linked the only two rooms on the north side of the third floor of the villa. Considering his job, 
he didn't hesitate to take the room next to the lady as he couldn't let anyone else pick it the next week. He knew nothing about her friends, and even if he knew them, his job was to protect her from the dark mages, and he had to keep a suspicion about everyone. After all, her life highly depended on it, and he had to complete his job correctly. Going to her room, he knocked at her door and asked, Young lady, it will soon be time to eat, do you want me to make something? Jax had long known how to cook for himself. He couldn't always depend on the workers of the guild. No, I'll do the cooking this time. By the way, you can call me Sarah. No need to always call me young lady or anything like that. She said as she opened the door and went downstairs. All right. Jack simply nodded as he went downstairs with her. As Sarah went to the kitchen, starting to cook, Jax focused on his dark magic. He hadn't forgotten his idea of storing things in his shadow. The day after Jax had killed the three dark mages, the young silver-haired boy had turned back to research his magic. The more he dived and studied on this magic, the more he understood how much potential it had. Not only could he store items in his shadow, but as long as he controlled this magic perfectly, he wouldn't have to fear heights as he merely had to fall on a shadow to cushion his fall. Another application of this magic would be fast travel by traveling from shadow to shadow at a higher speed. Not only that but binding his enemies would do wonders by controlling their shadows. After all, while our shades were merely a projection of ourselves when facing a source of light, we controlled it by moving. Consequently, if we stopped the shadow from moving, could we hold the person who made this shadow? Those were only some applications which he would have to research. Unfortunately for Jax, while he had ten different types of magic, all with too high potential, they also restrained him by having too many elements to develop, which slowed him down. This situation flawlessly represented by the famous saying, Jack of all trades, master of none. Erasing the useless thoughts, he merely figured that if he had to develop so many magics, he simply had to stop wasting time uselessly. Besides, it wasn't as if time was something he didn't currently have since he was simply seven years old. Smirking to himself, Jax turned his attention to his dark magic and started to imagine that there was a room in his shadow which could store objects. He had begun this training he had previously did on the ship, and he had managed to start inserting some part of the item in the shadow but never wholly. However, Jax knew that his spell was close to success. The space inside the shadow was continually expanding, and soon, he would manage to store some small objects. He did not doubt it. In this way, he continued to train while Sarah made the food. It didn't take very long as merely twenty minutes later she came out of the kitchen with two food plates. Taking the platter she gave him, he tasted it, and Sarah could easily see from his face that the food tasted quite good. While it was very regular food, it was spicy and delicious, and he didn't hesitate to tell her as she looked at his expression. Hum, it's delicious. Thank you very much for the food. Jack said as he smiled at her. Seeing him like her food, she smiled back and nodded at him before eating her food. After eating, Jax took the plates and went to clean up the kitchen. She had made the food, and he couldn't also let her clean everything. As such, while he cleaned, she went back upstairs to the third floor and just as Jax finished cleaning rapidly, thanks to his water magic cleaning the plates and his air and fire magic to dry them, Jax heard a shout from the top floor. Turning his head with sharp eyes, Jax immediately used his sound magic to block his noise while amplifying his sense of hearing with his sound magic as he ran towards the third floor of the villa. He hadn't thought that the enemies would come directly from the windows, but now that he thought about it, he was pretty stupid not thinking about it. Currently, he could only hope that they didn't know that there was someone else in the house as he wished to take care of them rapidly and cleanly. Chapter 16 as he climbed the stairs as quickly as possible, he listened to the amplified sound coming from the third floor. He could hear the sound of Sarah trashing about in the room as she tried to defend herself against her enemies. However, it didn't last long as he listened to a boom. Hearing her fall, Jax immediately grew concerned. He hadn't been that worried previously since their job was obviously to abduct her, which meant they needed her alive. However, as she fell and stopped moving, Jax grew a bit concerned. This feeling didn't stay long, yet as he soon heard the sound of her breathing. Releasing a breath he didn't know he was holding, 
Jax continued making his way upwards as he focused on information gathering. From what he could tell, they were a seven-person group. Four men and three women specifically. Hearing from their conversation, they were from a newly created dark guild operating in Selim, and their guild was counting on this job to fund the start of their guild. From their conversation and relaxed attitude, Jax could tell that they were pretty confident in their abilities. Finally arriving on the third floor, Jax could hear them make their way towards the room's balcony. He knew that he didn't have much time left before they escaped from the villa. Entering his room, which had a shared terrace with Sarah's, he ran to the sliding door and seeing that they hadn't yet entered the balcony, he opened the door and started to release his nature power slightly through the planks, which made the balcony. With the intervention of his power, he grew some twigs and small branches from the planks. Although it took a lot more energy to give vitality to the planks to grow the twigs than to create the twigs from a living organism, it was still better than to make them from nothing. At least with the planks, he had some sort of base which saved him power. Growing twigs and branches enough to bind the seven intruders, he controlled his shadow, which was currently on the wall due to the sun being at the horizon and prepared to wrap the opponent's shadow, which should hold them up a bit. Thankfully, Jax didn't have any problems using multiple types of magic simultaneously, which would help him fight. Finally, he used his fairy magic to enhance his speed. Jax could use fairy magic for all kinds of support, such as healing or strengthening a specific trait such as speed or strength. All of this preparation took less than 10 seconds as he prepared himself to fight the intruders who finally arrived at the sliding glass door. They were still talking and weren't on alert as it took a few seconds for them to notice Jax, who was on the side of the wall. However, this time was more than enough as five of the seven had already left the room and were on the balcony. Using his light magic, he exploded a small bright orb of light, which blinded them for a short moment and darkened their shadow's color. Right at this moment, his shadow linked with the five enemies and stopped them from moving for a moment, which was perfect timing as the twigs and branches bound the five of them together, preventing them from moving or even talking. Immediately afterwards, he used lightning magic, electric shock, which numbed them, making them lose consciousness. As there were still two members left who had yet to react in the few seconds it took to take down the five others, Jax immediately acted and used two fireballs to end the two weakest of their group. As for the reason he figured they were the worst. They were the ones who had to move Sarah. They were the grunts of the group. As they dropped Sarah on the ground and started shouting due to the fires burning, Jack simply kicked them in the head, rendering them unconscious like the other two. He then went to the young lady's side as he immediately used his fairy magic to heal the few bruises on her face and her arms, which weren't covered by the clothing. With the help of his magic, it didn't take long before Sarah woke up. As she saw Jax above her, using his magic, she visibly relaxed. Jax, what happened to the intruders? She asked as she still had a grudge against them. I've rendered them unconscious. He said as he pointed to the seven, of which Jax had bound five together and the other two who had branches making their way to them, eventually tying them together. She nodded and sighed in relief as Jax continued the treatment. Apart from your bruises on your arm and face, is there anywhere else which hurts? Jax asked as he would treat her. He still felt that it was his responsibility that Sarah was hurt, although the young boy knew he did the best he could. Ah, uh, yes. She answered as her face turned visibly red at the thoughts of the location of the bruises. I see. Can you give me some time? I will go and bind them in my room. After healing you, we will have to make a village trip to drop the seven of them. Luckily, the Magic Council branch isn't that far from here, so it won't take long. I hope you don't mind. Asked Jax as he prepared to move the seven dark mages. No, it's fine. I was also hoping to be able to move around after eating. She said with a slight smile as she got up and moved to her bed. Nodding to her, Jax used his nature magic to move them to the next room. Five minutes later, he came back to the room of the young lady. He had bound all seven of them together and searched them. They had the same job request on them, asking for the abduction of the young lady. For that, he was happy to confirm that there weren't any changes in the job. Besides, he managed to collect a total of 54,320 jewels from their bodies. It was customary to have such amounts on them. 
It was even a bit low considering that the seven of them had to live on this amount to travel on this job. After all, a meal would cost between 1,000 to 1,500 jewels per person. Maybe after this job, I should take hunting jobs such as hunting dark mage guilds and taking them down. It seems there is a lot of money to be made. But, I don't even need the money right now, so let's just continue with normal jobs. Jax thought as he made his way back to Sarah's room. All right, they are all bound and unconscious. Now Sarah, where are the bruises? Tomorrow, apart from going to the village, I believe you want to go to the beach and having bruises wouldn't be very nice. Jack said as he approached the lady who had a red face at his words. All right. She said as she turned her back on him and slowly started to take off her shirt and her pants, only to keep her underwear. Lifting an eyebrow, Jax understood why she had a red face previously. However, he merely gave a quick look at her body due to curiosity and then focused on her bruises. Jax was seven years old and currently had no interest in such things. As he looked at the various bruises on her skin, he started to treat her and Sarah, who was looking at him, slowly relaxed as she saw that he was only looking at her bruises. What were you thinking? He's just a kid. Of course, he won't care if a girl undresses in front of him. Sarah thought to herself as her shyness went away at her thoughts. Ten minutes later, Jax finally finished treating her wounds, and she started to dress up again. I'm sorry, Sarah, that I wasn't able to prevent them from hurting you previously. I wasn't alert enough. I will place some more defenses around the house before going to bed later. Jack said, full of seriousness at the girl he had to protect. She answered with a simple nod as they both left the room, and Jax went to gather the dark mages who were still unconscious. With a simple thought, the twigs and branches started to move, bringing the mages along with him towards the magic council branch in the village. As they came back from the branch of the magic council in the village, Jack sent Sarah to the villa, and he started to make some preparations around the house, such as growing vines on the walls with his nature magic. With vines everywhere, he would save his magic power should some enemies infiltrate the villa again. Moreover, he would be able to feel it if someone tried to climb the walls. Not only that, Jax used his earth magic to place some detection traps around the house. The detection traps, when one walked on it, would simply give him a signal, meaning that someone was coming closer to the villa. It was a spell he had thought of when he moved the seven dark mages to the branch of the magic council. Finally, Jax entered back in the villa and went to his room. Today was the first day his escort mission had started, and he had already taken down two groups of dark mages who had tried to kidnap the young lady. He didn't believe it would be calmer for the next two weeks. Chapter 17 Next week following their arrival in Selim, ten groups of dark mages met Jax and Sarah and attempted to abduct the young lady. Thankfully, those groups were mostly weak wizards who thought highly of themselves. Amongst those ten, two attempts came from Sirank wizards and one shot from a Birank wizard. Jax cleaned up rest the moment they arrived. From attacking during the night, at the village when they were visiting or at the beach when Sarah was relaxing, Jax had to always be on guard. Due to the frequent attacks, Jax and Sarah had to bring new dark mages to the magic council branch every day. Now, according to the workers there, the cells were almost full. With the funds of the various dark wizards he had captured, Jax made a total of 134,754 jewels, bringing his total to 252,474 jewels in his wallet. Now he considered himself quite rich of a man, and he was happy that he would be able to buy a lot with the money he had. Not to mention the job reward he still hadn't received, he felt quite right about his newfound fortune. Moreover, thanks to the various attacks from the mages, Jax had the opportunity to practice his magic, and the grooves of all of his magic were full except for the water magic, which was currently 37% complete. Something interesting had happened the moment Jax filled the first groove of all of the ten magics. He could now feel the various pearls around him. Although he couldn't feel any water pearl, he could feel one pearl for all of his magic, and they were all quite close to him. After understanding that what he felt were the pearls, Jax could assume that as long as the ten grooves were full, the closest pearl to him in every magic would attract him. 
This function would allow him to become stronger and continue to grow his magical powers without being blocked by the lack of pearls. From what he had been feeling, there were a total of six pearls in Selim, and Jax intended to gather them all before the end of his two-week trip. Moreover, he had an excellent opportunity since the young lady had learned a few days prior that her friends would be coming two days later due to some complications. As such, Jax proposed to go and visit the kingdom of Selim since they were there, and this would allow him to gather the pearls. As such, that morning, Jax had collected the bags for travel and inserted them in his shadow thanks to his dark magic and was ready to depart along with the excited Sarah, who had been bored for the last few days. Are you ready? Jax asked as she walked down the stairs from the third floor. Yes, we can leave immediately. She answered as she left the door first and Jax closed and locked the door behind him. All right. Let's go to town first, and we will take the train towards our first destination. Jack smiled at her while they left the villa behind and made their way to the train station rapidly. As they arrived in the village, they made their way to the train station immediately. They didn't want to waste too much time, especially when they already didn't have much time. As such, Jax and Sarah spent the two days on the road, visiting various cities, entertainment facilities and eating local specialties. They saw a total of four towns, Dondon, Dimwall, Drycoast and Dragonvale. Amongst those four towns, Jax managed to collect the six pearls present in this country. Since he already knew where those pearls were beforehand, it was easy to collect them. However, after collecting the six pearls, he could only feel three pearls, which were the pearls of fire, earth and light, the only magic pearl he hadn't found yet. Jax located those three pearls back in Fiori. As for the ones collected, he found the pearl of air on the top of a mountain on the edge of the ocean. The pearl of lightning he had seen in an old tree. It seemed to have received multiple lightning attacks in the last few years. The sound pearl which he found in a weird animal who had eaten the pearl. As for the fairy pearl, he found it in a valley of flowers. The pearl of nature in a deep forest and finally, the pearl of darkness in a deep cave. With a total of seven pearls collected, he was a B rank mage in all seven magic. Of course, he would have to develop them nicely to become the strongest in the future. With the pearls in Selim collected, he and Sarah both made their way back to the villa. In those two days, she had a lot of fun, a lot more than being stuck in her estate. After all, although the villa was big and there was even a private beach, there were only the two of them, and they couldn't necessarily be considered friends. However, now that the two days had passed, the delayed trip of her two friends would undoubtedly be there the next day and going back to the villa was a must. The next day, in the morning, as Jax and Sarah had come back the previous night, the silver-haired boy received information from his magic that there was someone trespassing and coming closer to the villa. This matter had him fully awake as he immediately got up and changed into his clothes before making his way to the young lady's room. Sarah. Some people are coming closer to the villa. Do you mind confirming if they are your friends for me? I wouldn't want to attack them by mistake. Jack said as he knocked at the door. Yeah, yeah, give me a moment. I'm coming. She answered as he could hear the sheets on her bed move as she got up. So, where are they? She asked as she came out of her room in a skimpy outfit. Since the day he had to heal her, and she had shown herself in her underwear, she was less shy and didn't bother hiding her body as much as before. Right on the front, they are about 800 meters from the villa, Jack said as he escorted her to the other side of the third floor so that she could see in the distance. Yeah, they're my friends. You can let them enter. She replied as she got excited and went back to her room to get changed. Hearing this, Jax kept silent and went down the stairs to the first floor to the entrance to welcome the three tall girls who were slowly walking with their bags in their shoulder. Welcome, please enter. Said Jax as he opened the door courtly for the three girls. They immediately entered, and just as they were going to ask Jax, the young boy cut them off. Was there anyone else who was supposed to arrive at the same time? He asked as they thought for a moment before replying negatively. I see. Please enter and make yourselves at home. There are some rats to take care of. He continued as he went outside the villa and closed the door behind him. 
the nature magic had sensed a total of fifteen different intruders near the beach. As such, before any of them noticed him, he rushed towards their location while starting the various defensive measures he had already planned. The earth began to wave as if they were on the ocean. The roots started to bind them, the sound stopped traveling to their ears, preventing them from hearing anything, water from the sea churned up and tried to drown them as darkness appeared all around them, reducing their vision as much as possible. And finally, when eight of the fifteen mages had fallen, Jax used his light magic to flash a bright light, blinding them due to the previous darkness. Finally, using his fairy magic to boost his speed, he started shooting bolts of lightning, stunning the last ones before the roots began to intertwine them. Along with the speed boost, he ran to their location and started to slam them behind the head, knocking them unconscious. After having collected the pearls and improved his magic, it had reached the B rank in everything except light, fire and earth. It had greatly improved his ability to fight with other mages, and it had also enhanced his magic amount and the strength of his spells, making him quite strong amongst the B-rank mages in any of those magics. He didn't doubt that filling the second groove in any magic would make him about as strong as an A-rank mage. After having taken care of those fifteen dark mages amongst which he believed there were a few B-rank mages, he strengthened the binding of the roots and went back to the villa to confirm the safety of the four girls. He didn't believe he missed any enemies, but just to be sure. The task had proven to be more challenging than estimated, and he didn't want to take any chances. Are all four of you alright? Jax asked as he entered through the door and saw the four girls waiting for him near the villa's entrance. Ha! You see? I told you he would be fine even against dark mages. He was the guard I chose after all. Sarah bragged to her three friends as she had a big smile on her face. She hadn't been worried at all about Jax's safety after all the fights there had been. While bragging, she even decidedly forgot that she had been reluctant to have him as her guard previously. Sarah then turned towards Jax with her eyes saying, You better give me enough bragging material, as she asked, how many dark mages were there this time? As if she didn't care about it, as if it was a trivial affair to have dark mages after you. Jax smiled simply before answering. There were a total of fifteen dark mages this time amongst which were four B-rank mages and the rest were C-rank mages. He took a small pause before continuing, deciding to give her what she wanted. I would like to ask if the young miss would allow me to escort the four ladies to the village while I bring the enemies to the magic council. I am sure they have cells ready for them. He asked politely, giving a small bow to Sarah. As Jax lifted his head toward Sarah, he saw happiness in her eyes as she saw how many mages he had taken down and the awe in the eyes of her three childhood friends. Yes, I'm sure we could take half an hour to walk and visit the village while you take them to the magic council. She replied with a nod as she knew she couldn't keep the dark mages in her backyard for very long. All right. If you'll excuse me, I'll go and prepare the enemies for travel, and we can leave in half an hour if it is okay with you. Jax asked as he needed some time to search the dark mages and collect what was useful. If he didn't order them, the members' magic council would, and they already received a sum for every dark mage captured. As such, he didn't feel bad for collecting the money and other useful items on them. Not that they would be using them anytime soon. I'm pretty tired of this job, so I was speeding a bit while skipping the non-essential parts. I hope you liked it. Chapter 18 after getting the okay from Sarah, Jax once again left the villa, going to the fifteen mages he had taken down. When he arrived, they were still unconscious and were all tightly bound by the roots. Taking the closest dark mages from him, he made sure he has knocked out again with another bolt of lightning before unbinding him and starting to search him. This time he was lucky as he found quite a bit of money and ten explosive lacrimas. It wasn't the first time he saw such lacrimas, but it was the first time since the beginning of the mission that dark mages owned such a lacrima. This discovery made him furrow his brows as he bound him again before moving to the next dark mage. Once again, he found a wallet with money in it. However, what made him turn serious was that this dark mage also had explosive lacrimas with him. Jax continued to search the C-rank dark mages first, and without exception, he found explosive lacrimas and money on them. Binding them all back together, 
he turned towards the B-rank mages, which he stunned once more before searching them. However, what he found made him smile a little as he confirmed that the four B-rank mages were not in the same group as they had the symbol of four different dark guilds. From what he could understand from this situation, each of those groups had previously sent mages after him and Sarah. However, seeing that none managed to complete the job, they decided to fight together and probably fight against each other for the reward in the end. Searching them and seeing four abduction tasks confirmed his deduction that those were from different dark guilds. Having taken all of them down also meant that the chances of being attacked by dark mages were almost minimal as Jax finished the mission's leaders and many of their members. Collecting explosive lacrimas, money and a communication lacrima each, Jax broke the communication lacrima as he couldn't use them and finally bound the four mages along with the rest of the group. With a smile, he silently counted his loot and was pleasantly surprised as he found a total of 530,000 jewels along with 150 explosive lacrimas. Now that he estimated the whole, he figured that this task might have been taken as a joint operation by the four dark guilds. It was the only reason he could find that the 11 c rank mages had 30,000 jewels each on them, and the B-rank mages had 50,000 jewels each. Moreover, each of them had 10 explosive lacrimas. Jax could see that every dark guild put a lot on this mission. Even too much as Jax quickly looked at the abduction job and saw that the price had once again increased. The previous abduction mission offered a reward of 500,000 jewels, and now it had doubled, increasing the total amount to a million. It seemed that whoever wanted to abduct her was desperate as he raised the amount by quite a bit. He frowned slightly but didn't care too much as there wasn't a lot of time left on this vacation, and they would be going a few days later. After binding the dark mages and storing his loot in his shadow, he brought them to the villa before taking the four girls to visit the village while dropping the dark mages to the magic council. When they returned to the villa, the four girls immediately rushed to get changed into their swimsuits as they made their way to the beach. This private beach, which had previously been tranquil, became alive as the four girls played various beach games. They sometimes swam in the ocean or played volleyball on the beach. Jax, who had joined them on the beach, was lying in the sun, reading his book. It was the vacation he wanted. Some girls played on the beach while the young boy sat in the sun and did his favorite pastime, reading. While he wasn't sexually interested in them due to his young age, it didn't stop him from appreciating the sight as he sometimes controlled the water for the girls to play. Making various forms or throwing them in the air with a push of magic to let them fall into the water of even making a slide in the water, allowing them to slide directly in the water and see the pretty sight of the fishes in the water without having to care about air. As he read the book, Sarah came closer to him and looked at what he was reading from behind before taking a gasp as she pointed at a picture in the book. Do you like those kinds of keys? She asked while pointing at the golden key pictured in the book. Hum, yes I do. I don't know why I like those keys so much, but they calm me, and I have a weird obsession with those keys. So, I collect them as much as I can. Jax explained while keeping his attention on the book in front of him. EUM, if you'd like, I can give you a key like that. I have one with me. However, it's not golden or silver like those keys. She said while pointing at the pictures on the book. But golden with black circling on it. She said while turning her attention back to Jax. I'd love to, but if I'm right about what key you own, I can't take it. It's most likely worth a lot of money, and I'm not rich enough to pay for your key. Jack said while shaking his head. He, of course, wanted the key. However, he wasn't about to cheat something out of their things, especially the one he was supposed to protect during her trip. Well, give me a moment. She said while running back to the villa. A few moments later, she came back with a slightly panting breath as she put her hand on her knee to catch her breath. Jax, who looked at her, enjoyed the scene as he saw her chest, which was barely covered by her bikini, rise and fall rapidly. However, after a moment, he turned his attention to the key in her hand. The black key had a little bit of gold on the tip and along the key's body. However, the rest of the key was black as there was a serpentine figure that spiraled around the key up to the top. This key was remarkably similar in the description to the rumored black key in the book. While there weren't any pictures in the book, 
the author believed that the key would be slightly golden due to being on par with the twelve zodiac keys, but due to not being a sign, there would be black to signify its difference from the other zodiacs. Not only that, according to the book, the black key would have a serpentine figure on it to represent the constellation of Ophiuchus. With all of these descriptions together, the book's author believed that there was only a single black celestial spirit key globally, the gate of the snake charmer key, Ophiuchus. With his eyes not leaving the key, Sarah laughed and threw him the key before declaring, All right, this is now yours. I can see that you like it very much. Not to mention that I bought it from a stall for 500 jewels, don't talk to me about money. After all, you saved my life countless times and considering that the mission jumped from D rank to B rank and now it has increased to a rank after we found this new job request, this can be considered a gift from me as thanks. She said she didn't want to talk anymore as she started to make her way back to the beach. Jax didn't wait as a smile plastered his face as he said, thanks for the gift, I like it very much. As she heard him say so, she also smiled sweetly before going back to play with her friends. During this time, Jax continued to scrutinize the newly gifted key. This key was one of the world's rarest, and there wasn't another one of it in the world. He hadn't thought he would find such a key in this place, but the boy was glad that he had taken this job. This way, Jax continued to play with the key until it was time to eat. The four girls had fun that day, and this incredible atmosphere continued until the last day of the trip. On their last day, Jax repurchased the ticket for the journey and the boat left at two in the afternoon. The trip back to Divide Island would take a total of two days. Is the black key being in Sarah's house a coincidence? I think not. It wasn't written where this key was before being contracted to Yukino. So, I decided they had it and it somehow found its way in Yukino's hands at some point in time. Chapter 19 The three pretty girls said goodbye and left after they each kissed Jax on the cheek, thanking him for protecting them for the few days they were together. Simply smiling back, Jax looked at them leaving before resting back on the couch while Sarah finished packing her stuff. He thought back to those few days enjoying the time at the beach. He had fought two battles, one with a group of random dark mages, which didn't count for much. However, the second fight had taken a lot out of him, and he had finished all bruised with cracked ribs and bloodied. This fight was with a weak A-rank mage from one of the four dark guilds. Jax believed that they wanted to take revenge, but he thankfully managed to stop him and knock him down. The reason he had been so bloodied and beaten up was that the A-rank mage had decided to use explosive lacrimas at him. Had it not been for him to quickly cover the distance with a speed boost of his fairy magic, he would have had difficulty surviving the encounter. Luckily, the same mage wasn't that good in single combat, and the only reason he was an A-rank mage was that his magic had a significant effect on a large crowd of people. In the end, Jax had managed to take him down. Not only did he get quite a bit of loot from the dark mage, but when he brought him to the branch of the magic council, he learned that there was a bounty on his head. The A-rank dark mage he had brought back was the master of the Lost Hell Dark Guild. While it had a great name, it was a subpar dark guild without a single S-rank mage in its ranks. However, being the master of a dark guild and the status of an A-rank dark mage were both worth a bounty. And so, Jax made extra money in this job. The loot from the mage was a total of 243,500 jewels, 73 remaining explosive lacrimas, a sword which was named Ghost Sword if he was to go by the name on the guard of the blade and a bounty worth 400,000 jewels. All this together rewarded more than the job itself. However, Jax confirmed that he didn't plan on taking another such job anytime soon as it was pretty hard to stay alert 247. While waiting for Sarah to prepare her stuff, Jax got up and played a bit with Ghost. He could confirm that this was an extraordinary magical weapon. When fighting, the sword could phase through the defense of the opponent at will. While it seemed incredible, it was also perilous. After all, if the opponent tried to hit the sword while it phased out and became like a ghost, the enemy's sword could also traverse through it, leaving him open to attacks. And, exactly like the sword of Eugene in Sword Art Online in Alfheim Online. Although it was a good weapon, he didn't like it very much. Anyway, with his skills and weapons, he didn't need such a trick to get rid of his opponents. However, 
he previously didn't have a sword strong enough for him. So, this sword would do for the moment. Looking backwards at Sarah, who had all of her luggage, Jack smiled and extended his shadow to store it. The young lady smiled at this magic show before they left the villa and went to the port. It was 1.30 in the afternoon when they left, and they arrived at the boat around 10 minutes before the departure. When they arrived on the boat, they immediately made their way to their cabins. Jack searched Sarah's compartment first as he had gotten more cautious after all of those attacks. After confirming that everything was fine, Jax walked to his cabin, searched it like Sarah's and ensured that everything was fine. While he went back to Sarah's cabin to give her back her luggage, Jack sat on her bed while waiting for the ship to start. He was planning to do a complete search of the boat once they left the port to confirm that there weren't any enemies on board, which would save him a lot of trouble. He couldn't do so much previously with his sound magic, but now that he found a pearl and increased his sound magic proficiency, he could search it quite easily. And so, when the ship left port, Jax used his sound magic to search every single cabin on the boat, whether it was the passengers, the captain, or the various sailors, he listened to their conversation. He knew that they would immediately talk once the ship left port to communicate with each other. And as he thought, Jax found two groups of dark mages on board the vessel. Moreover, they were a few cabins apart from Jax's and Sarah's. Thankfully, they were once again some small goons. Unfortunately, he would have to get rid of them once again. However, after all those fights, he understood that as a mage, one should be ready for death at any moment, and so, he didn't feel bad about it anymore. Communicating his findings with Sarah, Jax went back to his cabin while increasing the sound magic in the corridor and Sarah's room to make sure nothing went wrong. In this way, Jax and Sarah stayed in their cabins and ate some food prepared in advance. When night arrived, Jax left his cabin quietly and made his way to the two groups of mages he had targeted. The first group of mages, a few lodges next to his own, also seemed to get ready to get into action. However, before they could react, Jax plunged them into darkness. With the young boy stopping the sound from traveling in this cabin, no one else on the ship would be able to hear them. Using his nature magic, he grew a twig on his shoe and made it go under the door to unlock it. A few seconds later, Jax was inside the room with three dead mages. Going to the cabin next to it, Jax did the same thing and killed four mages. They were part of the same group of dark mages. He collected the money they had and used his dark magic to store the bodies inside of it. Moving to the next group of dark mages who had gotten on the ship, Jax did the same he just did and collected their bodies, leaving no trace of their existence on the ship. With a loot of 73,000 jewels in total, Jax was quite disappointed but laughed at himself. After all, he had gained a lot on this trip, and he shouldn't ask more than that. He then climbed up on the ship's deck, and while using his darkness and sound magic, he got rid of the dark mage's bodies along with their luggage, letting them disappear from the ocean surface with his water magic. As he looked at them disappear, Jax didn't have many expressions on his face. They were dark mages. They chose to be dark mages, to kill, to assassinate, to rape, to work in slavery. They had to know that at some point, they would be arrested or killed. Jax didn't feel much about it and simply went back to his cabin to sleep. This way, the ride on the ship went well, and they arrived slightly in advance on Divide Island. On the pier, Jax could see M. Rice along with a big group of bodyguards waiting for the ship to dock. It didn't take much time as Jax and Sarah climbed down from the ship and arrived on the pier in front of M. Rice, who seemed happy to see her daughter again. Sarah. Are you okay? I heard about the abduction request and the price they offered for you. The older man said while looking at Sarah. Yes, I'm right. We discovered that the price had increased on the ship when we were going to Selim, and we discovered the second increase in price after a week at the villa. However, even with the price increase, Jax took care of all the dark mages. The vacations were fun, and I can't wait to go back next year. She said while smiling happily. She then started to walk towards her mansion while accompanying her father. Jax had no choice but to follow them as he still hadn't been paid for the completed job. Arriving at the mansion, Jack sat on a chair in the living room and waited for M. 
Rice and Sarah to complete whatever they were doing. Jack simply took out the young lady's luggage and left them next to him while bringing out his book to read. Jack's figured that by the time he arrived at the guild, he would have finished it. Half an hour later, as Jax was starting to get tired of waiting, Sarah and her father arrived back in the living room and went to sit with Jax. Sorry for having taken this long. Here is your payment. In the beginning, the job was simply a D-rank job, and I paid 240,000 jewels. However, we can both agree that this was an A-rank job. I decided to give you a million jewels instead, which was the price on Sarah's head. Moreover, I heard from Sarah that you like Celestial Spirit Gate Keys. I have a few here I wish to give to you. What do you think? Asked the older man with a smile as he took ten one hundred thousand jewels money bills and a small case with ten silver Celestial Spirit Gate Keys. With a smile, Jax nodded. He liked the Gate Keys a lot more than the money. After all, while he could quickly get cash from completing jobs, there was a limit on the Celestial Spirit Gate Keys. Well, thank you. I believe it's my cue to leave as I still have to make my way back to Fairy Tale today. I hope you have a great day. Jack said while getting up and nodding at the father and daughter. Thank you for guarding me for the two weeks. It was more dangerous than I thought it would be. Sarah and Jack smiled as she thanked him for the service rendered. Would you mind if we asked for you if we have another job in the future? Asked them. Rice as Sarah told him everything that happened on the trip. It was my pleasure, Sarah, and it would be my pleasure to work with you again in the future, Jack said as he smiled and turned away while lifting his left hand to say goodbye to the duo. Chapter 20 Leaving the mansion behind him, Jax made his way to the train station on the island. He was planning on leaving the island and arriving on the mainland by the end of the day. At ten in the evening, Jax finally arrived on the mainland. He was currently standing on the pier of the city and was figuring out what to do. He had two choices. The first one was to find an inn to sleep at and leave the next day by train. The second one was to leave immediately with his magic to collect his pearls and go to Fairy Tail. At that point, he would most likely arrive at eight in the morning, and he could just relax all day before going to sleep early. Thinking about it for the moment, he wasn't that tired, and with his magical power, he didn't need to sleep every night. As such, he immediately used his air magic to lift him in the air while using his fairy magic to speed himself up. Feeling the three pearls remaining, Jax showed a faint smile as he thought all three of the pearls were in the same direction. However, considering his location, he would have to pass through the Forgotten Desert, where he would most likely find a pearl or two. However, the silver-haired boy didn't mind much. He had food and drinks with him, and he would spend most of the night in the desert, meaning it wouldn't feel too hot. Leaving the town immediately, he flew towards the desert at a low height. It wasn't that he didn't want to fly higher, but with his current magical strength, it was better to stay close to the earth as it would allow him to save magical power. An hour later, thanks to his high speed, he managed to see from afar the mountains. The mountains were right next to the desert. In other words, he would arrive soon enough, and he was right as he saw sand as far as he could see. Closing his eyes slightly to feel the pull of the pearls, he turned slightly towards the right and moved directly into the desert. Honestly, except for wind and sand, there was nothing in the desert. Thankfully, due to the sun being down, the wind was cold. It was undoubtedly better than sweating due to the heat. He simply used his fire magic on himself to keep a suitable temperature and continued on his way. Half an hour later, as he flew even faster thanks to the wind flowing from behind him, he felt the pearl not far away. Slowing down, he started to look towards the pull and soon enough, he could only feel the power under his feet. Using his earth magic, he moved the sand until he finally saw a pale brown pearl lying in the bottomless pit. Shaking his head, thinking that other people would never find his pearls if they were all hidden like that, he took it, and it instantly melted in his palm, disappearing. At the same time, Jax could feel the improvement of his earth magic. If before he could only move ten shovels worth of dirt at once, then now he could shovel thirty or forty. Feeling the increase in his magical power, he smiled and turned towards the next pearl he felt. This time he turned towards the mountain and made his way as fast as he could. 
However, only two hours later did he arrive at the side of the hill, and still, the pearl he was looking for was most likely at the very top of the mountain. By this time, his air magical power had almost all disappeared. As such, he used his newly improved earth magic to help him move up by controlling the earth into a makeshift elevator. As he was slowly moving upwards, he could only lament that earth magic was undoubtedly slower than air magic. By the time Jax reached the top of the mountain and arrived near the pearl he was looking for, the air magical power had almost half recovered, enough to let him go down the hill and do quite a bit of traveling. After all, he didn't intend to be in the desert by the time the sun came up. Searching around for a bit, Jax came to the highest peak of the mountain and found the light pearl stuck in the earth as it collected the sun all day long. Breaking the ground encasing the pearl, he took it and left towards the last remaining pearl he could sense. Moving on, it took four hours to enter the neutral grounds. Sometimes, Jax used his air magic, and some other times he simply used his fairy and lightning magic to boost his speed while using the earth to help him pass through ravines whenever there was one. Jax then continued to travel deep into the neutral grounds. The sun started to light up the surroundings while he finally found the last pearl remaining. This pearl had been a pain to collect as it was directly in a pit full of magma. He had no idea how that pit or that magma appeared. However, he only knew that when he collected the pearl, the magma immediately cooled down, and it seemed as if the heat was an illusion as the temperature went back to normal. With the fire pearl finally collected, Jax collected one of each pearl, and now he had the strength of a good B rank mage in all of the ten different magic he possessed. Closing his eyes to enter his inner world, he saw the ten smaller statues, a single pearl on the top of each. Walking towards the bigger one, he saw that every part of his body had a different color. The left hand of the statue was white, representing air, the right hand was blue, meaning water, the left foot was red representing fire, the right foot was brown representing earth, the left leg was orange representing lightning. The right leg was green representing nature, the left arm was yellow representing light, the right arm was black representing darkness, the torso was pink describing the fairy magic, and the head was purple representing the sound magic. While the colors had indeed appeared, it was still quite pale, and he didn't doubt that the more pearls he collected, the more colors would appear on the giant. While he had no idea what the giant form of himself meant, he didn't believe it would be harmful to himself as it strengthened him. He wouldn't hesitate to continue improving his magic. Getting out of this meditation, he felt quite relaxed, and the sleepiness from before disappeared as he smiled and started to make his way to Magnolia. He couldn't wait to go back to the guild. It was the first time he had taken such an extended mission, and he wanted to relax for a few days before taking another task. As such, by the time it was nine in the morning, right when the guild was the busiest, Jax finally arrived in front of the gates and pushed them lightly, entering the ever so lively guild hall. Smiling at the fight which had just started, Jax moved out of the way as a mage flew over to him and simply made his way to the counter of the guild where the master was seated drinking. Hi, master. Said Jax as he didn't see him. Hi Jax, so how did your last job go? He asked while taking another sip from his mug. It went well at the very beginning. However, from the moment we got on the boat, it started to get harder. The first group of mages started attacking us directly on the ship during the night. I had to. Get rid of them. Jack said while getting his head down. While he did not regret what he did, the boy didn't know what the master would think because he killed three dark mages. As Jax finished his sentence, the guild's fight stopped as they all gave each other a look. They all knew that at some point, he would have to kill someone. However, no one ever had to kill someone when they were seven years old. They usually killed their first enemy once they became adults. However, Jax had to do it at seven years old and alone. And how did you feel afterwards? Asked the master as he was trying to find the best words to reassure Jax. Extremely bad. Once I got rid of the bodies, I hurled everything I had in the toilet on the ship and distracted myself with my gate keys. Said Jax as he slowly lifted his head back up, looking at the master. Well, normally you would never have to kill at such an age since it's only in dangerous situations where you normally have to kill or when they are deemed enemies by the magic council. Do you have any nightmares about it? 
asked the master as he wanted to see how shaken up Jax was. No, you know I've lived worse. I know the dark mages were enemies, and they chose to be dark mages by themselves. It just didn't sit well with me at the beginning. However, I also knew that it was either them or me. Jax shook his head and continued. Besides, with the gate keys to distract me, I've been good. I see. What happened afterwards? Asked the master as he knew the job shouldn't have gone well, judging from the fact that he had to kill the first day. Chapter 21 The next day was fine since there were no other dark mages on the boat. They were about D-rank in strength. However, I found that the abduction request was of 500,000 jewels. The job immediately changed from a D-rank job to a C-rank job. However, I decided to continue it. Jack stopped as he took a sip of juice. When we arrived, we were attacked on the first day. It continued as such for the whole week until a group of B-rank mages attacked us. At the same time, we discovered that the request had changed from 500,000 jewels to a million. By that time, I didn't have much problem fighting with B-rank mages, so I continued the job. Said Jax as everyone in the guild was listening to him speak. It was the day before we left that it became harder. A mage with A-rank strength attacked us. I managed to knock him out, and we left the next day back to Divide Island, where I had to leave her to her father. All in all, I managed to take care of an A-rank mage. The job changed from a D-rank to an A-rank job, and I was paid a million with a few celestial gate keys. Moreover, I got a lot of loot from the dark mages, which I took before giving them to the magic council. Jax finished with a smile while drinking his apple juice and asking another worker at the bar. Oh. So you took care of an A-rank mage. Well, considering your strength, I'll allow you to take B-rank missions and considering that it is your second job, we will have to talk about the guild fees. The master said while leaving his mug aside. Every member of the guild has to give a total of 5% of their gain on the mission to the guild to keep it running. The 5% is on the base job. As such, it will be 5% on the 240,000 joules, which is 12,000 joules. You understand? The master asked while looking at Jax. Yeah, I already knew about it. It was amongst the knowledge I gained while studying with the others. Said Jax as he took out 12,000 jewels and gave it to the master. Right. Did Laxus come back? I didn't see him for a while. Asked Jax as he looked at the master. He should be back tomorrow. Answered the master as he took back his mug and started to drink again. All right answered Jax as he went down to the library. He had finally finished the book, and he was ready to find another one. However, before that, he wanted to identify the ten celestial gate keys Sarah's father had given him previously. Taking out the keys and leaving them on the table, he opened the book and started finding them. Thankfully, he had already read this book so, he knew where to find the information. Half an hour later, he had identified all ten silver spiritual keys. They were the keys of Merzoa, Barium, Arctites, Vetus, Charis, Clerus, Octalus, Celechula, Garichula, and Halidia. Along with his previous seven silver keys and his black key, he had a total of eighteen celestial spirit gate key. Storing his keys, he put back the book in the library and randomly took another one, which seemed interesting. With this, he went back upstairs and contrarily to what the master had expected, Laxus had already come back from his job and was currently sitting on the stool near the bar. With a smile, Jax went to him and tapped him on the shoulder before taking something to eat from the worker at the bar. Previously he had only drunk, but now that he saw Laxus eating, he felt quite hungry as well. Yo Jax, how did your job go? Asked Laxus between two mouthfuls of his toasts. Pretty good, harder than expected but still doable, Jax answered back with a smile. Made any progress in that magic of yours? Asked Laxus as Jax could see that he was preparing to hit him. Remember how I was better than you last time we met? Now I'll flatten you. Jack said with a cocky smile as the guild members backed away, and Laxus dropped his toast before hitting him as hard as he could. However, before he could hit, Jax dodged the attack and used the bar counter to support his weight as he gave a hard kick to Laxus, who flew into a table. 
With a smile, Laxus got up and said, let's see if I can beat you today. You could beat me before due to your high number of magic. Now I'll kick your ass. He shouted as he lunged towards Jax as fast as he could. Blocking the attack with an arm, Jax retreated a bit before he rushed back into the fight. With fists hitting each other, Laxus was the first one to fall to the ground as Jax rushed towards him only to have Laxus electrify himself to protect himself from the hit. Backing slightly, Jax levitated in the air and sped up while boosting his speed with fairy magic. Rushing towards Laxus, Jax electrified himself as well while mixing it with his fire magic. Hitting directly in the face of Laxus, he flew straight into the wall as Jax used his sound magic to disorient him while he was trying to get up and gave him a knee to the head. Laughing at Laxus for being hit, Laxus got up and released even more lightning around him and shot a beam of thunder towards Jax, who simply controlled water to direct it to the ground. Smiling, even more, Jax stared at Laxus before using his dark magic to creep towards Laxus slowly and finally latched on his shadow as Jax rushed towards him. As he saw Jax rush towards him, he tried to move and lift his arms to defend, but the shadow slowed him down and eventually, Jack stopped his fist right in front of Laxus's throat, effectively winning the duel. Huh, it seems you have begun to slack off huh, Jack said as he tapped on Laxus's shoulder and released the dark magic. Damn, you've gotten stronger huh, Laxus said to Jax as the two of them made their way back to the bar to eat their food. Yeah, I didn't have a choice. B ranks targeted me and an A rank dark mage on my last job. If I didn't become stronger, I'd be dead. Jack said as he started to explain his last job and what he had gone through. As he spoke, Laxus was more and more surprised at the difficulty of his previous employment, and when he compared it with his, he understood why Jax had to become stronger as soon as possible. What about you? What have you been doing the last few weeks? Asked Jax as he knew that Laxus had just come back from another job. Well, for my last job, I had to get rid of a few monsters which hunted down the villagers when they tried to farm. Before that, I had to capture some bandits. Nothing complicated. It may be the reason why you have overcome me now. Laxus said while shaking his head. They had been friends for a long time now. As such, there were no bitter feelings when one surpassed the other as it only meant that they had to work harder. Moreover, it wasn't the first time one beat the other. The two boys were used to it. In that case, I'll take harder jobs. After saying so, Laxus got up from the stool and directly went to the job board to take another job. Thinking about it, he didn't have anything else to do in the guild if Laxus was gone. As such, Jax forgot the idea of taking a break and went to take another job. Job after job. It was the only way to become stronger. To fight, to be disadvantaged and to learn how to surpass oneself. Jax and Laxus had the same idea in mind as they both chose jobs they thought to be fitting, and as the boys both decided on a job, the two friends looked at the other and saw that they had the same kind of job. It was defeating mages. This job was the best way to grow stronger as fast as possible. Back on the bar counter, the master looked at this with a fond smile on his face as he drank from his mug. The attitude of the two also seemed to set some older members, and soon enough, the guild became almost empty as almost all of the members took a job to complete. The master, looking at the job board which had lost almost a quarter of his requests, a number which would typically be two weeks of work had been done in an instant thanks to the two younger members of the guild. At this point, the master smiled even more profoundly and gave himself a tap on the back for having decided to take younger members in the guild. Lax's character will be slightly different from canon. After all, now he got a friend and a rival when he was young compared to when he grew up alone. Chapter 22 Six months flew by like a breeze. Since Jax and Laxus took a job request at the same time six months prior, the guild seemed more active as the older members stopped loitering around after completing a job and instead of spending a month doing nothing, they reduced this time in half. This action not only significantly increased the revenue of the guild but also their strength and the reputation of fairy tale on the continent. However, the two who changed the most were Laxus and Jax as while the older members took a break longer and longer after each job, the two of them simply entered the guildhall. 
asked how many requests the other had completed while choosing another employment and left within five minutes of their entry in the guild. While the master was slightly worried that they would tire themselves out at first, the two of them were always full of energy when they came back to the guild. And while Laxus failed two jobs in the over 70 jobs he took in the six months, Jax had a 100% completion rate. With their rivalry going, citizens spread their exploits in fury, and the two were known wizards of fairy tale. So much that there were even job requests specifically for the two of them. After the third month of their competition started, they started to verify whether there was a request in their name and took them whenever there was one. The reason? They usually paid more since they asked for them specifically. At the beginning of the six months, Laxus turned ten. Knowing the date of his birthday, Jack stopped on his way back to buy him magical headphones that would not only allow him to listen to music but also to concentrate his lightning power to fire more vigorous bursts of lightning. Along with the headphones, Jax left a birthday card with three sentences written on it, Happy Birthday. Go on, enjoy your birthday. I'll use this time to make the gap between the two of us wider. When Jax returned two days later, he learned that Laxus took the headphones, kept the birthday card in his pocket and rushed out of the guild hall after selecting a job. He didn't even bother to open the presents from the other members. As he heard this, he laughed while taking another job and left to complete more. At this point, there was a board with the number of assignments completed since the beginning of their challenge. Later on, the year changed to X772. However, Laxus and Jax didn't bother celebrating as they had a competition going on, and they both didn't care very much for the new year. As such, they stayed a few minutes longer before leaving to complete their new jobs. In those six months, Jax completed over 80 jobs for almost one every two days. The master had allowed both of them to take a ranked job since the lower ranked ones were starting to be too easy for them. However, no matter what kind of jobs there were, Jax and Laxus mostly took monster subjugation, bandit capture and dark mage capture jobs. And finally, after six months, they both stopped. While the two boys hadn't said their deadlines, the two of them stopped. They had already taken jobs non-stop for over six months, running all across the continent and completing employment everywhere. Laxus now had the strength of a real A-rank mage, taking care of most jobs under the S-ranks, while Jax could take any jobs below S-rank and have no problem completing them. Together, they were already amongst the top of the mages in the guild, even when compared to the older ones. In his travels, Jax had managed to find quite a high amount of pearls scattered over the continent. He found two air pearls, three water pearls, two fire pearls, one earth pearl, one lightning pearl, three sound pearls, three fairy pearls, two nature pearls, one light pearl and two darkness pearls. However, even if Jax found them, the boy couldn't use them. He had learned that it became harder and harder to improve his magic and fill the groove. All of his magics only had a single pearl inserted in them, and Jax hadn't filled the grooves yet. For the grooves, his air magic was 93% completed, 97% for water magic, 57% for fire magic, 47% for earth magic, 54% for lightning, 87% for sound, 88% for his fairy magic, 90% for nature, 68% for light and 80% for darkness. While a few of his magics were close to reaching the limit, there was still a small distance to complete. Currently, by reaching almost the boundary of the second groove, Jax confirmed that his magic had the strength of an average A rank mage. However, due to his various magics, he could easily take care of anyone in the A rank class. Moreover, in those six months, Jax did quite a bit. He bought a few magical items, such as a light pen and ice cutting pen. Amongst the loot of the dark mages the silver haired boy defeated, he found 17 different magical weapons, 21 sets of magical armors. 36 silver celestial gate keys, and he even found a judgment field that stopped anyone from lying when inside of the area. Unfortunately, he also got a lot of duplicates in the silver celestial gate keys. However, the biggest gain this time except for his increase in magic, the pearls, and the gate keys was the amount of money he made. After all, he collected money from dark mages, weak dark guilds he destroyed, bandits, bounties of the magic councils and the reward from completing a job. All in all, 
he made a total profit of 24,540,568 joules. This amount would allow an average family to live for about 10 years if they didn't have big spendings. In other words, what he made in six months was what ordinary citizens made in almost a decade. If thrown into his account in the guild, he had a total of 27,027,788 jewels, which he could spend freely without a care in the world. With all of this money, Jax had thought about buying some land near the guild to build his own house with his nature magic. However, it wasn't for now as he didn't know whether he would leave again for jobs soon. As soon as he and Laxus met in the guild hall, they immediately started another brawl, only for Laxus to be beaten entirely over. Jack simply pointed at the board, which showed the number of jobs completed for Laxus to accept his loss as Jax was 12 jobs ahead of him. With this finished, the competition of six months and the job requests started piling up again on the job request board. It is worth noticing that Fairy Tail had become more popular due to the two who challenged each other, and now they received more job requests. This was the way the two rivals spent half of the year. However, no matter how much work they did, they didn't regret it as they both saw an incredible increase in their powers. The day they finished the six months, they both slept for three days straight, which showed how tired they were of all those jobs. As such, after a week of relaxation, Laxus once again left the guild. However, this time, he didn't go to a job but merely decided to go to the beach to relax. Jax, on the other hand, stayed in the guild and only relaxed, talked with the master and did his basic physical training while practicing his magic non-stop. While it didn't increase as much as it did on jobs, he needed to stop doing jobs for a while and instead asked the master about magic to see if he could discover new uses of his magic. A week after Laxus left, Jax decided that he bought land and made his house. He had money, he had the time, and it felt like a waste to simply live in an apartment if he could have his own home. The moment the boy had this idea, he got excited about having a house, something he never had before, and he decided to go through with it. As such, he started to look around the guild for free land. Finally, after two days of searching, he found some land a kilometer behind the guild. The land was on a small mountain and had access to the water. From the hill, it was possible to see the guild hall and the ocean. Furthermore, having access to the water should give an incredible view in the morning. Moreover, looking at the land, it was possible to create a huge house, even slightly more significant than M. Rice Villa. However, the most important was that there wasn't anyone else on the mountain, and he could buy the mountain itself if he ever so wanted. He decided this was it. So, with the land chosen, Jax went back to the guild to find the master. He wanted to buy land. However, due to his age, no one would take him seriously, and the boy would need an adult to verify everything was fine. The next day, the master came with Jax to the landowner, and he managed to buy the land for a total of 8 million jewels. When Jax paid the money directly and signed to become the landowner, the previous landowner was shocked and immediately asked himself what he had been doing with his life. As such, with a new land deed, money and time, Jax decided to build his dream house entirely out of his powers. 100 jewels about 1 US dollar. Chapter 23 After a night of partying with the other guild members due to him buying a piece of land, Jax got up in the early morning. Why? Because it was time to start his house. Making his way to his newly bought land, he had already made a basic plan on how he wanted his new home to look. He hoped that in the future, he would have friends or guildmates over. He planned to make the house excessively big so that anyone could stay with the need arise. He planned on having three floors above the ground and two under. Arriving at the land, he immediately started working. Using his earth magic, he began by making a giant rectangular hole, deep enough for there to be two different floors. This hole would be his two basement floors. Thankfully, since he would do everything with his magic, he wouldn't have to worry about everything falling on itself, and the boy just needed to make everything as best and perfect as he could. Afterwards, he would be able to iron out the smaller details. However, even with magic, it would take a long time to dig such a big hole. As such, he started to work on the land around what he planned for the house. However, as it took him an incredible amount of concentration to make sure everything went perfectly, 
he merely used his nature magic to grow up the vegetation in the land surroundings, more specifically where he would make a road. After working with his nature magic a bit, he stopped and focused solely on digging the pit. Anyway, he had a lot of time and nothing to do. This way, a few hours went by and finally, he had taken Doug about how deep he wanted it to be. Moreover, at some point, he had stopped digging and instead had compressed the earth in the surrounding walls and the floor to make it harder. Finally, when Jax emptied the hole, he jumped into it and started the more detailed work, ensuring everything was straight, be it the walls or the ground, as he didn't want a slanted house. After confirming that everything was right, he ensured that all the corners were also 90 degrees to make a perfect rectangle. With this done, he made a wall made of wood with his nature magic separating the room into two. One of the rooms had 75% of the space while the other one had about 25%. The bigger room would be the storage room, while the smaller one would be a wine cellar. He didn't know why he needed a wine cellar, but the older guild members said he should build one and that he would appreciate their recommendation in the future. After finishing separating the room, he used his magic to extend the wall's wood to cover the ground, the walls and create a ceiling above. Creating everything took a long time as he had to develop a weird-looking tree with branches like planks, and he also had to make sure everything would hold correctly without any cracks in the wood. By the time it was noon, Jax had finished the second basement floor, and he had to move to the first basement. However, considering it was already noon, he decided to go to the guild hall to eat something before continuing. Using his nature magic to close the hole completely, he left and went back to the guild hall. As he arrived, he found the members fighting with each other like every other day. Smiling slightly at their antiques, Jack stopped at the counter, and after receiving his favorite food, he started eating. He had barely started that some other members came to Jack's. So, how did building your house go? Is it hard? Macau asked as he laughed. It's a bit hard in controlling everything, but I think it's going pretty well. Up to now, I have finished digging for the two basements, and I have also finished the second basement. After eating, I'm going to do the first basement to finish the base of the house. Tomorrow I'll move to the floor above ground. He answered as he drank his apple juice happily. What? You're already done with one floor completely? Shouted Wakaba, who came closer when he was answering Macau. Yeah, it was pretty hard compressing the earth to make it harder and to create a weird-looking tree which would serve as floor, walls and ceiling. However, I must say that it looked pretty good if I say so myself. Not to mention that I made it more durable so that I can send some weak fire magic or simply set a magically powered fire lacrima to eat up the floor to keep warm during the colder time. Jax replied cheerfully as he rapidly finished his meal, ready to go back to work. Do you mind if I come with you? I'd like to see how you build your house. Asked Macau as he was intrigued at how Jax was doing something which was known to be extremely hard with relative ease. Sure, why not, Jax answered while he got up and went to the door of the guild hall. Well, you know where's the land, so feel free to come and visit whenever you want. He said before flying away with his air magic. Back in front of his house, he moved out the wood that blocked the hole and jumped back inside. Confirming that everything was as he left it, he went to the south side of the hall and created a spiral staircase. The stairs were a slightly bigger tree branch in the middle and some smaller branches, which made stairs all around the main one. After finishing the staircase, he arrived on the first basement floor. This floor would be a bit harder to do since he planned to use it as a home gym and a magic testing field. The foundation that was big enough to have a professional soccer field, 110 meters long by 75 meters wide, was once again separated in two, with the home gym having the same space as the cellar on the second basement. As for the magic training field, he would need to strengthen the walls, ceiling and floor as much as possible against all sorts of attacks. As such, he started. Having already separated the two rooms, he began to strengthen the walls by injecting his magical power inside. He inserted his nature, fairy and sound magic inside the walls to not only reinforce the walls but also to give them a restorative property. It was something he had discovered when he had previously used both his nature and fairy magic together. As for the sound magic, it was to give the wood an isolation property to keep the noise from spreading to the others in the house when they trained. 
After spending every bit of his magical power on the walls, he restored it and did the same on the floor and the ceiling, which was also the floor of the first floor. Just to be sure, after he finished strengthening the floor as much as he could, he launched a fire attack directly at the wall and was pleasantly surprised when he saw that the wall had barely burned down and that it was restoring itself with the naked eye. Happy with the floor he had built, he turned towards the staircase and made it go up again. The magic had ultimately strengthened this staircase due to being linked to the two basement and the first floor. After all, he didn't want his house to burn into flames or to be drowned by the water or burned by electricity the moment he used his magic. As he left the basement, Jax looked up at the sky and noticed that it had already started to get dark. Macau and the others had passed by previously when he was strengthening the basement. However, now that he had reinforced the first basement, Jax felt unsettled about not strengthening the second basement as well. As such, while there was still some daylight, Jax turned back into the second basement and spent four hours entirely strengthening the deepest floor of the future house. With everything reinforced, Jax showed a smile as he looked at the progress of his house he had done in a single day. To avoid having his work demolished by some people with nothing to do, he covered everything with his nature magic. Jax then went to the guild, which was still open at this hour, to eat a bit before sleeping. He had worked a lot that day, and the next few days would be the same. As such, Jax went to his temporary apartment to sleep early and be ready for the next day. Chapter 24 The next morning, Jax got up even earlier than the previous day and went to the guild hall to eat breakfast. He didn't want to waste too much time, so he ate a single toast with a glass of apple juice before making his way to his land. Arriving on top of the two basement floors, Jax used his magic to push the vegetation that hid the basement before walking back into it. He wanted to confirm that the restorative properties of the basement had been kept throughout the night and didn't fade away with time. As he arrived at the deepest basement, Jax used his fire magic to attack the wall once again. Upon confirming that the fire didn't spread and that the wall started to restore itself, Jax made his way back towards the surface. At this time, he had to make the first floor of the house. On the first floor, he wanted an entryway next to the main entrance of the house. Afterwards, he wanted a library, a living room, a dining room, a kitchen, and a bathroom. On the back of the house, he wanted a sliding door made of glass that led to a patio where he would be able to install a pool, a garden, a sauna, and a few playing fields. However, at this time, he only focused on the interior of the house and would work on the exterior after finishing the place. Firstly, he raised the walls and made them look like tree trunks without the bark. Afterwards, he started creating the rooms. The first room when entering the house was the entry hall. The entry hall had a door on the left, right, and opposite right side of the entrance. Not only that, but the entry hall also had two staircases on the opposite left side of the gate, which would lead to the second floor. The entrance of the two staircases was close to the left door of the entry hall and the opposite right side door. The two staircases met at the very top to lead to the next floor. As for the spiral staircase that went downwards, it was in the middle of the two circling stairs. Jax immediately thought about having a painting or the fairy tale guild emblem as a picture right behind the spiral staircase, which was directly under where the two staircases met. On the right side of the hallway was the library, where he could make many shelves whenever he wished to store his books. He separated the space into two by having a semi wall. On the side closest to the entrance, there would be a fireplace, shelves for books as well as a few sofas to relax on when one read. On the other side of the room would be a desk made of wood, and behind it would be more shelves he would fill with books. Next to the desk would be a door which would lead to a garden he planned on making afterwards. On the left side of the hallway was the dining room. Jax didn't install anything in it as he planned on buying the furniture or making them afterwards if he didn't find anything to his taste. He only knew that there would be a long table in the middle of the dining room so that many people could eat at the same time. At the very left of the room was another door that led directly to the kitchen. Jax made the kitchen smaller than the other rooms since there wasn't a need to be excessively big. After creating a few small trees, he transformed them into a few storage cases to store his tableware. By making the storage cases himself, the boy could make them fit perfectly with the walls. After finishing the kitchen, 
he went back to the hallway and went directly in the last door. The last door, the one at the very opposite to the entrance, was the living room. Jax was planning on having a few sofas and games, which he probably would never play along with a few musical instruments. After all, thanks to his sound magic, he seemed to have the talent of playing musical instruments, and he learned that he loved to play them during some of his jobs during the six months. Finally, he made a bathroom in the corner of the living room. He would make sure to soundproof the walls just in case and add a few deodorant lacrimas. By the time he finished the first floor, it was already noon. So, Jax figured he would only have time to reinforce the walls for the day and maybe have some time to shop for a few windows since he didn't know how to make them himself. Perhaps he would be able to in the future with his magic, but at this time, he had no idea how. After eating at the guild hall like every other day, he went back to the house and reinforced the walls and ceiling. Jackson previously strengthened the floor when he was in the basement. This way, he spent the rest of his day on the reinforcement, soundproofing and restorative properties of the house that was starting to take shape. The next day, he started on the second floor. He had planned on having a home cinema on this floor. He would have to buy a movie lacrima to make it work. Next, there would be guest bedrooms and bathrooms in each room to give the guests privacy. Due to the home cinema taking a large place, Jax only made six guests' bedrooms on the floor, facing the garden behind the house and the ocean further away. He also decided to add small patios for all the rooms. The staircase was on the second floor's right, and the home cinema was on the entrance side. Since the home cinema took about three bedrooms worth of place, Jax used the rest of the area to create a small living room where he would leave some sofas and tables to relax. Thankfully, the second floor was easier to do compared to the first floor. By the time Jax finished reinforcing, soundproofing and giving restorative properties to the entire floor, it was about midday. That morning, he had taken lunch with him made by the workers of the guild. As such, he didn't bother going back to the guild to eat and immediately started the third floor. He was quite excited to finish it. On the third floor, he planned on having the master bedroom in the center of the floor on the side of the ocean, having six guest bedrooms just like the second floor, add bathrooms in every room and a large balcony to each room. He also made a slightly larger living room than the second floor. Finally, by the end of the day, Jax had reinforced the entire house with all he could, Jax had also completed all the small details. Details such as the cleaning lacrimas for the toilets, the water and fire lacrimas for the bath or shower, and adding a few wind and fire lacrimas at the second basement. The lacrimas in the basement would transmit heat throughout the house whenever he activated them if it was too cold outside. With the night falling, he went back to the guild to eat. He had worked the whole day and was beginning to feel tired. So. Jax. How's your house doing? Is it almost completed? Asked Macau as he wanted to make sure he didn't need any help. Well, the whole layout of the house has been made. At this point, I only need to buy some furniture, buy and install some windows. I still need to make the entry, the garden, various facilities in the garden and some kind of natural barrier around the house to prevent people from randomly entering or peeping. For the garden and entrance, I should manage to complete it tomorrow. As for buying and transporting the windows and furniture, I'll need your help the day after tomorrow if you guys don't mind. Jack spoke a little louder so that the rest of the guild could hear him as he asked for their help. Sure thing, man, we'll be there. A member shouted from the crowd. Just tell us what you need, and we'll bring it to you tomorrow. Just give us some funds to buy everything, my wife took my money, and now I'm poor. Said another member as everyone laughed at him. At this point, everyone knew that Jax was pretty rich as he had done jobs non-stop for six months. Haha <laughs> thanks, I'll leave a list of the materials needed, and if you guys can bring it to me tomorrow, then I'll speed up my work and complete the house tomorrow. Jax answered with enthusiasm as everyone laughed, and another party started in the guild as Jax started listing the necessary materials to buy. Chapter 25 The next morning, Jax got up even earlier and left the item list on the guild counter with a message to ask the guild's treasurer for the money necessary. He had already talked with the treasurer the previous night, and they had agreed to let the guild members take money from his account for buying the materials for his house. As Jax arrived at the house, 
which he had fully built, he took a small moment to appreciate what the boy could call a work of art before working on the house's surroundings. First, he linked the road with his entrance by compressing the earth. Afterwards, Jax used the stones he had dug up previously, cleaned them and cut them to transform them into paving stones to make a beautiful walkway. He didn't plan on having any cars since he could move faster with his magic. After completing the road linking to the house entrance, he used his nature magic to grow trees halfway up the newly built walkway. He continued making them grow and did the same to the land side and made some smaller trees at the back since he wanted to enjoy the ocean's view without having to worry about intruders. With this, the whole land was surrounded by trees except on the walkway where he would create a wooden gate and at the back where the trees were slightly smaller. After having grown the trees, he started to infuse his magic into them, making them stronger, have restorative properties and able to take on magical attacks. While he didn't want to transform his house into a fortress, he still wanted to make it safe as he remembered his second mission. The dark mages arrived from everywhere, and he didn't want to be taken by surprise in his new house. Jax then moved the branches of all the trees to mix and make a wall made of wood around the property. Jax then went back to the walkway and started to create a gate made of wood that would open to anyone knowing where to tap on the wood. It was necessary to mention that while the outside couldn't see inside the land, it was very easy for the people living inside to see outside. There was also a lot of sunlight, and it didn't make the whole house and land creepy at all. Instead, it gave the feeling of being one with the land and providing artistic scenery. After finishing the surroundings of the land, Jax continued to work on the outside of the house. By the walkway, inside of the gates, Jax grew flowers on both sides of the walkway and gave energy to the grass so it could be green with no yellow whatsoever. This small trick wasn't that hard as he could do so without his first pearl. After having finished the front of the yard, Jax went to the garden next to the library. He had left enough space to add a few pounds and a terrace. Digging a few ponds, Jax used his earth, water and nature magic to add some stones around the ponds, to fill them with water and to add some marine vegetation such as algae. Knowing that he would have to get some fishes for the ponds, he added a few flowers around and created a walkway before moving to the house's back. It was where it would become a longer job. On the back of the house, he built a walkway, just like the one on the front of the house, which linked with a large patio. The patio was then directly related to the living room through a sliding door, which he would soon install. At the balcony side, Jack started by digging the pool, he wanted it to be huge, and he compressed the dirt in the pool as hard as he could before making some stairs to walk down into the pool. He then separated the pool into two sides, one being deep while the other not. The deep side of the pool had a springboard and a slide to play in the water. Next to the pool was the walkway and he built a small room next to it where he would store some fire and wind lacrimas to create a sauna. With the pool, sauna and patio finished, Jax turned towards the rest of the free land. He started by removing the grass, and he flew down to the beach to collect sand in his shadow magic to bring back. Jax planned on making a few playgrounds such as volleyballs and tennis courts. Moreover, he wanted to create a big fireplace facing the ocean. It would be a great place to enjoy an evening with friends. By the time he finished the three remaining facilities, the guild members had arrived in front of the wooden gate. He could tell they were there as he had left some magic in the stone to feel it whenever someone walked close to the land. Opening the gate from a distance, he flew closer to the guild members who had come to help him transport things. He could have simply used his dark magic to store the furniture, but the longest was buying the furniture themselves. He had asked them to buy a particular style of furniture before leaving as not to have a mix of furniture which wouldn't look right. As he opened the gate and came closer to them, the members stared at the land with wide eyes. Did you do all the garden just this morning? Asked the guild members as they remembered Jack saying that he still had to do the garden. Yes, since you guys decided to help me, I woke up earlier to finish everything outside. It went rather well and was easier to do than expected. So, I'm ready to complete the house. He said while looking at the hundred pieces of furniture the mages brought with them with their various types of magic. All right then. Let's finish this house. The members shouted as they started to enter the gate and went towards the door entrance. All right, I'll need the windows first. 
I'll install them from outside since it'll be easier than to transport them inside. Jax said while a member with a large window approached him. Jax then used his wind magic to transport the windows where they were supposed to be before using his nature magic to make a hole in the wall and hold the window once it was at the right place. It took less than a minute to install a window, making the guild members understand how he made his house. Once they understood that the house was a single tree, everything made sense for them as Jax would only have to control the tree itself to build the house. However, no matter how they thought of it, they wouldn't be able to do it themselves. Half an hour later, as Jax had placed all the windows, they moved towards the back of the house as Jax put the various equipment in the right places. Things such as a volleyball net or a volleyball ball were placed directly in the volleyball field, and Jax magically enhanced the cushions which would be placed around the fire pit to make them fire and waterproof. This way, he wouldn't have to worry about moving the cushion when it rained. Once everything on the outside of the house had been placed, they all moved inside the house. By this time, a few of the guild members didn't have anything to hold as there had been a lot of materials left outside. As they entered the hallway, Jax took a carpet and used his magic to extend it at the right place in the hallway. He also placed the fairy tale logo painting where he had planned on putting it. They then moved to the second basement where Jax built some shelves in the cellar, and some members left the wines they had bought with the remaining of the money Jax had left them. The members said that he should let them there and not bother about them for the next few years. Jax, still clueless about the goal of leaving wine in the cellar, went back to the first basement. In the basement, he left magic training equipment in the magic testing field and magically enhanced physical training equipment in the home gym right next to the magic testing field. He then used four of the five lacrimavision he had the members buy and set them directly in the four corners of the floor. He then took the last one and went straight to the mansion roof and put the last one on top, making a false sky, in the basement and showing the sky outside. Once Jax did this, the basement had a lot of magical training equipment that could be used anytime. On the first floor, he went to the dining room and set out a table and chairs and various storage furniture. He set up a magical clock on the left side of the room, and a pot with flowers was placed in the middle of the table. Next was the kitchen, where a few appliances were added, and the necessary items were stored to make food. There was even some food that had been bought to keep in the refrigerator. The kitchen was pretty bare at the moment since Jax didn't plan on eating at the house unless there were some friends with him, so until then, he planned on eating at the guild hall. As for the library, there were some chairs and desk along with a few books which started to fill the shelves. Jax once again added a few pots of flowers he would keep alive with his nature magic. He then added the sliding door, which opened up the garden from the library. After placing the appliances on the first floor, they moved to the second floor, and Jax once again set some carpet in the stairs. Afterwards, for each room, he added a bed frame, a mattress, a desk, a chair, and a wardrobe. As for having additional items, it would depend on the person since he didn't know who would stay there or even if someone was going to stay there. Jax skipped the home cinema and immediately placed the items for the guests' rooms and master bedroom on the third floor. Since he already knew where to put them, it took less than ten minutes, thanks to magic. Once this was done, Jax returned to the second floor and placed the movie Lacrima and the white screen ready to start a movie. He then added a few cushions on the chairs he made with softwood. Finally, they placed the sofas, and a small table on the two smaller living room and the basics of the house was done. With this, a party started in the backyard, and Jax only woke up the next morning. Chapter 26 For the next few days, Jax shopped in Magnolia. He hoped to make his vast house a little more homely. At this point, Jax had stopped renting the apartment and had started to live in his home. While there were enough rooms for many people, he didn't mind living alone for the moment. However, the longer he stayed alone in the house, the more he understood his unconscious need to live with someone. Living alone in his home made him remember his captivity when he was younger. While he had thought he had managed to get over those memories of suffering and torture, Jax now understood that he was simply repressing them, and he never overcame them. Due to this, he had tried to fill his house with things he liked. In the end, after shopping excessively for a few days, he had bought dozen of books, new attires, weapons, armors and even a few silver celestial gate keys. 
He enjoyed storing new things in his house, mostly filling the void in the place by storing books in the library, storing weapons and armors in the magical testing field in the first basement and the celestial gate keys he had in double in his bedroom. As for the keys he didn't have in double. He kept them with him at all times. It was a way to cope with the feeling of being alone. He believed this was why he loved to keep those keys with him at all times, as they represented a celestial spirit. After a few days, he had managed to change the house from being almost empty to being homely and clean. In those days, he often played some piano as he had learned of his talent and had decided to spend some time practicing. Surprisingly, he had seen that his sound groove had slightly increased when he played the piano. He had no idea why that was, but he guessed that by developing the magic, he could also increase the groove's filling. And indeed, a few days later, he had seen his sound magic increase by a few percent by only playing the piano. With this new way of increasing his magical powers, he raised the time he played the instrument. After all, it was not only helping him grow stronger but also helping him in accepting his past. In this way, a month passed. In this month, Jax took four requests, which were to his name. Two were to take down a group of dark mages attacking towns while the two others were monster subjugation requests. The rest of the time, he spent it at the guild talking with the other members or spending it at home to play some music or read. In other words, he relaxed. Finally, after a month of doing nothing but a few jobs, Laxus and Gildarts came back to the guild at about the same time and stayed for a few days. Laxus simply because he finished his holiday and was about to start working again, while Gildart simply stayed a few days before taking another job as he did every time. Laxus did not waste too much time, and after two days, he left again working. Jax was ready doing to do the same, so he planned on going the next day. However, the morning Jax was about ready to start doing jobs actively again, Gildart stopped him. With a questioning look, Jax asked the older man, What's up, Gildarts? To which the crush magician simply answered by, I've got an S rank job here to escort a star in two days. She has to meet with her fans, and it is believed that some dark mages may want her life. This time, the threats are excessive, and there is a price of 10 million on her head. Another guild is taking care of another request, which is to find the one who set a bounty of her head and cancel the bounty. The S rank job I have is to assure her safety while she is traveling for a week. However, it's conspicuous to have someone as big as me staying with her, and I wouldn't be able to assure her safety up close. I want you to do the job with me. Your identity will be of a lucky kid who got to spend a week with your idol while you're protecting her, and I'll be close by to take care of the enemies once they reveal themselves. So what do you say? Interested in doing your first S-class job? He finished while giving him a grin. Oh right, the pay is of five million, we'll do half-half. So what do you say? When are we leaving? Jax asked while giving his grin. It would be his first S-class job, and there were no better partners than Gildarts if it was about S-class jobs. Half an hour. Pack your things, and we'll leave. Answered back the mage as he went to the bar to register the job. Jax didn't need to prepare anything. He always kept his necessary items such as a sword and armor, some of the explosive lacrimas he had collected in his second job and the various items he could need during the job. There were even some preserved food in there if he ever needed it. Half an hour later, Jax and Gildarts had left the guild hall and were on their way to the capital of Fiori, Crocus. They would meet their client in the royal palace. According to Gildarts, the client had a good relationship with the royal family and stayed there until the mages escorting her arrived. They arrived at Crocus a little bit after midday and went directly to the royal castle, Mercurius, to meet their client. By giving the job request to the guard and Gildarts proving that they were from Fairy Tale by showing his tattoo, they were instantly welcomed into the castle. Walking in the castle along with Gildarts, Jax looked around carefully. It was the first time he had ever entered a castle, and everything he saw made him wonder whether he would prefer living in a castle or his large house. His answer. He liked his home better. The castle wasn't homely enough and was way too big. As they walked into the castle, they followed a guard who led them to the meeting room. It didn't take long as five minutes later they entered the room. 
a table was in the middle of the room with dozens of chairs on each side. A blue carpet was spread on the floor, and decorative paintings were on the wall. Fruits were laid on a few plates across the table, and three people were sitting at the table. The first one was sitting at the head of the table. He was relatively small, wore striped overalls and was wearing a red cape. On his white hair, he wore a golden and red crown. His black eyes were staring directly at the silver-haired boy and the orange-haired man. As the small man who would later be known to Jax as the king of Fiori, Toma E. Fiori, stared at them, the two girls by the side also stared at them. The first one seemed to be about seven years old, just like Jax. She had green eyes and hair and had a small necklace on her neck. Not only that, but she also wore two green earrings. As for her, she was simply staring at the boy not older than her as he looked over her with his pale blue eyes and the scar on his left eye seemed to give him an attractive power. Finally, another woman who seemed to be in her late twenties had blue hair and eyes. Her fair skin brought out her eyes as she wore a blue dress with purplish ends. She wore a blue necklace on her neck, which went directly into her cleavage, slightly revealed by her dress. Finally, under the chain, on her neck, she wore a purple choker, which went very well with her dress. She was currently looking at the two men, or more like the men and the boy who came to escort and protect her safety for the next week. While the boy seemed taller than the others of her age, it was still only slightly taller than a seven-year-old boy. He barely reached the elbow of the older man. As Jax was looking over them, he merely chose to follow whatever Gildarts did since he planned to learn how to act during S-class jobs. He knew that either important people often gave S-class jobs or whenever something dangerous happened. In this case, the client seemed to be someone significant since they met in the royal palace, and he had no idea how to act. Hi, we are the mages of Fairy Tale who took the job to escort Miss Riki Robin for a week, Gildart said as he sat down on an empty chair. Jax followed suit as he kept a straight face. I guess that if you took the job, you are an S-class mage. Asked the small man at the head of the table. Indeed, I am an S-class mage, and he's an A-class mage. Normally I would take such a job alone but considering that Miss Riki is going to meet her fans and that she takes some children from time to time on her tours, I figured I would bring Jax here to travel with her. Gildart said with a grin as he tapped on Jax's back. So, he's a fan of Sister Riki? Asked the little girl at the side of the table, trying to get into the conversation. No, I don't believe he even knows her. However, it is a good reason to have him stick to her side for the next week to protect her. Gildarts answered while chuckling at her question. But I understand that he is an A-class mage, but can he protect me from other mages? After all, he is still young. Asked the lady as she didn't want to put her safety of someone unreliable. You don't worry about this. Jax can stop and take down any A-rank mages, and he can block for a small amount of time the S-class dark mages that may go after you. Under normal circumstances, his job is simply to protect you while I do the fighting. If you're hurt, he can heal you. He can help you escape as fast as possible if necessary. He can detect poisons and can fight without a problem. Not to mention that this isn't his first escort mission. He knows what to do and has the skill to support him. Gildart said while Jax gave a simple, reassuring smile to the older lady. Can we see his magic in action? Asked the younger girl as she looked at Jax. At her question, the man and the older lady had their eyes brighten up as they also wanted to test his magic, but they knew that they couldn't ask for something like this since it is private. However, since it was a child who asked, there wouldn't be any problems even if he refused. Sure, what magic do you want me to use? Asked Jax as he answered the green-eyed girl. Can you make me fly in the sky? Asked the girl with her eyes wide open, hoping that he could do so. Sure. Jax chuckled as he lifted his finger and made her fly in the room before any of the three adults could say anything. However, when they wanted to tell him to put her back on the ground because she wore a dress, they discovered that her dress seemed to be stuck to her legs, stopping her from flashing everyone in the room. After a few more demonstrations of his magic, mostly defensive magic such as earth and water magic to create shields, they cast aside their uneasy feelings and accepted to give them the job. As for the young lady, 
Jax learned was named Hijui E. Fiori, she was happy and accepted him from the moment he made her to fly in the sky. Chapter 27 For the next two days, Gildarts and Jax stayed in the castle. There wasn't much to do as Gildarts kept company to the king in the evening, and they both drank a lot. Jax had no idea how Gildarts had managed to have the king as a drinking buddy, but he was awed by his methods. As for Jax, he was permitted to walk and explore the castle as he pleased. From what he learned later, the king was a pretty laid-back man and only looked intimidating the first time they met to see their real characters. It seemed that he didn't disappoint him as he allowed him to visit the castle as he pleased. On the morning of the first day, Jax was awakened by the one he now knew to be the little princess. Jax, wake up. Let's go and play. Since you stay in the castle for the next two days, father allowed me to skip my lessons to have fun with you. She shouted as she shook Jax out of bed. It could be said that she had a good impression of Jax since he allowed her to fly in the air, something she couldn't do before. All right, all right. Give me a moment. I'll go and wash, and we can play after. Said Jax as he smiled wryly. He didn't know what it was like to have a little sister or a family for that matter, but now he didn't doubt that this should be it. Washing up rapidly due to the princess repeatedly hitting the door, he got out and dressed up before leaving the bathroom. All right, now we can play, right? Asked Hijui the moment he got out of the bathroom. Yeah, what do you want to play? Asked Jax as he had a slight feeling of what she would ask him to do. I want to fly again. I also didn't wear a dress today, so you won't have to hold my dress for me. She shouted as she jumped on the bed and made a flying motion with her two hands on the top of her head. So you were aware that I had to hold your dress then? Sighing gently, Jax lifted a hand and created some wind in the room to make her fly in the air. He made her fly close to the ceiling causing her to laugh or made her speed up, making her open her eyes wide or made her fly closer to the floor than she was willing to, causing her to close her eyes only to open them again when she didn't feel any pain. In this way, Jack spent about half an hour making her fly in the air in the room and some parts of the castle as they went to eat breakfast. Only when Jack sat down at the table did he let her down in her chair. She slightly pouted when she saw that it was time to eat but didn't continue any longer after remembering that she had the whole day to play. After having breakfast, Jax went to the training ground of the palace. He wanted to keep his habit. He needed to do at least half an hour of combat training. This also served as his morning exercise. Afterwards, he did at least an hour of magical training to practice his magic and avoid rusting. After all, he had ten different magics, and he needed to develop all ten of them. He needed to use them each day to get used to them and to use them as correctly as possible in combat. During his physical training, he did swordsmanship since he had the Knights of the Royal Palace to practice with him and afterwards, he used some time to use all of his magic and think about their best use. After the training, the princess brought him to the castle's pool to play in the water. He used his water magic to amuse Hijui as he swam leisurely in the pool with his shirt on to hide his scars. He enjoyed the time before the start of what would most likely be a dangerous mission. In a certain way, he understood why the older mages drank so much. Since they did jobs with their lives on the line, they wanted to enjoy life as much as they could since they could die at any time. Two days later, Jax, along with Gildarts and Riki Robin, left the royal castle. Miss Robin had a meeting with other members of her team. It was necessary to mention that she was a singer, and this time she would meet her fans and sing a song in front of an audience. As such, the job wasn't easy to do, and Jax would have to be careful so that she didn't get hurt or even killed. An hour later, they arrived at her studio. Currently, there were a few groups of people in front of the studio hoping to receive her autographs and take pictures with her. Jax and Gildarts looked at the fans with an alert eye as they didn't want to fail the mission right at the beginning. In the end, nothing happened as she signed a few autographs and entered the building with Gildarts and Jax following behind her. The fans were slightly disappointed seeing her leave, but none of them did anything more than sight before they dispersed. As such, Jax and Gildarts merely continued with their protection duty. As they entered the room after Riki, they heard her talk to her business partners. Those two are mages from Fairy Tale. 
they will be assuring my safety during the next week. She said when the two mages entered the room. Gildarts wore his never-changing black cloak while Jax was wearing a skin-tight black shirt and black plants and kept his hands in his pocket. Nice to meet the two of you. The manager said while nodding towards both Gildarts and Jax. They knew that she had been staying at the royal palace. As such, they knew that the two mages had passed some unknown tests to be sure that they were qualified enough for the task ahead of them. Jax and Gildarts nodded back while they both found chairs to sit on. Their job was simply to protect the lady, and nothing else mattered. This way, the first and second day went by pretty quietly as Jax accompanied her, acting like a random child who had been lucky enough to be chosen by the lady. On the contrary, Gildarts was walking in the crowd following not far from them. At midday during the third day, right when they were leaving a dense crowd and were about to enter a restaurant to eat, Jax, who had improved his hearing to the maximum, heard the sound of three dark mages about to attack them. We'll attack them right when they leave the crowd. It should be their most vulnerable moment since they'll feel safe about leaving the crowd. Said the first dark mage who was following them. All right, there should be an S-rank mage not far from here, protecting her from the shadow. So, we use our strongest magic, and we make a break for it. Said another wizard in the group of three. Understood. Said the third mage. Jax, hearing this, immediately sent a message to Gildarts with his sound power. He had discovered through research of his sound power that he could not only enhance his hearing but also control the sound of his voice to reach only certain people. Gildarts. There are three mages about to attack us. They are about a hundred meters behind us and should be currently approaching us. They are pushing people out of the way to reach us as fast as possible. Understood, I'll take care of them, don't blow up your cover. We don't know if there are any other dark mages around. Jax received a reply from Gildarts, and he could hear him moving from his position towards the three dark mages. Seeing that the action had started, Jax took Riki's hand. This was a signal whenever a dark mage arrived. This would alert the lady to be alert, but it would also allow the silver-haired boy to protect her as fast as possible was the need arise. Hearing Gildarts arrive close to the three dark wizards, Jax tightened his muscles, ready to take action at any given moment. However, right after he got ready to fight, he remembered that Gildarts was amongst the best mages on the continent. There was no way any mages would be able to get past him. And indeed, he was right. The three mages were beaten up a few moments later, and Jax released his hold on her hand when the danger had left. Since the threat had passed, they continued on their way as Jax increased his hearing with his sound power to hear any other mages talking between each other. And indeed, he was right as he found two different groups of dark mages after the bounty on the blue-haired lady's head. Noting their location, Jax transferred them to Gildarts, who immediately sprang to action. Unfortunately, by the time Gildarts took care of the first group, the two others spotted him and immediately retreated, stopping Gildarts from attacking them since his job was to protect Miss Robin. Chapter 28 The day finished with Gildarts finishing another group of dark mages who came to try their luck. At night in the hotel, Jax and Gildarts had a room on each side of Rikis to protect her if necessary. Jax had applied his sound magic to the corridor and to the room of the older women to be notified if an enemy appeared. During the first half of the night, there were two groups of dark mages who attacked, but they were only two groups of A-rank mages and had no S-rank mages with them. As such, Jax knocked them out and tied them together in the corridor. Anyway, by the time any mages discovered them, they would be found by Jax, who would beat them as well. During the second half, three groups of dark mages attacked, and Jax took care of them once again. From what he could tell, S-rank mages hadn't taken the job yet, or they knew to be intelligent and not attack when Gildarts was in the next room. After all, at this point, Gildarts's name had resounded throughout the entire continent, and everyone knew of the man. Especially the strongest in the dark guilds. The next morning when both Gildarts and Riki came out of their room, they were surprised to find five different groups of dark mages, a total of eighteen of them. Did you do this, kid? Asked Gildarts as he looked at the mages. If not me, then who? You. The hotel wouldn't be standing anymore. Jax replied with a laugh of which Gildarts also laughed. 
Well, I'll call the mages of the Magic Council. They'll bring them back. They'll collect everything of value on them and their bounties and give it to you when we finish the job. Gildart smirked as he took out a communication lacrima to the Magic Council. What? Will they do that? I thought we had to bring them ourselves. Jax exclaimed at the words of the older mage. Well, yeah, for you. S rank mages have special privileges such as this. He said as he started the communication with the council. I bet you can't wait to become an S rank wizard. Gildarts finished by laughing while the transmission began. We got 18 A rank dark mages on the seventh floor of the Mangoes Hotel. Send some guys to collect them for me. Said Gildarts, upon which he received a nod and the link was cut. Well, we'll have to wait for around a dozen minutes until the council's men arrive. He said, upon which he went back into his room. Contrary to his predictions, the council members had collected all the dark mages after eight minutes of waiting. Once everything was done, they went back to their job. The fourth, fifth and sixth day all went great. They met a few groups of dark mages every day, of which Gildarts took care. As for Jax, he still acted as a lucky kid who could spend time with Miss Robin. However, everything changed on the seventh day. That was the last day of the escort mission and the day of Riki's show in front of a crowd. Before the show's start, Jax searched the whole place with his nature magic and could confirm that everything was fine. However, according to Gildarts, everything got harder on the last day of the mission, and he was right. That fireball thing hurt. Let's come back a few hours earlier. Everything was doing great. The show had been prepared, no enemies were in sight, and no traps were left in the stadium where the singing show would happen. As such, Miss Robin got ready. She put on some makeup, put on a beautiful white dress, which made her hair and eyes stand out. She practiced for a few hours before the show, with Jax keeping her company. On the other hand, Gildarts kept an eye on the stadium, searching for Dark Mage's clues. Finally, it was time to start the show. Jax stayed up right out of the view of the spectators of the show while Gildart stayed on the right side of the stadium. They were both on their guards as they tried to find any Dark Mages infiltrating the stadium. Then the show began. The first half an hour of the show went well. The first hour of the show went well. The second hour of the show went well, and the third hour as well. The danger finally appeared at the end of the last song. A collaboration of three dark guilds. 21 A rank dark mages. 3 S rank dark mages. When Jax finally noticed the 24 dark mages act, he was surprised as he hadn't heard any of them talk about their mission. It was as if they had prepared everything beforehand. By the time the last song finished, the dark mages immediately attacked the stage. Jax didn't wait a second. He used a speed boost on himself with his fairy magic to reach Riki while activating the nature magic he had spread in front of the stage before the show began to grow some trees to block the attacks. He then used earth magic to raise a wall of earth and summoned a water wall in front of him. However, with the attack of the 24 dark mages, he knew that he wouldn't last long. He immediately started to attack back while Gildarts made his way to the stage as fast as possible. He knew that 24 mages were too much for Jax. Especially 3 S rank mages. Thankfully with the 3 defenses, he managed to stop the first wave of attack and immediately used lightning magic to attack the weaker mages in the group, killing 2 of them instantly. At this point, there was no holding back their punches, and everyone was going for the kill. If one weren't alert enough, then they would die the next second. Jax didn't hold back as he used everything he could against the dark mages. His fire magic, lightning magic, sound magic and he even used the new spell he had developed with his light magic. The boy threw fireballs, lightning bolts, shockwaves and beams of lights directly to the opponents while putting back the defenses. However, by the time he managed to put back the defenses barely, a fireball managed to pass through the wall of trees trying to recover, the barrier of dirt that was already half demolished and the water wall that was nothing more than steam at this point. The two waves of attack spread within a time frame of fewer than three seconds. With the lady he had to protect behind him, there was no way to dodge the attack. 
He reached in his shadow and equipped a magical sword to cut the fireball in half, increasing his defense with water magic and tanking the fireball. The first thing that went through his mind when the fireball hit him was, that fireball thing hurt. Thankfully, a wizard's body has some sort of resistance against their element, and since he uses fire magic, he wasn't killed on the spot. Instead, his t-shirt turned into ashes as deep burns appeared on his already scarred skin. Behind him, Riki had her eyes wide open as Jax directly took the hit of the fireball. She knew it was because of her that he had to take the hit. However, any thoughts of guilt disappeared from her mind as she saw the massive logo of Fairy Tail on his whole back. However, this wasn't what caught her attention as she saw the dozens of scars on his back. Jax, not caring a bit about what she thought, managed to reinstall the three layers of defenses as he started to attack back at the fifteen mages remaining. Gildarts was almost there. Sending another wave of attacks, he concentrated the beam of light in his hand and shot it into the group of mages right before Gildarts appeared. With this new wave of attack, the enemies were reduced to seven, including the three S-class mages. Sending the lady backstage, Jax joined Gildarts in the trashing of the enemies left. With his sword in his hand, he coated his left fist with fire and lightning magic, effectively cutting on the right while burning and electrocuting on the left side. By this time, Jax was already strong amongst A-rank mages but not strong enough to fight S-class mages. As such, he retreated towards Miss Robin while strengthening the defenses, healing himself with his fairy magic and boosting Gildart's speed and defense from the back. He didn't increase his strength since he could already most likely kill them in one hit as long as he touched them. When he healed some of the burns and the cuts on his body, Jack started attacking from the back to support Gildart's as much as he could. He noticed how one of the dark mages used a sword. As such, Jax used all the remaining lightning power in his body and strengthened it in a few arcs between his hands before aiming directly at the mage who held a metal sword. While the lightning also seemed interested in the three other mages, Jax managed to control it long enough to hit the right one, frying him directly while he wasn't paying attention. Gildarts didn't even have to finish him as he died instantly. At this point, Gildarts didn't have any problem with the two mages left, so he stopped supporting and only kept his fairy magic active. He had been lucky to be able to one-shot the S-rank mage. Had it not been from the sword in his hand, the metal on his body, the mage being distracted by Gildarts and having already spent magical power on the initial attack, Jax would have never managed to hit and kill him. However, this was also one of Jax's advantage. He had ten different magic with ten different magical reserves. While every mage only had a single one for all of their magic, Jax was head, shoulder and torso above the others in terms of magic capacity. He could simply use his magic non-stop, and he would eventually surpass the opponent only due to higher capacity. Finally, after another minute, Gildarts had crushed the two remaining S-rank mages with his crush magic. He turned towards Jax and saw him standing in front of the women they had to protect. He nodded his head as he saw that the boy didn't slack on his vigilance at the end of the fight, that he had tanked the hit, protecting their mission target and that he didn't flinch after receiving the magical attack, staying sharp and fighting back. If he had to give him a rating, which he had to give to the master, he would give him a perfect rating on his fighting mentality. Pretty good on his strength as he had managed to kill a distracted S-rank mage and a perfect rating on his sense of belonging to the guild. For that last part, it wasn't hard to confirm as one simply had to look at his back. Chapter 29 Once the fight was finished, they escorted the beautiful blue-haired lady back to the royal palace. The mission was done, and she had finished her show. She wouldn't need an escort once they reached the royal palace. So, how'd you feel taking that fireball straight in the face? Gildarts asked once they left the stadium and were in a carriage while laughing. Hum, it hurts like hell, but I've been through worse. Jax laughed back. He was relaxed now that the job was finished. After all, the dark mages had most likely all attacked during the show. Those scars, huh? I've heard from the master. Gildarts nodded as he understood why he didn't seem to be very bothered by the burns once he received that fireball and jumped right in the fight. Huh, it's thanks to Fairy Tail that I managed to leave that place, so I'm good now. Jax laughed, trying to lighten the atmosphere which had unknowingly turned dark once Gildarts mentioned his scars. Huh, 
Well said. Gildart smiled and tapped on Jax's back. Hey, careful, I'm still healing myself here. Shouted Jax as the two others in the carriage laughed at his expression. So, do you mind telling me how you got these scars? Asked Riki as she saw that the subject had been breached without any problems. Moreover, she had been very curious about the scars since she saw them. One usually wouldn't have such scars unless one had a complicated past. It was when she thought up to this that she regretted asking about the scars, especially since it should be personal. However, Jax wasn't one to care about such things at all. He understood the reason for his scars and wasn't ashamed of them as they represented not only his years of suffering but also the other kids who had been locked up in there with him. Hum, I was kidnapped when I was still a baby. I should have been at most a few months old at that time. They used other kids and me to test a dark ritual. I'm the only one who survived, and those scars are the trace of that ritual or maybe they are the scars from the torture that went with it. I really can't tell. Jax answered nonchalantly. He didn't have problems telling his story. Of course, he wouldn't reveal it to any random people passing in his life but only people who either asked or those close to him. After he answered, the atmosphere turned silent again as Jax turned the topic to something else. So Gildarts. Once we're done with the job, what do we do? Well, we're going to stick to the royal palace a bit, the king promised to drink with me, and the princess seems to like to play with you, so take a few days off to relax. I'll also have the magic council send us our rewards for the mages we took down and the mages you captured, and we'll collect our reward from this nice lady right in front of you. He said with a smile as he seemed more interested in the drinking bout he would have with the king than anything else. An hour later, they were back in the royal palace. Jax had managed to heal his burns thanks to his fairy magic, and he decided to focus on increasing this magic in the future since it would be quite useful. Looking at the entrance of the palace, the king and the little princess were waiting for them. When they got off the carriage and walked towards the entrance of the castle, the king, Toma E. Fiori, went to Gildarts and the young lady while the princess threw herself directly at Jax, hugging him and shouting, I want to fly. I already wore the right clothes. Upon which Jax took her off of him while he used his air magic to make her fly in the sky. The king and the two adults talked to each other while Hijui had her fun, and they all walked in the hall after a small conversation with the princess flying above them, laughing. The princess never had people truly playing with her before. All those who played with her were the son or daughter of other nobles or essential ministers. The boys were told to respect her or to try to court her despite her young age. On the contrary, the daughters had been told to respect her and accept everything she said. Jax was different. For him, she was simply another seven-year-old kid he agreed to play with. He wasn't forced or told to do something and was simply himself when he communicated with her. The king seemed to notice this fact and offered Gildarts and Jax to stay in the royal castle for another week, upon which Gildarts readily agreed since all the booze was given and he had a drinking buddy. As for Jax, he didn't mind. He had nothing else to do back at the guild. If he were to go back, he would probably just take another job. So, he agreed to the invitation. Not only was it rare to be able to stay in a royal palace, but he also thought of using this time to complete the groove of a few magics and use another pearl to improve his magic. His air magic was at 98%, not far from a breakthrough. His water and sound magic were even closer as they had been at 99% for quite a while already. As for nature, it was only at 97%, but he could still try to improve it as well within the week. The groove of those four magics had been relatively high already, and after the last job, they had improved quite a bit. Moreover, he believed that as long as he engraved another pearl in the groove, his magic would take a leap towards the peak of A rank, and by filling the groove, he would be able to get into the weakest of the S rank class. As such, with a week of holiday, Jax trained with weapons and magic in the morning. Hijui simply watched him train in the morning, and he taught her a bit of swordsmanship when she asked. After the training, they played together, had diner, continued playing together until supper. Jax then played some piano with the princess as audience after supper since it helped him understand his sound power and improve it. Finally, for two hours before going to bed, Jax and the green-eyed girl read together at the royal library. 
In the end, they did everything together from morning to night except sleeping together, much to the disappointment of the princess when she wanted to spend more time with Jax. For her, having Jax staying in the castle was like having a friend over, and she wanted to spend as much time together as possible. Three days into their stay in the castle, the king stopped bringing his daughter back to her room every night since he noticed she sneaked out and went back to see Jax afterwards. Besides, considering that they were simply seven years old, he wasn't worried about anything and let her do whatever she wanted. On the third day, Jax managed to improve his sound magic completely, and he immediately inserted a pearl into the groove. He was surprised to find that his voice sounded better afterwards, and even when he was playing the piano, the sound came out better. On the fourth day, Jax managed to increase his air magic to 99% and his nature magic to 98%. As for his water magic, it was still stuck at 99%. At this point, he simply focused on those three magic, stopping practicing the others, even his newly improved sound magic. The only time he trained his sound magic was when he played the piano in the evening. At this point, not only was the princess listening to him but even the king, Gildarts, some servants of the royal castle and the royal guards who were guarding the interior. Jax later learned that the guards were fighting with the opportunity to guard the interior of the castle simply to listen to his magic. It soon became a big thing in the castle as even the pianist invited in previous banquets weren't as good as Jax. At this point, Jax understood that his talent in music came from his sound magic. However, he also knew that his voice slightly changed with the improvement of his sound magic. He wondered if he was also a good singer, but he felt shy of singing in front of a group of people. As such, on the fifth day, Jax managed to break through his water magic, and he inserted a new pearl. Afterwards, instead of playing with Hijui, they sneaked into the living room with the piano. Yes, they crept in since if the servants or guards saw them entering, they would alert the others, and he would have to play for a group again. This time, he wanted to have Hijui rate his music if he sang along with his music. He was too shy to do it in front of a group of people. Jax didn't feel any shyness in front of Hijui. It wasn't like Laxus. He knew he could leave his back to Laxus, but he also knew that if he messed up and his singing was terrible, Laxus would laugh his ass off and spread it in the guild. On the contrary, Hijui would encourage him. Furthermore, he and Hijui had seen each other in underwear when they wanted to go to the pool but had forgotten their swimsuit. As such, there wasn't much shyness left between the two of them. They simply accepted the other unconditionally. Their friendship had grown quickly since they met each other, and they learned to like spending time together. On the fifth day, a bit before diner time, they sneaked in a room, and Jack started playing the piano, and once he felt ready, he started to sing along with the music. The performance continued for almost ten minutes before he finally stopped playing the piano and singing. As he turned around, he saw Hijui in a daze. As he looked at her, he smiled and asked, So, how was it? It was great. You sing very well, and when you play the piano with it, it's even better. Shouted the little princess as she jumped high and hugged Jax as she was still thrilled by the song. Right as he was about to answer her, another voice interrupted her. Indeed, it was very good. You are already at my level in signing, and since you play the piano with it, it's even better than me. Unknowingly, Riki had entered the room during the performance, and Jax hadn't noticed due to being so fixated on his song. Cold sweat went down his back as he knew that if she were an enemy, then he would already be dead. However, he soon relaxed and promised himself never to relax his guard that much. Thank you, Hijui, Miss Robin. I wasn't very sure whether it would be good, I'm happy it is. Jack said with a smile on his face. Chapter 30 So, are you going to sing tonight during your evening performance? Riki asked with a slight smile on his face. No, currently, I don't plan to. While I do love playing music, I don't think I like having many people listening to me sing. Just having Hijui and you listening to me was enough. Jack said with a smile as he walked down the stage where the piano was located. Well, we won't bother you anymore. We were planning on going to the pool before lunch, and we only made a brief stop to see whether I could sing well, Jack said while smiling. 
He took Hijui's hand before leaving behind a young woman laughing when she saw the two youngsters hold hands so quickly and familiarly. She then went towards the stage as she also started to practice her singing. After hearing Jack sing, she felt like she had some inspiration, and she planned on improving herself with it. As Jax and Hijui walked hand in hand towards the pool, Jax couldn't help smiling at the memory of Hijui being in a daze after hearing him play a song. He turned towards the princess with a smile and walked calmly while holding her hand. When Jax had held her hand, he just wanted to bring her out of the room. However, since then, she grabbed his hand, and he eventually just accepted being pulled by her. As they arrived at the ever-so-silent pool, Jax and Hijui changed into their swimsuits and went to play in the pool. Since Jax hadn't brought a swimsuit with him, as he hadn't planned on using it on his job, he simply bought one. They played together until it was time for lunch, where they dried off thanks to his fire and wind magic, which made a dry wind dry their clothes. They then played together in the afternoon, and in the evening, Jax played the piano once again without singing before going to sleep. The next morning, Jax managed to increase his air magic and once again made a breakthrough. And finally, on the seventh morning, he made yet another breakthrough in his nature magic, allowing him to install the second pearl in his fourth magic. At midday on the seventh day, it had been a week they stayed in the castle, and it was about time they went back to the guild. Not only did they have to report, but Gildarts wanted to start another job soon. He was a complete workaholic. As Gildart said his goodbyes to the king and Miss Robin, Jax said his goodbye to Hijui, who had a few tears coming out of her eyes. Come back visit soon, alright? Take this. With this, you can come to the castle whenever you want, and the guards will let you enter. However, be sure not to lose it, alright? Asked Hijui as she gave him a piece of wood with the crest of the royal family. There was a magic inside of it that made it impossible to copy. All right, I'll be sure to come and visit sometime in the future. Answered Jax as he hugged her. After a few more words, Jax and Hijui went to the king, where Jax thanked him for his hospitality. As he shook his hand, he felt the king give him a piece of paper discreetly. Without changing his expression, Jax took the piece of paper and fluently put his hand in his pocket afterwards, hiding the piece of paper from the view of everyone. As they said their goodbyes, Jax and Gildarts went towards the gate. Jax took the opportunity to take the piece of paper and take a look at the content of it. The 25th of June is the birthday of Hijui. I give you an invitation in advance. Be sure to be there, and you are welcome to the castle any time you want. Giving a quick look at the invitation, Jax smiled and took back the paper piece before turning around and waving goodbye at Hijui while providing a discreet nod to the king, who smiled in return. So, what was that last piece of paper the king gave you? Asked Gildarts as they both left the castle. Of course you saw it. How could I believe you would miss that? Jax laughed before showing him the piece of paper. Oh. The king invites you to the birthday party of the little princess. It seems he likes you quite a bit. I bet that in the future, whenever there is a job from the royal family, they will ask you directly. Gildarts laughed while the two of them made their way back to Fairy Tail through the train. A few hours later, Jax and Gildarts had both gotten down the train in Magnolia, and as they both made their way towards Fairy Tail, Gildarts crushed a few houses and shops with his magic unintentionally. It made one confused at how he could be so strong but have so little control over his magic. As they arrived in front of the guild a dozen minutes later and after exploding over three houses and two shops, Jack stepped once again into the guild he hadn't seen for over two weeks. He then went with Gildarts to the master to confirm the success of the job. So, everything went well? Asked the master as he eyed the two members who came back from an S-rank job. Yeah, no problem except for the last fight where Jax took a whole fireball right in the face. Gildarts finished the sentence, almost shouting as everyone started laughing at Jax's expanse. Oh. And why didn't you dodge it, Jax? I'm sure you knew and now know if you didn't know that a fireball in the face hurts. Said the master while chuckling slightly. I wouldn't have had to take that fireball in the face if Mr. Here wasn't too focused on the ass of the ladies in the stadium to notice the 21A rank mages and 3S rank mages attacking me while I had to protect the target of our mission alone. 
Jack's answer back towards Gildarts who stopped laughing as if he had eaten a fly. After all, it was true that he had been looking at the ladies' asses, but it hadn't slowed him down. However, Gildarts wasn't ready to admit defeat as he turned to Jax and shouted, Do you want me to say how you spent your week in the royal palace? While Jax had played with the princess, it was typical for his age. However, due to the way he acted in the guild hall, it was utterly beside his character. Oh. And do you want me to tell what you did with the king? Jax asked back while smiling evilly. After all, the two of them had spied on the woman's bath in the city after having drunk too much. Once again, Gildarts erased his smile from his face as he didn't mind being seen as a drunkard since he loved to drink. However, at that time, he had drunk too much and didn't want to be seen as a pervert. Fine, fine. You win. Jax had to take the fireball in the face, or the target of our protection would have died. He alone took care and put down all 21 a rank dark mages and an s rank mage while protecting a normal civilian. His seemingly infinite magical power due to his 10 different kinds of magic, all having their magical reservoir, is a cheat. He only needs to throw spells after spells at his target while they can't even defend due to the limit of their magical power. Gildarts finished with a sigh. Not only was the master, but even the other mages in the guild seemed pleasantly surprised at Jax's record, who took down not only a large number of A-rank mage but also an S-rank mage. All right, all right. Everyone go back to whatever you were doing. Jax, go and relax a bit. It's been a while since you've been gone. We also received a large payment in the guild for you. Now that I guess, it must have been the payment for the mages you captured and took down. The master said while turning his attention to Gildarts. All right, master. Answered Jax as he moved to the counter of the bar to eat. However, just as he was about to start eating, he saw a young girl with brown hair and eyes at a guild table. Jax then took his plate and glass before going to the table of the new girl he had never seen in the guild. He sat in front of the quiet girl wearing a short orange dress and looked at her before asking, Are you here alone? Upon noticing a nod from the quiet girl, Jax continued, Have you eaten yet? No. I don't have any money, and they will give some food at the church later. She said in a small voice, which Jax could only hear thanks to his sound magic. Jax lifted a hand towards the bar as the worker came with a menu he took and gave to the young girl in front of him. The brown-haired girl seemed a little anxious as she received the menu from Jax. Is there something wrong? Asked Jax as he eyed the girl. I don't have any money. She said a little louder so that Jax could hear her without the need of his sound magic. Oh, that's all right. I'll pay for you. He said upon which he received a questioning glance from the girl. Isn't it better to eat with someone else than alone? If you're not going to choose, I'll choose for you. As he said the last sentence, the last trace of hesitation from the girl disappeared as she chose what she wanted to eat, and the worker smiled gently before leaving towards the kitchen. Jax, who had simply taken a sandwich and an apple juice from the kitchen, waited for the new girl's food to be served before starting to eat. There was a reason why he came closer to the girl. He saw from her the feeling of being lost and not knowing what to do. While it wasn't very present in the girl, Jax could still feel a bit compassionate since he used to be this way after being released from that torture room. Besides, if he were right, she would be a new guild member. Currently of his age, there was only Laxus. With her, at least, he would have a friend of his age when Laxus was on the job, which was almost always these days. So, what's your name? I'm Jax. Asked Jax as he still didn't know her name. Oh, nice to meet you, Jax. I'm Kana Alberona, but you can just call me Kana. She answered while smiling slightly at the boy of her age. It's a nice name. Jax tried encouraging her a bit more by complimenting her, and it seemed to work as she opened up a bit more during the conversation. As they continued to chat, the food of Kana finally arrived, and they both started to eat together. From what Jax could tell, she had been hungry for a while, and she most likely didn't eat until she was full at the orphanage. So, I didn't ask, but can you do magic? Asked Jax while they were eating. Yes, I can do card magic. She answered immediately while having a bit of food in her mouth. 
you can swallow before answering, you know, Jack said while chuckling. Hum, Kana answered with a slight blush on her face. As Jack saw her eat everything in less than two minutes, he asked, are you still hungry? Upon which she immediately shook her head only to have her stomach rumble, betraying her. Ha, huh, just take anything you want. It's not much anyway. Jack said while laughing and ordering some more food for himself. Chapter 31 After finishing their lunch, Jax and Kana stayed seated at the table as they talked together. So, can you show me your card magic? There are no mages in the guild who uses such magic. Asked Jax as he was always ready to learn more about magic, which he loved the most. I can't. Lost my cards. Said Kana as she blushed. Ha ha ha. Jax laughed hearing this and got up, prompting Kana to do the same. Well, let's go shopping. I need to find a gift anyway, so we'll buy you new cards. Jack said as he went towards the door of the guild. He turned around, only to see Kana still next to the table. Well, do you have something else to do today? He asked as he realized that she might be busy. Hum. No, I have nothing else to do. She answered while looking at Jax. Then let's go. Answered Jax as he went through the doors and left the guild. However, as she was still stunned, not knowing what to do, the master who had just finished his conversation with Gildarts talked to her. Just go with him, Kana. If he decides to bring you shopping with him, it's because he wants to. Moreover, from what I heard from Gildarts, he might need your help. As such, don't be polite with him and go enjoy your time. He finished as he laughed loudly with the other guild members. The members were all fond of Jax and already knew him for a few years. Unfortunately, through the years, he didn't open more than necessary except to a few people such as those who taught him, Laxus, Gildarts. The master and the two Wakaba and Macau who saved him as such, seeing Jax taking the initiative of inviting someone to go with him made them all happy. Hearing the laughter of everyone in the room, Kana gave a quick glacé to Gildarts before rushing out of the guild to catch up with Jax, who had left first. On the silver-haired boy's side, he had enhanced his hearing with his sound magic and had heard what had happened in the guild. As Kana caught up with him, she started the conversation. You inviting me shopping, do you need help with something? She asked towards Jax. Yeah. You see, I just finished my job and was invited to the birthday party of the Princess of Fiori. Her birthday is about a month later, but I need to find a gift to bring her. Moreover, considering that she's a princess, there will be many people at her birthday party. I need to find something unique to give her. Jax explained as they walked towards the center of Magnolia. You know the princess. And what kind of gift did you think of getting her? What does she like? Asked Kana as she merely stayed shocked for a minute upon hearing that Jax personally knew the princess. Before turning more serious as she asked the more critical questions. After all, Jax brought her to shop, and she wanted to be as helpful as possible. Well, I had thought of getting her a magical gift. Maybe something like a flying carpet or something. When I stayed at the palace, she always asked me to make her fly in the air, so I figured she might like that. As for what she likes except flying in the air, she seemed to like hearing me play piano and swim. Apart from that, she likes to sneak in the castle and play whenever she has the chance. Answered Jax as he thought slightly before continuing. She also likes desserts, especially chocolate and fruits. She hates nuts and coffee, which she tried a few days ago. Jax finished as he didn't know what else to say. As Kana listened to him speak, she soon understood that he had no idea and was terrible at choosing gifts. A flying carpet? Really? She couldn't help saying once he stopped talking. Let's go shopping. I'm sure we'll find something more suitable. She said as she shook her head. At the same time, all of the reluctance and shyness she had disappeared. Instead, she had only one thing in mind, which was, I have to help him find a good gift. As such, they started to shop all around Magnolia. Jax had made his account clean in the guild as he had rounded up his account at 26 million jewels, and he had taken all the change with him, which amounted to close to 600,000 jewels. With this amount of money, Jax stopped at various shops. 
He stopped at a clothing store since some of his clothes had been ruined during the job, and he wanted to find another skin-tight black t-shirt. He liked how he felt free with his movement when he wore this kind of t-shirt. He also bought a few dresses for Kana at the same time. Afterwards, they purchased some ice cream. Strawberry flavored for Jax and chocolate flavored for Kana. Once they finished eating their snack, they went into another shop where Jax bought a few items he would place in his house. He felt that no matter how much he said in the house, it was always empty. At this time, he started to slightly regret making the house so big as he didn't know what weird idea came to his mind as he built it. Since he built it, no one had ever visited except Laxus once when he offered him a place in his house. A few days before leaving with Gildarts. Hey, Laxus. I bought land and built my house myself. Wanna come visit? Jack said with a grin as he spotted Laxus entering the guild. Sure. Give me a moment, I'll hand over the job to Gramps, and I'll come and visit. Laxus said with enthusiasm as he gave the completed job to the master before joining back with Jax. They both left the guild, and they walked towards the mountain, which was part of Jax's property, as Jax started to explain all the defensive measures around the house to Laxus. As they reached in front of the gate, Laxus seemed surprised by the entrance made of Jax's nature magic. As they explored the property, Laxus seemed excited at the various facilities in the house. However, in the end, he still had a home as he lived with the master, and so Jack simply gave him a room he could use whenever he wanted. The first try to live with someone else failed miserably. However, for the rest of the day, they played on the volleyball court and tennis outside, which was quite fun. A few days later, Jack's left with Gildarts for a job, and the house stayed empty. Back to the present day. As Jack's bought a few items for the house, he stored them in his shadow to bring back later. As they walked into the shop, Jax noticed that Kana seemed to unconsciously look towards a small pendant with a small brown gem made of glass in the form of a bird. Giving it a look, Jax decided to buy it for her a little bit later as they continued shopping. A few moments later, Jax left Kana for a moment as he went back to buy the pendant for Kana. It didn't take more than two minutes before he came back and bought a few items. Once they had shopped for a few hours, Jax decided that it was time to get the gift for the princess. As they entered the magic shop, Jax and Kana started to look around the shop. Jax had two goals in coming to the magic shop. The first was the princess's gift, while the second was to buy new cards for Kana's card magic. As they explored the shop, Jax and Kana looked at a lot of magical items. Some were everyday items such as the colors or the light pen Jax had purchased a few months. Others were consumable items such as magically charged lacrimas, and others were more specialized such as the magical cards that Kana needed, magical staffs or magical guns. In the end, Jax searched for a long time before he found a bracelet with eight beds all around it. The beads were small, and overall, the bracelet was pretty. However, the best part of this bracelet was that the bracelet could hold magical energy inside of it. As for the beads, they could have a spell each, which would be released whenever the wearer called the spell name. As Jax looked at the price of 20,000 jewels, he was surprised by the price and looked at the shop owner, who explained the low price. You see, a friend made this bracelet. While the function and the beads are great, there is a fatal flaw, and it simply cannot be improved. My friend left me the bracelets, hoping someone would be able to use them, but so far, no one has been able to use them. The shop owner said while shaking his head. At this time, both Jax and Kana were interested in the so-called flaw of the bracelet. Chapter 32 So, what are the flaws? Jax asked, a little excited. If he could circumvent the flaws, this would be the perfect birthday gift to Hijui. The flaw is that there is a need for at least 8 beads on each bracelet for the magical energy inside the bracelet not to leak out or to fail to work. Moreover, each bead must use different magical energy. For example, if a bead uses ice magic, then the other 7 beads can't use ice energy, or it will simply break. Said the shop owner. After seeing the questioning look of Jax, he continued. While this doesn't seem like a flaw, it is just one of them. 
The second one is installing magical energy inside the bracelet there is a need for the magical energy to come from a mage only using such magic. In other words, to install energy inside the bracelet, the mage must only be using one energy type. If he is an ice wizard, then he can't have used other magic such as water magic in his life. If it were only this problem, it would still be fine since there are still wizards only using one type of magic in their entire lives. The true problem is the third condition which makes it impossible for anyone to use them. The shop owner said while shaking his head. The last problem is that it must be the same mage who install the eight types of magic. If there is a difference in the magic signature, the bracelet will fail or explode. Coupled with the previous condition, a mage isn't able to insert magic in the bracelet. The only way would be for a mage to have at least eight magic cores in their bodies which is simply impossible. Said the owner with a sad smile since he knew that his friend had spent years of his life on a failed product. Jax, hearing the last condition, had an awkward look on his face. While it was indeed a condition that could stop every other mage in the world, he may be the exception due to the ritual giving him the giant statue, which accepted ten magics in his body and the ten smaller figures, which all worked as a magical container. The flaws in the so-called bracelet only made it so that Jax was the only mage alive being able to use it. As he finished speaking, the shop owner left Jax and Kana as they both stared at the bracelet. Kana because she thought it would be a powerful magical tool if not for the conditions, while Jax simply thought he should confirm that he could use it. Figuring there was nothing to lose, Jax took a bracelet from the shelf and started to insert eight magics into the bracelet at the same time. His air magic was giving the ability to fly. His water magic was giving the power of a water shield. His fire magic was giving the ability to create a fireball. His sound magic was giving the ability of shockwave his fairy ability was offering a basic healing ability. His nature magic was giving the power of binding. His light ability gave the ability of light orb, while his dark magic gave the ability of shadow shift. While providing the eight beads ability, he inserted the magical power of the eight elements simultaneously. It was difficult. Not only did he have to insert eight types of different magic at the same time, but he also had to insert the same amount. The previously eight transparent beads on the bracelet soon turned in different colors depending on the magic sealed into them. The colors white, blue, red, purple, pink, green, yellow and black, appeared on the beads and became more apparent as Jax inserted more magical power into them. For the next five minutes, Jax inserted his magic power without hurrying as he knew it would fail if he were to work too fast. Jax found out that the process was extremely tiring and challenging as he put every ounce of his concentration on the bracelet. If he were distracted, he knew he would fail, and the bracelet and beads would break. After finishing, 75% of his magical power of those eight magic was utterly gone, and he would have to wait to recharge it. Just looking at the conversion ratio, he knew that it was terrible. Usually, with his fire magic, he would be able to send around 20 intense fireballs non-stop before running out of magic. However, after inserting 15 fireballs worth of magical power into the bracelet, the bracelet only had enough energy to send 5 strong fireballs. However, even if the ratio was terrible, it was still pretty good for the first try. Not to mention that this was just 5 fireballs, but Jax had inserted 7 other magics inside of the bracelet. It was worth considering that each magic was the spell of a strong A rank or an average A rank magician, depending on the magic used. For an average person, one such attack could be life-saving and was priceless. While the civilians could task wizards to protect them, there was a time limit. On the contrary, by having the bracelet, they had a magical spell ready at any time. The only drawback was that once the bracelet owner used the magic, the wizard who created the bracelet, in other words, him, would have to replenish the magic as the bracelet couldn't collect ether nano from the atmosphere. For a birthday gift, this was perfect. There were seven bracelets in the shop, and he would try to store more power to release more spells. Taking the seven bracelets, deciding to buy them, he turned to Kana, who looked at him wide-eyed. She had just heard from the shop owner that a mage couldn't have more than one pure magic in their body, and thus was the bracelet a failure. Right afterwards, she saw Jax do the impossible. Grinning at Kana, 
Jax turned around towards the location of the magical cards. Should we look for your magic cards now? I'm still hoping to see card magic today. Looking at the cards on the shelves, Kana moved towards the cheapest ones. The cards were yellowed on the side, and the magical fluctuation was relatively weak. Seeing her move towards those cards, Jack sighed before taking the magical card pack with the most potent magical fluctuation and took Kana's hand while she was still choosing amongst the weaker cards. Bringing Kana to the counter, Jax set the pack of magical cards upon which Kana tried to get them back to pick another deck of cards. Jax, I don't need such good cards. The other ones are fine too. She said, with her eyes looking down. But, it was evident that she quite liked the pack of cards which had an orange tint on the edge of the cards compared to the cards which were yellow on the sides due to being too old. It's fine, it's fine. You helped me and accompanied me while shopping this afternoon, and these cards can be my thanks to you. Thanks, Kana said while holding Jax's hand a little tighter as a small smile spread on her face. It was the first time someone had been nice to her since her mother died and she came to Magnolia. Jax saw her smile and smiled as well as he also held her hand tighter. Jax then used his other hand to leave the seven bracelets on the counter as the shop owner came closer. The pack of cards is worth 50,000 jewels, and the seven bracelets are worth 20,000 jewels each. Are you sure you want to buy the bracelets? As I said, it's impose. You managed to insert magical power into it. The shop owner shouted at the end as he saw the bracelet he had filled with magical power. Yes. I am a bit different from normal mages, so that I can use them. Do you think you could contact your friend who made these bracelets? I would be interested in buying more of those. They would prove extremely useful for jobs. Said Jax as he hoped he could buy more bracelets. Yes, of course. He lives in this town. How much are you interested in buying for the moment? Asked the merchant as he seemed excited for his friend who had been doing odd jobs for the last few years due to his once thought failed project. Currently, I was thinking about a hundred more. Do you think it would be possible to have ten beads instead of eight on each bracelet and have the bracelet's color vary? I'm fine with an increase in price for the two extra beads on each bracelet, and for the bracelet, I would like to have them of each color. Another thing, for the bracelet, it would be best if you could make a few extremely luxurious ones and use a stronger material. Of course, I'll also pay extra for the changes. Said Jax as he was ready to practice his magic on those bracelets. He found while completing the previous bracelet that using the eight magic in conjunction with each other promoted the control of his magic. Jax felt that not only could this increase his grooves, but this could also increase his magic control. He believed that with enough control, he would reduce the loss of magical powers whenever he completed a spell. It was necessary to know that while a spell needed, for example, 500 units of magical power, the mage would release more to be sure not to miss the attack, sometimes wasting 200 or more magical power units. Of course, units of magical powers didn't exist, but this was the way he had learned to control his magic. Moreover, it would not only help him with his magic, but it would also be useful for the guild to have such items to save their lives. Chapter 33 Once Jax finished speaking, the shop owner opened his mouth wide as he stared at Jax. Are you sure you want to buy 100 bracelets? You know that it will cost you 2 million jewels, right? Of course, if you buy this many bracelets, I'm sure my friend won't increase the price for the two extra beads and the strengthened bracelet. As for the few luxurious bracelets, I'm sure he'll be happy to make a few for free. Yeah, I'm sure. When do you think they would be ready? Asked Jax as he paid the 190,000 jewels bill for the bracelet and cards he had bought. They'll be ready in a week. The owner said once he thought about it. All right. Can you send them to the Fairy Tale Guild? I'll be there. Jax asked back. He didn't want to run between the guild and the magic shop if they weren't ready. Are you a mage or a fairy tale? Can you show me your mark? If you can show the mark, there won't be a need to leave a deposit as we will know where to find you. Asked the man as his friend would have to use a lot of his money to make the bracelets, and if the young man in front of him left, his friend would be stuck with useless bracelets. Jax lifted the back of his shirt showing the fairy tale symbol on his back. 
before replacing the shirt in the right position and leaving the shop. I'll be waiting for the hundred bracelets at the guild. Remember, I need ten beads on each bracelet. All right, I'll be there within the next seven days with the bracelets. The shop owner said while waving his hand at Jack's. He couldn't help but be respectful of the young man. After all, he had just put an order worth two million jewels. After seeing him leave, the man immediately closed his shop and ran to his friend's home. He needed to tell his friend to start working directly, and he would help him if necessary. This order would help his friend pay the money he owed and still have a nice sum of money left to live well for a while. Moreover, if they managed to complete the order in time, maybe the young man would order more to allow his friend to live well for the rest of his life. As the two left the shop, Jax took the magical cards out of the bag and gave them to Kana as they both went back to the guild together. Kana seeing the cards, had a beautiful smile on her face as she opened the pack of cards and looked at them carefully. Jack seeing her like this, had a smile on his face as he took her by the hand to guide her through the crowded street. She was so focused on her new cards that she didn't even look at her surroundings. They walked for about ten minutes as Jax helped her evade the pedestrians on the road. As for Kana, she was still studying her new cards. By seeing her like this, Jax at least knew that she loved them as they arrived at the doors of the guild hall. However, as Jax opened the guild doors, he saw that everyone was moving at high speed. The previous calm and sometimes rowdy guild turned serious at that moment as almost half of the guild members were preparing their weapons and taking rations prepared by the workers of the guild. Jax, seeing this, hurried towards the master who was frowning. Master. What is happening? Jax, you're back. There's information that sea monsters are attacking from the fishy sea, cloud sea and whirlpool sea. Not only that, but the monsters on Phoenix Mountain and Mont Hakabi are more active than usual, leaving the mountain and attacking the villages. They are walking towards the center of the kingdom, more specially Crocus. The Magic Council has requested the Redford Guild, the Doomhawks Guild and the Scary Titan Guild to stop the fishy sea monsters. The Wind Guards, Steelbow and Waterclouds Guilds are taking care of the Cloud Sea. Fairy Tail has been asked to guard the Calm Sea if something happened and support the Whirlpool Sea with the Grim Crusaders and the Sacred Brigade Guild. Two of our S-Class mages are going to support while Guildarts has already left for Phoenix Mountain. Your job is to go to Mont Hakabi, kill the monsters, find the cause of the monster's behavior and destroy it. It's a top A-rank job that can increase to S-rank at any moment, so be careful. The last appearance of the monsters is at Shiritsum. Now go. The master shouted. Yes, master. Answered Jax as he turned towards Kana, who was next to him. It seems I'll be gone for a few days. On those days, come to the guild to eat, and I'll tell the workers at the bar so you can buy things on my account. Here, take this. Said Jax as he handed over a wooden token. You can take this to stay at my house. Take a room on the third floor. If you want to train, go to the first basement. You'll see it's pretty nice. Jack said while giving her a wink and going to the bar to tell the workers to let Kana take money from his account to eat. At the same time as Kana was looking at the token in her hands, she heard the small man who had just given a job to Jack say, you know, you should take on his offer. From what I heard previously, you live at the orphanage. You'll see that Jax's house is better than it and he built it big enough for a lot of people. I'm pretty sure he built it in hopes of living with other people. As he finished the sentence, Jax came back and talked to the master. Master, if I'm not back within the week, there is a guy who will come here to sell me this. He said as he threw a bracelet towards the master. The bracelet will have ten beads on it. There should be a hundred of them, and they are worth twenty thousand jewels each. If they come to bring them and I'm not here, buy them with my account for me. As long as they don't go over 25,000 jewels each, it's good. He finished as he said goodbye to his new friend before leaving the guild with his air magic to fly towards Mont Hakabi. Currently, most of his magical power was low. However, he had enough air magic to reach Mont Hakabi, and within the time it would take, the magical power of the rest of his magics would recover a large part that would allow him to fight. As he flew in the air, he noticed how the citizens were calm. 
Seeing this, Jax thought it was very peaceful to be too weak to know anything, but it was also perilous as their safety wasn't in their own hands. Two hours later, Jax arrived at Montakabi. His air magic had mostly been used. However, the rest of his magic had increased back at about 70% of their full capacity. It was enough to fight the monsters. He then used the remaining of his magical power to go towards Shiritsum. There should have been a few mages and soldiers protecting the village and would have more information about what had happened. However, the closer he came to Shiritsum, the more he felt like something was wrong. There were hordes of monsters walking towards the small village. From afar, he could see spells being sent into the monster horde. Jax had never even imagined that there were so many monsters in Mont Hikabi. As he came closer, he saw a line of defense in front of the village. Wizards were building various defensive facilities such as walls, holes, or even just adding pikes on the ground to stop the monsters. As for the knights, they were fighting in the middle of the traps, trying to push them in, or they were simply resting behind the temporary wall. From his position, he could see that some mage groups were making their way to Shiritsum as fast as possible. According to their strength, Jax figured that they were part of a random weak guild. The jobs had been sent by the Magic Council to every guild in Fiori since the invasion was there. Moreover, for the more prominent guilds, they had received jobs for protecting a specific place. It was different from the smaller guild, which the Magic Council just asked to go on any of the closer battlefields to support in numbers. As Jax came closer to the battlefield, he dropped a few fireballs, lightning strikes and a new spell he had learned, which he called, Fearful Scream. This unique spell made the targets in the vicinity paralyze for a brief moment. The stronger the enemy, the lower the effect of the scream would be. Finally, he finished by lowering his height as he lined up in front of the paralyzed monsters and condensed a light beam made of his light magic to kill the monsters. Effectively cleaning a small part of the battlefield, Jax flew to the walls. Where is the commander? He asked as he shouted to the soldiers. I am shouted the commander who was on the walls. He had seen the young man's magic attack in front of him and dared not underestimate him due to his age. I was requested to enter Mont Hakabi to find the cause of disturbance and destroy it. Do you have any information on what happened up there or any ideas? Asked Jax directly as the longer he delayed, the more people would die. We have little information of what happened up there. However, a soldier managed to come back with the information. From what he said, there was a new monster up there. After comparing with pictures, he said that there was a blizzard vern in the mountains. There were a few wyverns following it, and it seemed to be protecting something. It should have forced the Vulcans down the mountains or allied with them I have no idea. However, there's something else. If we go by the Vulcans' attack, there should be a Vulcan who evolved into a Vulcan king directing them. For now, we can hold back the attacks of the Vulcans but as long as there is a king, it will eventually destroy us. Answered the commander while shaking his head. Chapter 34 Alright. My job in coming over was to find the disturbance and destroy it. I'll take care of the Vulcan king. Said Jax as he turned towards the battlefield. Do you have any idea where he is? If not, I'll search for it. Questioned Jax as he saw the enormous battlefield in front of him. We have no idea whether there is one and if there is where it is. Currently, we are just trying to build a defensive perimeter to protect the village behind and stop the Vulcans from going to the center of the kingdom. The commander replied even more respectfully since he knew that to receive such a job, the young man in front of him had to be amongst the strongest of A-rank mages. Moreover, considering his age, as long as he continued to grow this way, he would quickly become an S-rank mage. I see. Answered Jax as he focused on the earth wall behind him and started to reinforce it and made more spikes appear on the wall. At the same time, he used his nature magic to grow some vines to trip the monsters into the traps prepared by the other mages. After spending close to 30% of his magic power, the wall was way more durable thanks to the earth he had compressed. Moreover, with the vines which would trip some monsters, the front line would have it a bit easier for some time. Seeing that it worked, Jax jumped down from the 10 meter high wall and fell directly in his shadow to shift towards other shadows on the battlefield. 
Jax had modified this new spell had been from another magic that allowed the mage to move in his shadow. With the change, Jax could go from one shadow to another as long as it was in sight. It allowed him to move a few times faster. Going at his fastest speed in Vulcan's army, Jax tried to find the king's trace. From the information he had gotten from a book, whenever a Vulcan king appeared, the monsters would become restless and eventually attack the villages and cities, causing great destruction. One of the goals of leaving their favorite environment was finding some women, and the second to find some food. It was said that the king was an even bigger pervert than the normal Vulcans. Moreover, whenever they left the mountains, the normal Vulcans would be crazy about attacking in the hope of bringing back a female to their king to gain their favor. As such, the king would always be on the last line of monsters, surrounded by elite Vulcans who had semi-evolved when the king evolved. The elite Vulcans would be loyal to the king, and they had the strength of average to top A rank, while the Vulcan king had the power of a weak S rank mage. Thankfully, while Jax wasn't an S rank mage, he had enough magical power to take care of some of the lowest S ranks. It was possible only due to his multiple smaller statues, which acted as magical reservoirs. As Jax remembered the information on the king of the Vulcans, he made his way towards the back of the horde but even after two hours he still hadn't found anything. Frowning, he stopped on the army's side and took a break due to having used up his dark magical power. During his resting time, Jax focused on his light magic. If he could create some sort of tangible illusion made of light, the Vulcans would bring him directly to their king. As such, Jax started to work on his light magic. He had never been so focused on creating a new spell with his magic. Of course, he hadn't been stupid and had used his earth magic to place some detection traps to detect any enemies if they approached. Five hours later, Jax finally made an illusion that looked like something. Using the image of a random girl he had seen in the village, he managed to shape the figure of a human somehow, and he worked on the details. Anyway, it didn't matter if it was ugly. As long as it was solid, looked like a woman and human, the Vulcans wouldn't bother. After all, for them, a human woman was a human woman. Whether the girl was ugly or not didn't matter. Lifting his traps, Jax jumped into the shadow and made an illusion made of solid light appear. He made the brightness disappear and hid in the shadow while he made the illusion walk towards the Vulcans. As soon as she came close enough, Jax changed his voice using his sound magic and shouted with what he hoped to be a convincing female voice. Once he saw that the Vulcans had seen the illusion, Jax made the illusion fall on the ground to make her seem unconscious. Those monsters weren't the most intelligent as they merely came closer to the women, took her in their hands and ran towards the back of the army while letting out a happy shout. It attracted what Jax thought to be envious eyes, but he wasn't sure. Anyway, he followed the Vulcan and no more than half an hour later, Jax saw the Vulcan arrive at the foot of the mountain and into a clearing. Jax, seeing the elite's appearance in the King Vulcan, narrowed his eyes as he finally found his targets. The king was seated on what he could make to be a makeshift throne. The clearing was devoid of vegetation as ice spread from the surroundings of the king. As the Vulcan entered the clearing with an unconscious illusion, Jax proceeded to set a trap to give himself an advantage. He started by creating a big hole under the ground. Since he couldn't take the dirt out, he had to condense it. He worked for around a dozen minutes as the elite Vulcans made some weird dance around the unconscious illusion. It seemed to be some sort of ceremony for the king. Anyway, this gave him more time as he finished creating the hole. At the bottom of the trap, he made spikes appear while on the walls, he made his nature magic work by preparing roots ready to impale or bind them. Finally, when the king was starting to get impatient, Jax made walls spread all around the hole as he directly shattered the ground, which was only holding thanks to his magical power. As it broke, all ten elite guards, the random Vulcan and the king fell in the hole. As soon as they fell inside, Jax covered the top of the hole with his nature magic. Afterwards, he reduced the light with his darkness magic, used his fearful scream, shot multiple lightning bolts and air slashes to kill them. Once he completed the attack, Jax reopened the top of the hole to see that every Vulcans were dead except the king, who was impaled in the leg by one of the spikes. Controlling the roots on the walls, Jax directly attacked the king to pierce him. However, every time the roots came closer, they would freeze over and break. As such, 
Jax didn't bother and simply used the earth to fall over him to bury him. Once buried, Jax controlled the earth to condense around the Vulcan King to suffocate him. He currently only had the strength of an S-rank mage due to his high amount of magical power. However, considering that the Vulcan had strong defenses, to begin with, his only trick would be to weaken him slowly. So, in this situation, suffocating the king was the best way. As he decided to wait for a dozen minutes, Jax thought about whether he could receive the Kingslayer title. However, the more he thought about it, the more he thought it was cool but unnecessary, and it could be offensive to the kings, so he forgot about it. Ten minutes later, Jax slowly unraveled the body of the Vulcan king. Upon seeing that it was still twitching due to not having had to air in the last ten minutes, Jax simply attacked him. He had no way to defend himself as Jax used the roots to try again to pierce him, and this time, it was a success. After a final roar of the king and a look at the dissipating illusion, the king closed his eyes and finally died. Collecting in his shadow storage the bodies of the Vulcan king and the elite Vulcans as they could be used for research and thus sold, Jax left the scene of the crime. Now that the king was dead, the normal Vulcans would eventually hear about the news and turn around to go back to Mont Hakob. As for Jax, he had only finished half of the task. He still had a blizzard vern and wyverns to kill. Looking at the mountain next to him, Jax focused and used his air magic to shoot up the mountain. He had no intention of wasting time and wanted to finish the monsters as soon as possible. Unfortunately, he would have to search hard to find the site of the enemy. After all, the mountains were big, and there were many peaks and caverns in the mountain where the monster could be hidden. Chapter 35 Entering Mont Hakob, Jack started to search from mountain to mountain. Every mountain was the same high, cold, ice everywhere, caverns everywhere and snow everywhere. Thankfully, with his fire magic, there wasn't any problem with the cold or the snow. He had only a single job, and that was to find the monsters, which was one of the reasons for the beginning of the invasion. Flying down from the third mountain he had explored without success, Jack saw that the night was getting darker and darker. As such, he found a small cavern halfway up the hill, which could only be accessed by flying, set down some traps. Reinforced the cavern and used his nature magic to close down the hole without cutting off air to keep ventilation in the cave Jax then got some camping gear from his shadow storage and set up everything. Finally, he started a small fire in the middle of the cavern to keep warm during the night and lay down in his cave. I wonder how the other guys are. The invasion of sea monsters sounded serious. I hope those guys survive. Jack said, talking to himself to relieve the loneliness. I wonder whether Gildart's already finished his job in the Phoenix Mountains. Probably. It's Gildart's, after all. Well, even if he doesn't find the cause, can't he just crush the entire mountain to find out? Wondered Jax as he imagined the scene of Gildart's taking down one mountain after another. I shouldn't care about that. I still don't know if I'll be able to beat the Blizzard Vern and come out of here alive. Well, everything should go well one way or another. Jax said to himself before falling asleep. The next morning as Jax opened the door made of vines and roots, the cold wind entered the cavern, effectively awakening him. Taking a deep breath, Jax looked at the mountains and faintly saw in the distance a few sparse Vulcans. They should be coming back to the mountains now that their king is dead. There will most likely be a few of them who will try to stay down to bring back a woman or two, but they will surely get killed by the mages, warriors, and soldiers located in the village. As he glanced at the mountains all around him, Jax once again started to fly with his air magic to search more mountains. Let's try to search eight mountains today. At this rate, it'll take at most a week before I find that damned monster. Searching the mountains one after another, Jax killed all the Vulcans he met on the way since every time he met one they tried to kill him. Jax searched for mountains in the morning and continued on the same way in the evening without finding any blizzard vern traces. They shouldn't be too far. The soldier said that it was protecting something and he had been walking in the mountains. As such, the monster should be in the first few mountains. However, even after searching for them, I can't find them. Well, whatever. I'll continue looking tomorrow. Said Jax as he found that talking to himself did ease the loneliness one could feel in the middle of the mountains. 
Finding a cave to sleep in that night, Jax quickly fell asleep. This activity continued for a few more days. The fifth morning he had been in the mountains, Jax finally heard a bird cry in the distance. Strengthening his hearing with both his sound magic and his fairy magic which increased his senses, he finally found a trace of a few flying monsters. Leaving the cave, Jax rushed towards the mountain peak where he had heard the sound. As he watched from a distance, the sliver-haired boy smiled in relief as he finally saw five wyverns along with a blizzard vern. This specific monster was a branch evolution of the wyverns. It possessed the flight ability of the wyverns and liked the cold. They could use wind magic, and their skin was as hard as metal. Their only weaknesses were right under their wings, directly at their articulation, as the scales were slightly weaker to allow the monster to fly normally. However, even if their weakness was under their wings, it wasn't easy to hit as their wings were as sharp as swords and could cleave a man in half without even trying. As Jax was standing far away, he felt a soft pull from his magic, and as he stared closely at what the monster was guarding, he saw another pearl. A white pearl. In other words, a pearl of wind. Frowning as he knew that other people or creatures shouldn't understand what the pearl was, Jax focused more on the circle the gray flying monster seemed to protect. As he concentrated, he used his earth magic to feel the earth, and he was surprised to see that it was full of keys. Full of celestial spirit keys. Frowning at this weird scene, Jax took a look around the mountain top and felt abnormal magical fluctuations. Turning back to the top, he noticed that a silver celestial spirit key had just broken, sending a pulse of magical energy in the mountain surroundings. First, it was apparent that it had been artificially made as the keys were placed in a specific pattern. As he saw the key break, Jax felt a heartache. Sensing this, Jax felt weird as he had thought he had gotten over this odd obsession with the celestial spirit keys. Deciding to save them, Jax first used some magic to take the pearl on top of the mountain and destroy the weird pattern the keys made. The moment he destroyed the pattern, he received the pearl, which he promptly threw in his shadow. Simultaneously, the six flying monsters let out long cries as they flew to the ground to look at the spirit keys, which seemed to be important to them. As they were trying to place the keys back in place, Jax crept closer with the help of his magic and first threw a sharp condensed earth spike which went right through the weakness on the left of the blizzard vern. This situation surprised Jax as he was half expecting the attack to fail, but it seemed that he looked down on the attraction the keys gave the monsters as Jax exploded into pieces the spear that had infiltrated the defenses of the beast. Hearing the monster shout out in pain, Jax pressed on with his attack as he controlled another earth spear to fly towards the giant injury under the wing. At the same time, he used his lightning magic to attack the remaining five wyverns. He wasn't expecting to kill them in one hit but simply pushed them back while he tried to kill their boss. Unfortunately, it seemed that Jax underestimated them as they evaded or tanked the attack and flew towards him. Using his earth magic to create a wall while he lowered the earth under him, he saw two of the wyverns slash through the wall he had just built and tried to get him. However, he had already foreseen this happening and had lowered the earth to evade the fatal blow. On the contrary, a giant fireball was ready and hit them both once they missed him. As they fell due to the injury, Jax used air magic to slash directly through their long necks. It wasn't possible due to their high speed before. However, once they fell to the ground and stopped, they just became a big target. Collecting the bodies of wyverns with his shadow storage as they could be used and were quite precious, Jax faced the remaining three wyverns and boss. Using dark magic, Jax tried to bind them for a small moment as he used sound enhancing in conjunction with fearful scream to paralyze them for a short moment and confuse them. Simultaneously, Jax used his nature magic to the maximum to try and bind their legs directly on the group as he shot fireballs, lightning bolts, and wind slashes at them. By the time the effect of fearful scream stopped, the three wyverns were dead, and the blizzard vern was tied even if it wasn't going to hold off for much longer. Using his earth, nature, dark and water magic, he tried to bind it while using his water magic to englobe his head, trying to make it panic and make a few errors. Time proved that Jax made the right decision as the draconian beast used his wings to push the water aside. It was all Jax needed as he sent all the attacks possible to the gap in the grey monster's armor. 
As the attacks landed, the monster seemed to lose its strength as Jax carefully bound it with all of his magic possible and let it die by itself as it was already quite bloody. It didn't take more than two minutes as the monster finally died. Collecting the body of the monsters, Jax turned towards the celestial spirit keys and received them all. It was apparent that someone had placed them there to create the monster horde. He knew that collecting so many celestial gate keys would take time for any organization. As such, he decided to gather them and count them as his loot. Counting the number of keys, Jax counted a total of 120 silver celestial spirit keys. Even when he searched for them actively, he had only found slightly above 52 keys in about 7 months. It hadn't been easy, and had it not been for taking jobs all over the continent he wouldn't have had the chance to gather so much of them. After Jax finished cleaning up the battle scene, he gave another look and saw a grey egg with red patterns on it. This should be the egg of either the wyvern or the blizzardvern as the only other creatures in the mountains are the Vulcans who don't lay eggs, Jack said to himself as he took a look at the egg. Well, let's take it. Who knows, it could be nice to have this creature as a mount. It's not nice to always fly. At the same time, if it's the egg of their boss, it has the chance to become as strong as an S-rank mage which would be a good partner. Jack said to himself with a smile as he took the eggs in his arms and flew towards Shiritsum. It was a pity that he wasn't able to let living things stay in his shadow. Of course, he was an exception as he could breathe in his magic, but others couldn't. As such, he would have to transport it back by himself. Chapter 36 Three hours later, Jax finally left the mountains and went to Shiritsum to alert them of the completion of the job. As he arrived at the village, he saw that there were still some people on the lookout in case the monster horde came back again. Glancing at them, Jax entered directly into the village and went to the commander's tent. It wasn't hard to miss as he simply had to look for the larger tent. Stop. Who are you? Asked one of the guards in front of the tent. I'm a mage from Fairy Tale. I was tasked with a job and came here to report to the commander before I left, Jax replied casually. The guards frowned on Jax's attitude but still sent the message as it was their job. It was a good move as a few moments later, the commander came out of the tent to see Jax. So, how was it? I know you managed to kill the Vulcan King but did you get rid of the Blizzardvern as well? Is another horde coming? Asked the commander without stopping for a second to take a breath. Yeah, the Vulcan King and the Blizzardvern have been killed. The monster horde should be artificially made as there were traces of some magic at the top of the mountain. I erased the trace of magic, but the dark mage or the group of dark mages could still try to do it again, but considering the price of the resources used in conjunction with that magic, I doubt they will do it again for a while. As for the Vulcans, they are back to their old selves, so there's no need to worry about that. Answered Jax, much to the relief of the commander. Right, has there been any messages for me? Asked Jax as he had been out in the mountains for almost a week. No, nothing came. So what are you going to do now? Asked the commander. I'll be going back to fairy tale. My job is over, and so should be this battlefield. Goodbye. Said Jax as he turned around and left in the direction of fairy tale. Before the commander could say anything, Jax had taken flight and flew at full speed towards Fairy Tail. Isn't he a bit arrogant for such a young wizard? Said one of the two guards guarding the tent. You just don't understand his power. Killing a Vulcan king and its elite Vulcans and a blizzard vern along a few wyverns is a job that can be considered S-rank. Maybe he doesn't yet have an S-rank mage's strength, but he is infinitely close to this level. If you were so strong at his age, you would also have your temperament. Answered the commander as he smiled, seeing Jax flying towards Magnolia. Unknowingly to both the commander and the guard, Jax hadn't been arrogant but simply wasn't close enough to them to care about them any longer. He didn't know what had happened due to being stuck in the mountains for almost a week, and he was slightly worried that something went wrong. He made his way as fast as he could to the guild with the egg in his arms. It took two hours to arrive back at Magnolia. He then took a few minutes to arrive at the fairy tale guild building and pushed open the doors to enter the guild. It was still empty, which meant that the members who left for the job at the Whirlpool Sea hadn't come back. 
Hey, master. How did the jobs of the others go? He asked as he came closer to the bar of the guild where the master liked to sit. It's currently fine at the Whirlpool Sea. The monster wave has already started leaving. The calm sea didn't show any monsters, and Gildarts came back two days ago. He said that there was a spell that made the monsters enraged in the mountains. It was human made. He simply destroyed the whole mountain top to stop the magic. What about you? Asked the master as he eyed Jax. It was also human made on my side. There was a certain magic that used silver celestial spirit keys as a booster. Whenever the magic destroyed a key, a pulse of magic would be sent to the surroundings, which prompted the monsters to leave the mountain to fight. There was a Vulcan king with its elite commanding the Vulcans to fight, and there was a blizzard vern with its wyverns to protect the keys. I killed them and collected the remaining keys. I also got this egg as loot after the fight with the blizzard vern. Jack said as he showed the egg, he found on top of the mountain. The master looked closer to the egg and sighed at Jax's luck as he said. It is indeed the egg of a blizzard vern. You're lucky. A normal blizzard vern evolves from a wyvern and normally has at the peak of his strength the strength of an average s rank mage. What you have here is already a blizzard vern, it doesn't need to evolve, and his bloodline can be considered pure. It should have the strength of a top s rank mage in the future. To hatch it, you'll need magically charged ice lacrimas to give the egg the best environment to hatch. Compared to other monsters, it needs freezing temperature to hatch. Alright, thanks, master. Also, did the guy selling the bracelet come to the guild? Asked Jax as he was slightly expectant of this. Yeah, he came yesterday with the hundred bracelets and like you said, I paid him two million jewels. What's the use of the bracelets anyway? Asked the master as he hadn't looked closely at them due to the monster tides. At this question, Jax thus explained everything he knew about the bracelets, including the defects, which meant that except for him, no one else in the world could entirely create them. You mean that by using this bracelet mixed with your magic, a mage can release your spells with the energy stored inside of it? The master said with a wide-eyed as he stared at the bracelet Jax had completed in the shop a week back. Yeah. Unfortunately, the ratio of magic power used and power contained is awful right now. However, storing energy in the bracelet is also good training for my magical control, so I'm pretty sure I'll be able to improve the ratio and let the owner use more spells. Jack said with a smile. Indeed, it is an excellent magic tool. Had it not been for the restriction, it would be prevalent all around the continent. The master sighed yet again as he gave back the bracelet to Jack's. All right, your job is completed, and you will receive your payment from the Magic Council in a few days. Eat something and go back home to relax. Said the master as he took back his mug and looked at the gates of the guild. All right. Answered Jax as he went to the bar to eat some food and consequently asked if Kana had stopped by to eat in the guild. After seeing the worker nod, Jax was satisfied as he ate with relish and went back home. Arriving home, Jax opened the gate and went to the garden and decided to go and relax behind the house. He wasn't tired physically but mentally, and he just needed to relax to go back to his peak state. As Jax came to the patio behind the house, he saw Kana at the table turning her cards tirelessly. The silver-haired boy had already given her a token to allow her to stay here. As such, Jax wasn't surprised to see her there. However, he wondered what she was doing with her cards as she seemed intensely focused to the point that she didn't hear Jax behind her. Looking over her shoulder, he saw her turn the cards, say some things, reshuffled the cards, drew again and restarted from the beginning. After a few times she did it, Jax interrupted her before she reshuffled her cards by making some noise as he went to the chair in front of her. So, what are you doing? Asked Jax as he smiled slightly at her surprised appearance. I'm trying to use my magic to choose which card I want from the deck. After all, if I want an explosive card during the battle, I can't be searching for them, and I need my magic to help me take the right one. Explained Kana as she showed Jax how she was practicing. Right, can you show me card magic? I wanted to see back then, but because of the job, I had to leave immediately and didn't get the chance to see. Asked Jax as he leaned forward. 
Hearing his question, Kana smiled sweetly before nodding and taking the three first cards on top of the deck and aimed towards the garden as they glowed red, blue and yellow before making small explosions on the grass and destroying a part of the lawn. She seemed very excited at using her magic in front of Jax until she saw the grass explode and a small hole appearing in the yard. Flustered, she turned towards Jax and tried to explain. So sorry. I just wanted to show you. I'll go and patch up the hole. She said with her head down. Huh, don't worry about it. Look, it's already gone. Said Jax as he waved his hands, showing it was nothing. Right, how do you like the house? Are you used to it yet? Asked Jax as he tried to change the subject. Yeah. The house is great. Way better than the orphanage. Although it's a little bit big. Kana said as she said the last sentence to herself. Unfortunately for her, Jax's hearing was way better than others due to his magic, and he could catch it. Yeah, I agree. I made the house a little too big. So what do you say? Want to live with me? I had made the house to live with my friends, but apart from you, I only have Laxus as a friend, and he lives with the master so I'm all alone in the house and I do agree that it's too big to live alone. Said Jax as he invited her to move permanently. Anyway, he was confident that Kana would join Fairy Tail, and so he didn't mind living with someone else of the guild, especially since they became friends. All right, thanks. Said Kana happily as she didn't like the orphanage. I'll pay you back when I can take jobs in the future. She added right afterwards. There's no need to repay. If you don't take a room, it'll be empty, and I also want to live with someone, so it's all fine. Do you have things at the orphanage? Asked Jax as he would help her moving if necessary. Yeah, but only a small bag. I'll go and get it and come back right afterwards. She said as she got up and ran out of the garden. With a smile, Jax sat by the pool and with his feet in the water, and he laid down on the grass next to it. Feeling quite relaxed, he fell asleep. Chapter 37 Half an hour later, Jax was awakened by Kana as she lay down next to him. Did you get your bag? Asked Jax as he kept his eyes shut. Yes, and I also said goodbye to the matron of the orphanage. I didn't have any friends there, so it didn't take long. She said, a little disappointed at her failure to make friends. Opening his eye, he comforted her. It's okay. Aren't we friends? It's their loss that they didn't make friends with you. He said while smiling at her. Seeing her smile back, Jax got up. Have you been staying here when I was gone? If so, have you chosen a room? He asked as he helped her up. Yeah. Since you left me the token, I have stayed here, but my bag stayed at the orphanage just in case I had to go back. When I stayed here, I took the room right next to yours on the third floor. She answered while skipping towards the house with Jax. Oh. That's great. And what do you think of the house? Have you explored it yet? He asked back as he was happy to get someone to live with him finally. Hum. I visited the house. She answered as she pushed the door while Jax took back the egg he had left on the table while waiting for Kana. Nodding at her, Jax and Kana made their way up the stairs as they both went into their rooms to store their things. Kana placed her dresses in the wardrobe while Jax wanted to prepare a space for the egg and put the new keys he had in duplicate on the key rack near the window. On top of each hook of the keyframe was a piece of paper that recorded the key's name. As Jax separated the keys and stored the duplicate ones on the same large hook, he silently looked at his collection with a smile. It was vaguely satisfying to have so many keys when he knew that they were limited in the world. He felt he had started one of those collections the rich people did. With a small laugh, he finished storing them. Turning to the wall's left corner, Jax used his nature magic to create a little stand to leave the egg while closing the surroundings to protect the egg. The last thing he needed was a magically charged ice lacrima to give the egg the right temperature to hatch. As he finished storing the egg, Kana entered his room as she hadn't seen it yet due to Jax locking the door previously. Wow. It's big. And you have a lot of keys. She said as she went to his proud collection. Right? 
They are celestial spirit keys. They are limited in the world, and I'm trying to collect them. Jack said as he came closer to Kana to introduce his collection to her. But why do you collect them? Asked Kana as she tilted her head to the side while looking at Jack's. I don't know. I just feel calm when I have them close to me. As far as I know, the keys calmed me since I came to Fairy Tale. Jack said with a smile. Have you stored your things? Jax asked as he walked with Kana to the door. Hum. Everything is stored. Kana answered with a smile. I like it here, it's better than the orphanage, and I can have a room to myself. Previously I had to stay in the same room with the other girls, and they were all noisy. Kana continued as they walked down the stairs. Well, it's good if you're comfortable here. You can stay for as long as you want. Jax laughed as they both went towards the gate of the house. I have to go and buy some magically charged lacrimas. Do you want to come with me? Asked Jax as he was ready to leave the house once again. All right. I have nothing else to do anyway. When we come back, I'll train my magic. I need to become strong like you in the future. She said while nodding and clenching her fist tightly as she looked towards the gate of the house. My magic is not strong, and he can already do such amazing things like building his house. He's also only a bit older than me. I need to work hard in the future. She thought as they left the house. Walking in the town, Jax and Kana ate some snacks from the stall, although nothing cold as Jax was irritated by the cold after spending almost a week where there was nothing but ice and snow. On the contrary, the small hot pies of a dessert shop or the cakes were welcomed by both of them. Stopping at the lacrima shop, Jax and Kana entered. The lacrima shop was a shop that sold all types of lacrimas. Communication lacrimas, deodorant lacrimas, movie lacrimas, surveillance lacrimas, fuel lacrimas, tanning lacrimas, there were a lot of different types. Jax went to the section of the magically charged lacrimas. There were some which were currently empty and needed a mage to fill them to be of use. On the other hand, there were some which were already filled with a specific element. Looking through the various types of properties of the lacrimas, Jax finally found the ice-type lacrimas. Seeing the shop owner approach the two of them, Jax decided to inquire about the limit of those lacrimas. Sir, how long can they last, and how cold can they be? Asked Jax as those answers would decide the number he would have to buy. The shop owner was shocked by the question since ice lacrimas were typically used to keep food cold when they went on a picnic, for example. No one ever asked him those questions. However, as a proud shop owner, how could he not know those answers? When using their full capacity, they can only last a day where they will release a temperature of about minus 40 degrees Celsius. All right, they are worth 500 joules each, right? I'll take 20. Said Jax as he took a 10,000 jewels bill from his wallet and gave it to the shop owner as he took the bag the shop owner gave him. Storing the lacrimas in the bag, he left the store with Kana following him as he left the bag in his shadow storage right after leaving the store. Why did you take the bag of the shop owner since you could simply store them directly in your shadow? Asked Kana as she was surprised he had accepted the bag. Well, it's because if they see me storing objects directly in my shadow, they'll always have the suspicion that I stole from them. By accepting the bag and not showing my magic, they will keep their false sense of security. Jax answered with a smile as he remembered the first time he had used his shadow storage in a shop. The owner had been staring at him until he left the shop. That shopping experience had been pretty bad. He never bothered going back to that shop since. All right. Do you need to buy anything, or are we ready to go back? I must say that even if we ate snacks on the way, I'm pretty hungry. Said Jax as he felt his stomach rumble. If you can wait for a bit, I can cook at the house. I'm not that good, but I learned in the past with my mother. She said while trailing the end of her sentence. Jax was not stupid. Knowing that she had been staying at the orphanage, something had happened to her mother. As such, he simply smiled, took her hand to distract her and said, All right let's go back quickly. I can't wait to taste your cooking. As he finished speaking, he rushed towards the house while buying more food for the kitchen. He believed that from now on, 
he would eat less at the guild and a bit more home-cooked dishes. Buying enough food to last the two of them for a week, Jax and Kana made their way back home. At this point, the sun was already beginning to disappear at the horizon as night appeared. As they walked up the walkway Jax had made from the road, they soon arrived at the gate surrounding the house's land. As he was about to open the gate and go to the house, he heard some whispering in the surroundings. Frowning slightly, Jack stopped with Kana, and he used his light orb spell to light up the surroundings. As he looked towards the whispering sound, he saw three well-dressed kids hidden behind the trees. Thinking that he would have to not only install detection traps to the walkway but also surrounding the wall made of trees, he asked. What are you doing there? The kid seeing that they were discovered, came out and, when they saw that the two others were also around their age, answered him. We heard our father saying that he wanted to buy this mountain for something. So, we came here to see it, but this wall blocks us. It surrounds the entire mountain, and it's impossible to enter. Jax, hearing this had a weird look as he wondered if this would be like those bad novels he had read in the guild. The villains thought that they could have everything just because of status or power and try to force or threaten the owner to give it up. Laughing slightly at the novel he hated, he answered the three kids. I see. But you know, the mountain has already been bought, so I doubt your father will be able to buy it. Once he finished saying this, Jax opened the gate and entered with Kana before closing it behind him. At the same time, he decided that he would increase the number of earth detector traps the next day as he didn't want to have more of those random encounters. Chapter 38 Jax, will it be okay? Those kids said that their father wanted to buy the mountain, and the way they were dressed showed that they should be from a rich or a noble family. Said Kana as she showed some doubt and fear. She didn't want to go back to the orphanage now that her life finally took a turn for the better after meeting Jax. Don't worry about it. Even in the unlikely situation that they come to force us to sell the mountain, I have the token of the royal family that would stop them. After all, in Fiori, there is only one person at the top, and it's the ruler of the land. Even the Magic Council is an organization under the various kings across the kingdoms. No one will dare to do anything to us when we have that token. Jack said as he brought Kana to the kitchen of the house. Hum. Said Kana while nodding as Jax took out the supplies they bought, and Kana started to prepare the supper. While she was doing so, Jax went upstairs and entered his room. He wanted to start the hatching process of his egg. After all, the sooner he hatched, the sooner he would grow up to help him fight. Opening the small space he had created with his nature magic, he installed four ice-type charged lacrimas in the four corners and with the egg in the center, it would be in an environment as cold as the top of Mont Hako if not even colder. Closing the makeshift incubator, Jack strengthened the new small facility made of wood to keep the ice-cold air inside. Leaving the room and going back downstairs, Jax was surprised at the aroma spreading in the air. With a slight gulp due to the smell, he walked to the kitchen only to see Kana wearing her newly bought apron. The purple apron with flowers imprinted on them looked great on Kana as she focused on cutting the vegetables while the rice was cooked. Looking at her working hard, Jax held back from helping her as he knew she wanted to repay him in her way. As such, he went to the kitchen, where he sat down. Taking a grey bracelet from his shadow, he focused on his magic as he started to insert his magical energy and the spells he wanted the beads to hold. These bracelets were the first he had bought, and there were six remaining bracelets with eight beads in them. He tried to get used to inserting his magical power before moving on to the bracelets he would be using, giving as gifts or selling to other mages. After all, the older mages would be resistant to receive such a gift from him. As he started his training, he slowly let the magical energy flow into the bracelet as Jax inserted the same magic he did with the previous bracelet. Step by step, he spent over five minutes, and as he had tried before, his magic power was once again 75% exhausted as he confirmed that there was also only space for five uses of every magic. Once he finished the bracelet, he sent it back into his shadow storage and took a book from it in exchange while waiting for his magical power to replenish itself and for Kana to finish with the cooking. He had taken this new book when he came back to the guild after the end of his last job in Mont Hako. This book was mainly on monsters, specifically on the Blizzardvern and the best methods to hatch it. 
It was said that there were multiple things you could do when it was in the process of hatching. Those processes could strengthen the link the monster had with you, enhance the monster's physique, increase its intelligence, increase his affinity with his magic or even give it another one or create a telepathic link with the monster. Those were all things that the egg owner could do to improve the egg before it hatched. Unfortunately, of all the methods, the resources necessary were quite costly. So the only ones who would normally do such things were strong mages, wealthy merchants, nobles, or the royal family. However, none of them needed a pet monster since the mage was already strong. The merchant could simply hire wizards while the nobles and royal family had their guards already. As such, those kinds of practices were rare. In this old book of a bit more than a century, there were the steps necessary to give boosts to the magical monsters. For the blizzard vern, the first step was to use magically charged lacrimas to provide the right environment and keep the egg from dying due to the heat and start its hatching process. Then, he would have to collect specific materials to use during the hatching procedure, which would improve the monster. As he continued to read, he finally heard a noise coming from the kitchen. Closing his book, he stared at the kitchen door, only to have Kana come in with plates full of food. Jax got up and brought out the cutleries to eat. As they set down everything on the table, they sat face to face as Jax praised her upon smelling the odor. It smells great. I'm sure it'll taste great as well. With a smile, Kana took some food and started eating. Jax immediately imitated her as it honestly smelled great. After finishing the meal, they had eaten everything as Kana was indeed a great cook. Seeing the contented look on each other's faces, they smiled as Jax used his air, water and fire magic to lift the various dishes in the air, wash them, destroy the water with his fire magic which turned into steam and finally drying the cutleries. Once everything was clean, he used his magic to store everything and smiled at Kana, who looked happy not to wash the dishes. It was even better than I thought. Do you like cooking? Jax asked Kana as he didn't know whether she did it because she liked it or because she wanted to repay him one way or another. I like cooking. I'll also cook for you from now on if you don't mind. She said with shyness. I'd love to. Answered Jax as he loved the meal she cooked. So, tomorrow, was there anything you wanted to do? Asked Jax as he only had to shop for the necessary materials to improve the qualities of his future flying mount. No, I don't know anyone in the city except for the people of the orphanage, but I'm not close to them. Except for that, I spent my time at the guild. She answered with a shake of her head. Then tomorrow I have to go shop for a few materials for the egg. It shouldn't take more than two hours. Afterwards, do you want to go to Magnolia's amusement park? Asked Jax as he had requested Laxus to go with him in the past but had been rejected as he was busy with jobs. Hearing his words, Kana's eyes shined as she nodded her head. All right then. Tomorrow morning we have breakfast, buy the necessary materials, and by ten, we should be at the amusement park. I've never been there before. I wonder how it is. Jax continued with a smile on his face. All right, I'm tired. I almost didn't sleep in the past few days on the job. It's time to sleep. Jax said as he got up. Hum. I'll also go to sleep. Tomorrow we have to get up early. She said with a smile on her face. Going back to their rooms, Jax changed into the bottom of his pajama as he slept shirtless. It just felt better to sleep this way. Closing the light, Jax stayed on his back as he put an arm behind his head as he thought of the past few days. Unknowingly, more than half an hour passed by while he was lost in his thoughts. Turning his head to sleep, he heard his door open. Kana, is there anything wrong? It wasn't hard to guess who it was. Except for him, there was only Kana in the house. EUM. Can I sleep with you? She asked between two sobs. Figuring that she might miss her mother, Jack simply pushed the covers out of the way, and she entered the bed next to him. Holding her, the two fell asleep no more than a minute later, a night without any nightmares for either of the two. The next morning, Jax woke up earlier than Kana and tried to make as little noise as possible as he got out of bed. It was currently five in the morning, and he was planning on training a bit. 
Going down to the first basement, Jax saw that Kana had used it as he saw that some magic training equipment had moved. Not worrying about this, he went to the other side of the training as he started to train by releasing his magic in the bracelet. It was an excellent way to stay tuned with all of his different magics and train his control. After finishing a bracelet, he released a few spells of each of his magic until he exhausted all his magical power. Seeing that he was done with his magic training, for the time being, he took a magic sword from the wall and started to train his physical combat on an automated mannequin. The target had healing properties as long as there was a supply of magical power which was one of the uses of magically charged lacrimas. Continuing his sword training for half an hour, he turned to daggers, lance, whip and archery. He was pretty good in physical combat as he had trained extensively in the past and continued training every morning he had a chance. While he preferred swords, he was good with other weapons or in hand-to-hand -hand combat style, of which he took down even the older mages who had magic that strengthened their bodies with simple techniques. Finishing his training at 7.30, Jax went back to his room upstairs to take a shower. As he entered the room, he saw that Kana had already gotten up and even made the bed. With a happy smile on his face, knowing that she had most likely gone to prepare breakfast, Jax entered the bathroom to clean himself. Chapter 39 as he finished cleaning himself, he changed into his usual attire, which consisted of black pants, a tight black t-shirt that outlined his abs, a black belt and black socks. He simply liked the color black. It didn't have any deeper meaning than enjoying this color. Giving a quick check on the egg, Jax confirmed that the lacrimas were doing fine before going downstairs to the kitchen. From the smell, he knew that Kana was currently cooking. With a happy smile on his face, Jax arrived in the kitchen and, seeing her in her apron Jax said good morning before going to the dining room to read his book until it was ready. About ten minutes later, Jax was presented with two toasts, an egg, strawberries and a glass of apple juice. The breakfast looked even better than the food at the guild. Jax lifted his head and looked at Kana. Thank you, Kana. I'm sure it'll taste good. If you can make this kind of food every time, I'll stop eating at the guild said Jax as he smiled at her and praised her cooking. On the other side of the table, Kana also smiled while slightly blushing to his compliment before taking her breakfast, which consisted of a toast, an egg, strawberries and an apple along with apple juice. When did you wake up? Asked Kana as she hadn't found Jax in the bed when she woke up. I woke up at 5. I normally wake up at this hour to train until 7.30. Answered Jax as he ate a toast. I see. Said Kana before continuing. Do you think I could join you in the morning? She asked with a hopeful look. Sure. These days I do about 30 minutes of magical training before doing about 2 hours of physical training in various types of weapons. Said Jax as he finished his first toast. Wait. Do you use all the weapons in the training ground? She asked with a bewildered look. Yes. I trained with Laxus and the older mages in the guild when I was younger. Since my magical training was doing well, I picked up the weapons and physical training. In my opinion, it's always good to have another option if your magic power is empty or it simply doesn't work. In those cases, physical skills are the best. Said Jax as he continued his breakfast. Do you think you could teach me to use those weapons? Asked Kana as she simply stopped eating to stare at Jax. Sure, I can train you when I train in the morning. Although do you know which weapon you want to use? It took me a bit more than two years to learn to control those weapons and be proficient with them. And at that time, I spent almost ten hours every day doing intense training with my fairy magic to heal myself when I surpassed my body's limits. I wouldn't recommend this training. If I had another chance, I probably wouldn't dare to do this again. Said Jax while he smiled wryly with a little fear at the memories of his training. Yes. I would like to learn about daggers. Fighting with daggers in close combat or dagger throwing. It should go well with my card magic. She said as she had already thought about which weapon she liked best. Alright, how about tomorrow morning? We'll start training at 5. You'll train with your card magic at the beginning, and when you feel it's enough, I'll teach you how to fight with daggers and how to throw daggers. 
said Jax as he didn't mind helping her since it wouldn't take much time, and in the future, she may become a sparring partner for him. Thank you, Kana answered back as she now entirely focused on her food. At precisely eight, Jax and Kana stood in front of the door. They were ready for the day as she would accompany him to buy the materials needed before going to the amusement park. Since it was a first for the both of them, they were quite excited and decided to finish shopping as soon as possible. Firstly, Jack stopped by the guild to withdraw some funds. The rare materials he would buy weren't cheap, and they were in a low quantity. As such, Jax took all his money from the guild as he knew he would spend a large part of it for his beast. He currently had 35 million jewels and some extra after receiving the remuneration from his last job in Hakob. Their first stop was at the branch of the Magic Council in the city. While their work was to patrol the town, stop criminals and send them to the Magic Council's national branch, they also dabbled a bit into business. Their business was mainly about selling materials for the wizards in town, and consequently, most of the materials Jax needed were sold by them. Thankfully, Jax lived in Magnolia, which was considered a big and important city. As such, they should have more materials than the small branches. Arriving at the building gate, Jax didn't see any guards, so he simply decided to enter the building. The building was made of stone with a roof made out of wood. A few large windows were on the left and right sides of the building. As he entered the building, Jax noticed how the floor was made of pale wood and was richly decorated. On the wall in front of the entrance was a sign with three arrows pointing in different directions. The one on the top pointed directly towards the stairs, and next to it was written, Captain of the Branch Magic Council of Magnolia. The second arrow pointed to the right with the words, Request for Help Criminal Activity Jail. This side was pretty explanatory as it was everything related to the criminals. Finally, the last arrow pointed to the left side, and the word, Business, was written. This arrow was also pretty explanatory. Taking Kana's hand, they walked towards the left door and opened it without hesitation. On the inside were various shelves, and Jax could tell that they were all magical materials. Some could be considered dangerous while others not. However, there was one thing for sure. The branch was rich in materials. Jax looked closely on the shelves and found four materials that could be useful for the blizzard vern. Jax immediately moved to take the four items. The first one was liquid ether nano which was an extreme concentration of ether nano which eventually turned liquid. It was quite rare on the continent, and the Magic Council only managed to produce a small amount every year. Thankfully, it wasn't in high demand, so it wasn't out of stock. According to the book, he could use up to 50 milliliters of this material to increase the egg's affinity to ether nano, also known as magical power. Unfortunately, after 50 milliliters, it wouldn't have any effect anymore, so he decisively bought the maximum. The second item was frosty metal. This kind of metal was once again not used very much by mages across the continent. However, for the blizzard vern, it was an excellent resource as it increased their defense and the coldness of their body. This material was usually found deep in extremely cold mines. It was hard to find but didn't have much use except for using it when forging weapons. However, this metal was hard but heavy, and the cold made it extremely hard to use as material for forging. As such, this kind of metal wasn't widely used. For the blizzard vern, it could only absorb this metal for a total of a day. Afterwards, the metal would become scrap as all the metal's weight and coldness would be absorbed by the egg. Each metal could be used for 12 hours, so he needed to buy two. The third item, Draconian Frostwind Leaf. A rare leaf, which can be used for a monster with dragon blood. It was an herb that could be used a total of 10 times. However, in between each herb, the beast needed to wait for a day before using the second one, so it would take a minimum of 20 days before he absorbed all 10 leaves. This leaf had the benefit of increasing the dragon blood concentration in monsters with dragon blood. As such, this would be perfect for the blizzard vern. However, not only would the leaf increase the blood concentration but also increase the affinity of the ice element and give the wind affinity and increase it as well. With the wind element, the monster would be faster and be able to use wind magic. The fourth item he collected was arctic feather bones. 
While it had the word bone in its name, it wasn't a bone but a sort of wood that had the perfect properties to strengthen the bones of the blizzard vern, lessen the weight, and increase speed. Along with the strengthening of the bones, the strength of the beast would also be increased exponentially. While one arctic feather bone might not have a tremendous effect, it was said that the blizzard vern could use it a total of 15 times which would significantly increase its future prospect. As for the materials he still needed to gather, they were magic dust used along with his blood to create a telepathic link and make sure he had already tamed by the time it hatched. Magic dust was simply an artificial product commonly used. However, according to the book, it was tough to get some which he could only attribute to being written a hundred years ago. Afterwards, he would need speed silver seven times which would increase the sharpness of its teeth and wings while also strengthening the beast's speed. It worked well with the feather arctic bones. The speed silver would have to be melted, and the egg would have to be put inside the melted silver for eight hours before immediately changing to the second speed silver for the best effect. Then, there were two other materials he wanted to get. The first one was luminous cotton which could be used eight times, each time for a week. The egg would have to be wrapped in the cotton, and the effect was that the beast's intelligence would rapidly increase. The second one was ghastly skin fruit which not only increased the magical defenses of the skin of the blizzard vern but also of the eyes. However, the most significant effect was that it would strengthen the internal organs to protect them. The blizzard vern could use the fruit a total of nine times. Chapter 40 Arriving at the counter, he immediately gave his needs to the worker. Hi, do you have 50 milliliters of liquid ether nano, two frosty metals, 10 draconian frost wind leaves, along with 15 arctic feather bones? Jax asked as he put the few materials he had collected on the wooden counter. Hum, yes. We should have the liquid ether nano and two other feather arctic bones. However, we don't have the rest of the materials here. I can place an order to the kingdom's branch if you want to buy them. He answered while he went towards the back to collect the liquid ether nano and two extra arctic feather bones. I see. Could you tell me how much would the 50 millimeters of liquid ether nano, two frosty metals, 10 draconian frost wind leaves, 15 arctic feather bones, a bag of magic dust, 7 speed silver, 8 luminous cotton and 9 ghastly skin fruit cost? Asked Jax as he frowned slightly, hoping he had enough money. He didn't mind using everything he had since it would allow him to have a pet that would easily surpass the S rank in the future. After all, an ordinary born blizzard vern and not an evolved one from a wyvern had the potential to reach the top of the S rank. With all the boost he gave it, it should have the possibility to surpass the S rank and reach SS rank in raw power in the future. Of course, only with good enough luck and enough materials. It was all an investment for the future. Hum, let me see. Answered the worker as he took out a list from behind the counter and started to calculate the total cost of the materials Jax had just named. After a few minutes which kept Jax worried as he wanted the best for his first pet, the worker put the sheet down and looked at Jax. It equates to a total of 23 million joules. You're lucky that they aren't trendy, and the price has dropped in recent years. After all, fighting with beasts isn't very popular anymore. He took a breath as he continued his previous speech. Right, I don't know which beast you're going to use those materials on. However, I know that research on taming beasts was stopped almost a century ago. However, a new material was discovered called luminous titanium, which increases resistance to magical attacks and physical attacks such as piercing and slashing. It strengthens the flesh of the monster, making them a lot more resistant. I know that the Magic Council tried to bring back the idea of fighting with monsters almost 20 years back. However, since almost no mage wanted to fight with beasts back then and even today, the Council stopped the research. After all, to fight with a beast, you need to tame it in the egg, use a lot of resources to strengthen it, and in the end, it can take a few years for the investment to pay up. Due to this, beast taming has been abandoned, and the material is quite cheap. It's 400,000 joules for each block of luminous titanium, and the beast can use a total of three. So, do you want this material as well? Asked the worker as he seemed enthusiastic to sell more and talk more since he appeared very bored. Well, if those materials work as you say, then I'll take them as well. So, a total of 24. 
for million jewels. Asked Jax as he prepared to take the bills of jewels to pay. Yes. As long as you pay right now, I'll prepare a receipt for you, and the Magic Council will send the materials during the day. You should be able to receive them a little bit after six in the afternoon. Answered the worker as he started to prepare a receipt. All right. In that case, can you send all of the materials, including those, to the Fairy Tale Guild? Asked Jax as he pointed to the materials on the counter as he paid the necessary money. Yes, no problem. Here's your receipt, and we'll send you everything tonight. The worker nodded with a smile. Jax could tell that he would get a bonus for selling so many materials at once and that it was the reason the worker was so happy. However, it didn't matter to him and instead was ready to go to the amusement park. However, as he closed his wallet and saw the 10, 6 million jewels left, he felt terrible for his previous money. Although he knew it was worth it, he understood why so many people rejected beast taming as it was money burning. All right, Kana, let's go to the amusement park. He said as they both left the guild building and made their way to the east of the city where the amusement park was located. It was a bit before his prediction, and they would arrive by 9 instead of 10 since it went so well in the Magic Council building. Walking on the road, they both arrived at the amusement park half an hour later. The front gate had about a hundred people waiting to enter, and behind the gates, Jax could see all kinds of rides which he would soon be able to ride. As he felt some excitement at doing something he wanted to do for almost a year, Jax entered the lane along with Kana, and when they arrived at the counter, he decisively bought a VIP ticket for the both of them. The VIP ticket allowed them to enter the VIP line in the rides, which allowed them to go before everyone else. However, it did cost a bit more as each ticket was worth 10,000 jewels. However, compared to what he just bought, this was nothing and considering he probably wouldn't come back anytime soon, he paid to enjoy the day as much as he could. As such, along with Kana, they tried all kinds of rides from the merry-go-round to faster rides which tried to scare them due to the curves and the speed. However, due to his high-intensity training and knowing that he could simply fly if something happened, he wasn't terrified, and it reduced a lot of the fun he should have had. However, the day was still fun with Kana, and they had many laughs as well. They went back to the guild together. Kana simply wanted to go there and get used to the guild since she wanted to join when she could, while Jax wanted to get some news of the battlefield and collect the materials he was supposed to receive from the Magic Council. As he entered the guild, he saw that the members who previously went to the calm sea were back. Moreover, seeing their smiling faces, Jax could tell that they didn't suffer a single casualty which was great news. Upon entering, he welcomed back the members who were drinking at the bar before going to the bar to see the master. Master, has there been any news about the other group? Asked Jax as he took a mug of juice the worker at the bar handed to him. Well, there hasn't been any news yet. However, last I heard, the monsters were retreating into the ocean, and they will soon come back. Nodded the small man as he drank from his mug. Right, there were a few members of the Magic Council previously. They brought a load of items they said you bought. Are they used for the hatching of the blizzard burn? Asked the master as it wasn't every day someone started the hatching process of a beast especially not with such luxurious resources. Yeah, all of the materials are to strengthen it before it hatch and create a link with me. All of the materials together cost me over 24 million jewels. However, I'm sure it'll be worth a trite, master. I know we have a few rules of contacting our ancient clients we met through the guild. However, I was hoping to learn music since it improves my control over my sound magic, and I like music. I wanted to contact my first client, Miss Joanna Leslie and become her student to learn music. Of course, I'll pay her just like a regular student. However, is it allowed by the guild, or is it considered personal gains? Asked Jax as he planned to learn some more music. He believed himself to be quite good at music and wanted to practice and learn a bit more. Unfortunately, except for her and the target of his last mission in Crocus, Miss Riki Robin, he didn't know anyone else practicing music. However, considering that he was in Magnolia, he didn't want to leave too far away. Yes, it's fine as long as you pay for her services. Nodded the master as he had noticed that Jax was interested in music lately. All right. 
I'll go there tomorrow morning in that case. I still have an egg to set up and supper to eat. So, I'll leave first. Don't drink too much, master. Finished Jax as he simply left the fairy tale guild building and went towards his own house. It wasn't hard to locate his home as he could see the mountain from afar and the trees surrounding the hill. It was almost impossible to see the interior of the house through the exterior. Still, it was completely different from the interior as it was possible to see practically all of Magnolia. Entering the familiar walkway, Jack saw some signs that proved that the few kids whose parents wanted to buy the mountain came over again. Frowning slightly, he used the remaining sunlight to make some renovation on the barrier around the house. He added some detection traps all around the house, including in the woods outside the wooden fence and not merely on the walkway and in the trees. He then added some magic in the trees to repel anyone trying to climb over the barrier made of trees and catch them the second time they tried. It would do for the defenses for the moment as he spent almost an hour on those small modifications. He had thought about creating pits and trapping them, but considering that he may have left the town to do jobs, it could be dangerous to keep them trapped for days or weeks as they would die. Approaching the gate, he used his own token for the gate to open by itself as he made his way to his room. With the materials he had collected, he needed to start the hatching process of his blizzard vern egg. The sooner he started, the sooner it would hatch and the sooner it would help him. Well I hope you enjoyed, have a nice day. Chapter 41 Entering the house, Jax directly made his way to his room to start his egg's hatching process. There were many materials to use with the egg before it finished hatching to give it as much power as possible. As such, he didn't want to waste too much time. The first thing he did was to prepare the telepathic and pet link with the help of his blood and the bag of magic dust. Opening the book to look at the right way to create the link, as he didn't want to fail and spend all of his materials on a pet that would leave as soon as it was born, he read the instructions. Firstly, taking a small bowl, he opened the magic dust bag and mixed it with the blood that fell from his cut finger. Once properly mixed, Jack started to draw on the egg. The markings left on the egg would assimilate with it, effectively creating an unbreakable bond between them. Once Jax completed the egg's drawings, Jax inserted a bit of his magical power on the egg making the markings light up before they slowly disappeared into the egg. This process didn't take more than a few minutes as it was the simplest and could be done relatively quickly. However, the other materials that could improve the monster would take a longer time to integrate successfully. Immediately starting with the materials to improve his future pet, he took out the vial of liquid ether nano. The vial contained 50 millimeters of the liquid and the way to use it was pretty easy as he only had to drip the liquid on the egg slowly. It didn't take much time as markings started to appear on the egg, and finally, as the 50 millimeters of liquid completely soaked the egg, the markings appeared all around, and a faint bluish light appeared. Looking at the egg, which looked mysterious with the light and the markings, while it was absorbing all the liquid, Jax completely closed up the wood around the egg and looked at the time before remembering when he had to use the next material. According to the book, the liquid ether nano would take a total of a day to be absorbed by the egg and afterwards, he would be able to use the other materials. Once he completed this small work, he went to the basement and started training. He had to wait for Kana to eat since she wanted to cook for him, and he wasn't that hungry yet anyway. He turned towards the bracelets to practice his magic control, and an hour later, Kana called him to eat. As he climbed up the stairs, he smelled the food and couldn't help showing a smile as she was indeed getting better at cooking. Sitting down at the table with the food, he once again thanked her for the food before the two of them started eating. At the end of the meal, as Jax finished storing the plates and cutleries, he saw that Kana was squirming slightly in her chair. After giving her a puzzled glance, he asked while helping her up and bringing her towards the door. Kana, is there anything wrong? Looking up rapidly as she saw Jack staring at her, she blushed slightly while lowering her head. I just wanted to ask, what do you think of small dogs? Hum. Dogs? I never had one since I often leave on jobs. Why? Asked Jax as he lifted an eyebrow at her question. Well, I have a dog. I came to Magnolia with it. However, I didn't want to bother you, so it is not far from the house. Previously when I lived at the orphanage, it couldn't stay with me, 
so it always stayed near the orphanage. So, do you mind if I bring it here? Asked Kana as she lifted her head to look at Jax's expression. A dog? Sure, as long as you take care of it, I don't mind. He answered casually as he didn't mind a small dog, especially if he didn't take care of it. Really? Thanks. She replied in a loud voice as a smile and small tears of joy appeared on her face, and she threw herself in Jax's arms. Well, it's okay. He answered while patting her back with a slight smile appearing on his face. After a few dozens of seconds, he asked with a smile, Well, are you going to go and get it now? Oh, yes. I'll be back soon. She said while sprinting towards the door. I'm going to bed, so don't forget to close the front door when you come back. He added loudly while he went to his room. Giving a quick look at the egg emitting a faint bluish light, he sealed it up completely to cover the light before taking a quick shower, changing into his pajama and sliding under his cover in the bed. Closing his eyes, he felt the gate opening once again and confirmed that it was Kana and her small dog before relaxing and going back to sleep. Thanks to the sound insulation he had put in the walls and doors of the house, he could fall asleep quietly without hearing Kana walking in the place which promised him a peaceful sleep. The next morning, Jax woke up Kana as she had mentioned that she wanted to train with him in the morning. Taking the sleepy girl to the basement, Kana trained with her card magic from 5 to 6, and Jax taught her how to use daggers until 7. At 7, Kana went to take a shower and prepare breakfast while Jax continued to train at a higher intensity for half an hour. After breakfast, they both made their way towards the guild hall, only to find an extremely depressed atmosphere. Approaching Macau, who wasn't too far, Jax asked, what happened? While looking at the guild members. Our two S-rank mages, Brian and Jessica, are dead. When the monsters were leaving, everyone relaxed. However, at that time, they made a final raid and to cover for the other guild members, they stayed behind and died. Our guild is still lucky. I heard that the Grim Crusaders and the Sacred Brigade guilds were annihilated. They had sent out most of their members to receive a higher payment from the Magic Council, but over 90% of their wizards perished in the fight. We are lucky our members are united, or we would have as much loss as they have the Master went to visit the two families. We will have the funerals in a few days. He answered while explaining everything that happened. I see. Jax nodded his head sadly. While he hadn't had much contact with the two wizards due to them often being working, he still had a good relationship with them over the years he had been in Fairy Tale. Over the following month, Jack started training with renewed determination. Every morning, he trained his magic control with the help of the bracelets. Afterwards, he taught Kana the use of daggers before doing his physical training for half an hour. After their daily morning training, Jax went back to his first client to learn music from her. Surprisingly, she wasn't just skilled as a violinist, but she also played piano, the flute, guitar, and she sang. Apparently, she was a compositor, and she learned all of those to create the most incredible musical masterpiece she could. In the beginning, she wasn't that interested in accepting him as a student. However, once she saw his musical talent, she was more than happy to train him as he learned everything fast and could soon help her compose her music by playing with her. Surprisingly, she didn't have anyone to play music with, even if her musical pieces used all three instruments and singing. He learned from her from eight in the morning until five in the afternoon with an hour break to eat in the middle. Afterwards, he went back to the guild for an hour before going back to his house. From time to time, he received letters from Hijui of which he received news from her, and he gladly answered as she was one of the few friends he had. Three days after the guild learned of the two S-rank members' death, they had a funeral in the graveyard not far from the fairy tale guild. That day, he didn't train magic or music, just like the other guild members who simply drank all day. The following week, most of the members left on jobs, trying to get slightly stronger so that such an event never happened again. Finally, over the month, Jax completed over 70 magical bracelets. He first wanted to give them to the guild members as they had helped him a lot in the past, but upon seeing the effect of such a magical item, they each bought at least one for 300,000 jewels. While 300,000 was a lot of money, they could make this money back by taking a few more jobs. More importantly, 
this was a life-saving item. The bracelets he sold to the members had ten beads, and each of the beads held five magical spells with the strength of the top of the A rank. This bracelet gave them extra protection once they used all of their magic power. Thanks to selling the bracelets to the members of the guild, he made 21 million extra jewels. While Jax thought it was too pricey, the members believed that the bracelet was still cheap. So, with that, he increased his savings back to 31 million jewels quickly. It covered the price of the materials for his still unhatched pet egg. As for the pet egg in the month, he completely absorbed the liquid ether nano, the two pieces of frosty metal, the draconian frost wind leaves, the arctic feather bones and the seven pieces of speed silver. Currently, he was using the ghastly skin fruits since they could all be used at the same time, and they would be absorbed entirely nine days later. It was perfect since he had to leave for Crocus for the birthday of Hijui. Chapter 42 24th of June, one day before the birthday of the princess. Jax, as always, woke up early before going downstairs to start training along with Kana. During the last month, he had made a lot of progress in his magical training, especially in his sound magic. Firstly, his fairy, light and dark magic reached the maximum and Jax installed a new pearl in those magics. With this, only his fire, earth and lightning magic still had only one pearl in the grooves. However, due to the training he had conducted, the next groove of those magic was already over 90% completed, and they had approximately the strength of an average A-rank mage. As for the magic which had a second pearl, they all had a slight boost except his sound magic which had a big boost. His air magic increased to 9%, his water magic increased to 13%, his fairy magic only increased to 4% due to having been raised not long ago. It was the same with light and dark magic who reached 5 and 6% respectively. His nature magic which had already been working on the third groove for a while, reached 10%, while his sound magic reached 37% due to his musical training, which helped him master the sounds more quickly. Currently, his goal was to complete the second groove of the fire, earth and lightning magic to install the second pearl in those magics and reach the standard of the top of the A-class mage in all of his magic. After all, while he wanted to continue improving his magic as fast as he did when he just started, he could tell that it was becoming more arduous. Now, it was hard to improve his magic by more than 2 or 3% each week unless he put his mind to it as he did for his sound magic. And he was only working on his third groove currently. Of course, he was aware that there were only five grooves and almost halfway there. However, currently, fulling the third groove of a particular magic was harder than fulling the first and second groove of the same magic. In other words, every time he promoted his magic, it became harder than filling all the previous grooves together. If completing the third level of his magic was this hard, he did not doubt that filling the fourth one would take at least a few years or more. However, there was time. As Jax did the regular training of filling the bracelets with magic, he improved his concentration on this specific one. This bracelet was unique as it was made of a beautiful product. The bracelet was bright green, like Hijui's hair. It had small designs embroidered on it, such as mythical creatures like dragons and phoenixes. Finally, the ten beads of the bracelet were interlaced directly in between the dragons and phoenixes. The bracelet material had been from a shadow arachne silk. It was a rare material that Jax had managed to obtain from a mage who explored the Devil's Forest. This material was scarce, and it cost him five million jewels to get it despite the small amount. Moreover, the only reason it was so cheap despite being such a rare material was that except for being soft, stretchable and beautiful, it didn't have any magical properties and could only be made into clothes for the noble ladies or queens of kingdoms. As such, Jax managed to get it for cheap. The bracelet he was currently making was precisely for the gift of the princess. He had been waiting until the last moment to make it since his control over his magic power was constantly improved, and he would be able to get more magical energy inside of the beads, allowing the user of the bracelet to release the magic a few more times. As he concentrated on the magic bracelet, he slowly infused his magic in the ten beads with as much control as he could as he compressed his magical power into them. As the bracelet accepted more and more magical energy, the beads started to change colors from the initially transparent to a different color depending on the magical power infused in it. 
With as much attention as he could, the bracelet's beads started to radiate more and more colors as the energy was getting more concentrated. As Jax used almost all of his magical power on the bracelet, he stopped infusing more energy and only concentrated on calming the bracelet's magic power. As he managed to calm it down, the bright colors dimmed slightly. Looking at the now beautiful bracelet full of power, Jack searched the bracelet's power and was surprisingly happy when he saw that the bracelet's owner could use each magic a total of eight times. However, as he looked through the bracelet, he confirmed that the beads currently used for the bracelets he made could only hold for the equivalent of 10 top A rank spells or 5 S rank spells in the future. It was due to the material itself, which wouldn't be able to hold more than that without exploding into pieces whenever he made it due to his magical strength. However, such a thing didn't bother him since he knew that if he ever sold the bracelet, he was only going to install about 5 average A rank spells inside of it as it would allow him to make more of them and at the same time, there was no need for more potent spells in it. Finishing the bracelet with happiness, Jax put the bracelet down in his shadow storage before training his physical skills with Kana, who had just started. After all of his training in his tasty breakfast, thanks to Kana, Jax gave a last look at the egg that was currently absorbing the nine ghastly skin fruits and left the house for the guild. Since he was going to the princess's birthday, he had to let the master know. Arriving at the rowdy guild, as usual, Jack saw some of the older members already drinking alcohol slightly after breakfast. Shaking his head, he greeted them before arriving near the master. Master, tomorrow is the birthday of the princess. I was invited a month ago so I'll be leaving today to go to Crocus. I'll be back in around a week. Said Jax to the small master who had a red face due to the alcohol he was drinking. Yesh, yesh, you can go. See ya said the master loudly between two hiccups. All right. I'll be leaving and do drink less. It's not good for your health to drink so much. Added Jax before turning around and walking to the exit of the guild. It doesn't matter. Anyway, you can heal me if there's something, can't you? Answered the master before shaking his bottle of ale and drinking it all in one gulp. Shaking his head, resigned at the attitude of the guild master, Jack said goodbye to Kana before using his air magic to go towards Crocus. Princess POV It had been over a month since the last time she had seen Jax due to the high-intensity training he had been doing. She had, of course, sent letters to Jax to keep in touch, but they hadn't seen each other since then. Of course, she had sent a few invitations to Jax to come and play in the castle since everyone else had a motive behind being with her. As such, Jax was her only real friend due to the attitude of the others. It would soon be her birthday. However, she hadn't sent him an invitation since those who could be invited were all influential people such as the head of prominent organizations such as the Magic Council or people like nobles, notable business people and other kingdoms' royal families. However, since Jax was simply a mage from the Fairy Tale Guild, he didn't have the proper identification to enter the day of her birthday party. She was almost sure that her father wouldn't let her invite Jax, so she hadn't asked him. Of course, Jax and her father hadn't told her that he had been invited over a month prior. She was pretty reluctant for her birthday party since there would be countless people trying to pursue her, simply compliment her without end or follow her everywhere she goes to please her. Those people who would bother her were all children of influential people who would try to get her liking, try to create a relationship or try to pursue her due to her beauty and identity. As for the people who would do that, they were as young as 5 or 6 years old and as old as 17 or 18 years old. Because of those kinds of people, her birthday was now a week of getting bothered and trying to keep her calm. Sighing as she left her room, knowing that the worst week of the year was coming, she arrived at the dining hall and sat down to eat with her father. Hijui, are you ready for your birthday party tomorrow? I have invited Riki to come tomorrow for your birthday. She will sing a few songs. Added the king after seeing that her mood turned sour upon hearing about her birthday party the next day. Sister Riki will come tomorrow. Asked Hijui, excited about hearing the news. Yes, I have invited her for your birthday party tomorrow since I know all of those kids only want to become friends with you because of who you are, and at least Riki can accompany you. Nodded the king as he had a gentle smile on his face. Hearing this, Hijui's eyes lit up, 
thinking that she would be able to invite Jax as well since Riki didn't have a significant identity despite being a star. However, in the end, she held back as while Riki didn't have any background, she was still an extremely popular star and would be performing at her birthday party. As for her father, Toma E. Fiori, he had a mysterious smile on his face as he could tell what her daughter was thinking. However, he didn't say anything as Jax's invitation was supposed to surprise his daughter. Sending her back to the study to learn after breakfast, he wondered when the silver-haired boy would be coming to the castle. He remembered telling him to go to the castle a day earlier in the letter he sent him a week before to be sure he would be able to arrive on time and to cheer up Hijui at the same time. Chapter 43 Around midday, Jax finally arrived at Crocus. His first stop was a gift shop since he needed to find a gift box to put the bracelet. It would be acceptable to hand over the bracelet to Hijui. However, considering that many people would be watching during the gift handing ceremony, he needed a beautiful gift box that looked somewhat rich. So, the first thing he did was enter a renowned gift shop. Those shops had everything related to gifts, from small props to expensive gifts. Of course, they also had gift boxes. Entering the shop, Jax was surprised at the number of items on the shelves. However, he didn't start to browse. He looked for the gift boxes and chose the one that caught his eye. The box had a green color and four small pink ropes, which started from the small box's four sides and linked in the middle of the box cover to hold it together. The knot was in a flower pattern, and a few miniature roses made of tiny red crystals decorated the box. The decoration wasn't too much and added charm to the container without destroying the gift box's balance. Taking the gift box, he brought it to the counter and bought it for 20,000 jewels. An incredible price for a simple gift box, but what could he do, he didn't want to embarrass himself or Hijui. He immediately opened it to store the bracelet in the interior before asking the worker to make the flower-like knot once again. After all, he had no idea how to do it, and the worker would do it quickly. So after a thank you, Jax walked towards Mercurius, the palace of the King of Fiori. The king had invited him to arrive a day earlier to the castle to play with Hijui and give her an early surprise. Once he arrived in front of the court, he showed the royal token Hijui had given him the last time he came, and the knights immediately opened the big doors to allow Jax to enter the castle. There were no reception or complicated matters, and Jax merely made his way to Hijui's bedroom. Knocking on the door and seeing that Hijui didn't open the door, Jax finally decided to push the door open and look inside, but after finding nothing but a mess of the room, he closed the door again and started to search the castle for the princess. It wasn't hard since he remembered from her letter that she had to take classes in the study every morning. Walking to the study. He heard Hijui talk to herself with his enhanced hearing and confirming that there wasn't anyone else in the room Jax used his sound magic to hide the sound of the door opening and the sound of his footsteps as he closed it back and walked to the back of Hijui with a smile on his face. Seeing her sitting on the floor with a small table in front of her with her brows in a constant frown as she tried to understand, Jax kneeled behind her and suddenly hugged her from behind out of nowhere, giving her a scare. Trying to escape from his hug, Jax smiled slightly and stopped messing with her. It's been so long since I've seen you, and you don't even want to hug me anymore. He said with a fake sad voice. As she heard Jax's voice, Hijui opened her eyes in surprise as she looked behind him and immediately hugged him back as she shouted with some tears in her eyes. You scared me. I thought someone was trying to take me away. Bad Jax. Lifting an eyebrow as the choice of her last two words, he pushed her back a bit with a smile. It's okay, don't cry. I came to see you. He said as he dried off her few tears at the corner of her eyes. How have you been? It's been a long time. Asked Jax as he changed the conversation. I'm good, but I'm tired of studying. Let's go and play. She said, showing a smile while getting up from the ground and leaving her study books on the table while taking his hand. Smiling and shaking his head, they left the study. Unknowingly, not far from them, the king looked at the two of them with a fond smile. He knew that his daughter didn't have any friends, and seeing her so happy to be with Jax let him be relieved. It's so great that you came. I didn't know you were coming. 
said Hijui while walking towards the garden at the back of the castle. Yeah, your father invited me last time I came. I guess he wanted to give you a surprise. Answered Jax with a smile. You came for my birthday, right? So did you get me a gift? Asked the little princess with her eyes looking straight at Jax. Yes, I did. I'll give it to you tomorrow when everyone gives the gifts. He answered with a smile as he discovered what she wanted. Seeing her pouting since he didn't want to give the gift in advance, he smiled and took the lead, bringing her to the castle's pool room. Since I came here, I've improved my control over my water magic. I'll show you when we go in the pool. He said with a mysterious smile as they both went directly to the largest pool he ever saw in his life. With a curious look, she nodded, and they both rapidly got changed before entering the pool. Since he started training his control over his power with the bracelets, he created different forms with his magic, giving it more uses. He played in the pool with Hijui as he made various forms such as a geyser which threw them in the air, which was safe only due size of the pool. A water giant, a turbillion and he even changed the pool into a wave pool while creating an air bubble around both of their face, allowing them to breathe underwater. They played for a few hours until a servant came in and invited the two to go and eat. Jax wasn't surprised that the king knew that he was in the castle as it was still his castle, and if he weren't aware of it, it would have been a problem. The few hours that they played together allowed Jax to relax more than he had in a long time. After all, he had been training or doing jobs almost without stopping and playing with Hijui, without feeling the need to improve himself allowed him to relax a lot. He found that spending time with Hijui was quite relaxing, and he enjoyed it. Drying both Hijui and himself after getting out of the pool, they made their way to the dining room where the king was waiting for them. Hi, Jax. It's been a while. Said the king as he showed a smile on his face seeing both Jax and Hijui together. Yes, it's been a while, Mr. Toma. Answered Jax respectfully. The king had always told him to address him as such instead of calling him king. All right, let's eat. He added as the servant started to send plates of food to the table. So, how have you been since the last time you came here, Jax? Asked the king as they ate. Not bad. When I went back to Fairy Tail, the guild received the Magic Council request to solve the kingdom's monster horde attack. After that, I created a new magical item, and I've been training since then. I developed my magic a lot more. I also invited someone to live with me in the house I built, and we get along well. It's more fun with more people. Finally, I have been harassed by some noble who wanted to buy my land in Magnolia at a low price forcefully, but they left after showing them the royal family token. That's about it. Answered Jax while smiling at the king. There had been a lot going on since he went back to the guild, but if the guild weren't that active, it wouldn't be fairy tale. I see. Nodded the king as he noted down the thought to look at who was trying to buy the land at a low price forcefully. It wasn't simply because they tried to buy Jax's land but that if the noble was forcefully buying at a low cost, it might not have been the first time, and a lot of civilians might have been at the receiving end of that noble tyranny. Right. Have you bought a gift for Hijui for tomorrow? If not, I have prepared a gift for you to give her tomorrow. Asked the king as he frowned his eyebrows slightly. Jax was his daughter's only friend, and he didn't want him to get looked down upon by the rest of the aristocracy, who only looked at beauty and money. Well, I did prepare a gift, but what do people normally give her? Asked Jax as he wanted to keep his gift a surprise to Hijui. Well, normally the nobles give expensive jewelry, dresses or all kind of invitations. The more beautiful and expensive the gift they give is, the better they look in the aristocracy community. Normally their gift value is between 500,000 and 1 million jewels. Explained the king of Fiori to Jax. Is there anything magical in the gifts? Asked Jax again as he ate. He wanted to make sure that his gift was excellent and that no mishaps would happen. No, they are all aware that Hijui has a talent for celestial magic. Golden celestial keys are too rare and pricey, while silver celestial keys aren't worth enough to be used as a gift. As such, nothing magical is ever given to Hijui. Oh. In that case, that's fine my gift is perfect. 
said Jax with a confident smile on his face before he continued to eat. For the rest of the day, Jax and Hijui played in the castle together. All right. A time skip is coming soon. Chapter 44 That night, Hijui once again joined Jax as they both went to sleep. In Jax's case, he didn't mind since he was used to it now, while Hijui wanted to spend more time with Jax. The following day, servants woke Hijui early since she had to go and get dressed. She had to put makeup on, dress up and do her hair. Anyway, while she went to prepare, Jax went to train. He was now used to his daily training routine, and he felt better once he did it in the morning. At eight, the servants once again went to the room and invited Jax to go to the dining hall where the king, princess, and he would have breakfast. They had time to waste since people would start arriving by three in the afternoon. At this point, Hijui had already prepared. She wore a green and purple dress and a tiara with seven gemstones. The largest was in the middle of her forehead, green, while the six other stones were purple. The servants had also applied light makeup on her, which attracted attention to her eyes. After breakfast, the king went back to his study to continue working while the servants prepared the ballroom, and the princess took refreshing classes on how to act during the afternoon event. Finally, at three, the first carriage started to arrive at the gate of the castle. The three of them made their way to the ballroom while the servants went to welcome the guests. The king was seated on the room's main seat while the other two were at a corner of the room and talked while Jax showed her some of his magic. Soon enough, people started entering the hall. They first greeted the king before greeting the princess and presenting their young children to the young princess. They all hoped that one of them might catch her attention or at least become friends. However, they were bound to be disappointed as she was currently talking with Jax about magic, a subject she was very interested in. As time went on, more and more people arrived, and the hall started to get noisier. Nobles, business people, royals and all kinds of important people started to arrive in the hall. Most of them brought a few people with them, mainly their wife and their children. However, while the adults were happy with meeting other important people as it might help them in their projects, the children weren't thrilled since they couldn't easily approach the princess. Children from six years old until the early twenty tried to approach the princess with various intentions. However, it could be easily seen by everyone that their purpose was to get preferential treatment for whatever they were planning or to go out with the princess. After all, while she was still young, she was beautiful, had a significant if not perfect background and could be said to be the best girlfriend and wife they could imagine having. As such, as they saw her talking with Jax, they couldn't help being angry as they hated the fact that Jax was more successful than them. Of course, most of them had learned one way or another that Jax wasn't anyone essential and was merely a friend of the princess, which in their opinion, gave them the chance to get closer to the princess and get rid of their competition. This way, the ball continued until seven in the afternoon. Many people tried to intervene in the conversation between Jax and Hijui, but as she wasn't interested in any of them, all of their attempts failed. Finally, at seven, his previous employer, Miss Robin, came on stage and started playing music while people went to the hall center to start dancing. Immediately, many people came closer to the princess to invite her to dance. At this time, however, the princess didn't have the choice but to accept a nobleman's kid invitation since she had to do the opening dance since it was her birthday. Moreover, Jax didn't have the status necessary to do the opening dance, so she had to accept someone else's invitation. As this happened, Jax was amused at the reaction of the group of people between six and their early twenties as they were all sad to have missed the opportunity to dance with the princess as it might be a way for them to gain her favor. All in all, the ball went well. After the opening dance, the princess went back to Jax despite the young noble who tried to start a conversation after the dance. Unluckily for him, she was only interested in Jax, who had begun eating various pastries served to the guests. Next was the gift-giving ceremony. Everyone had a gift to give the princess, or it might seem inappropriate to attend the birthday party otherwise. The first one to give a gift was the king, the princess's father, who gave her a new dress followed by various nobles and the man from the magic council who mostly gave jewelry for her birthday. The other adults in the room gave a gift one after another. It was all the same kind of thing such as invitations, paid vacation, etc. Hijui, 
who received the gifts, responded very politely with a smile on her face. However, for those who knew her personally, they knew that she couldn't care less for any of those items. Finally, it was Jax's turn. Everyone at this time had known that Jax was a friend of the princess and a mage from the fairy tale guild since he was also a bit popular in the kingdom due to the various jobs he took and the job he took from a member of the nobility during his six-month bet with Laxus. As he approached the princess with a smile, he reached out to his shadow and took out the gift box he had prepared for the princess in advance. The package wasn't anything special considering that everyone who came here was rich and had bought this kind of box. As he handed it to the princess, she took it with a glint in her eyes as she had been waiting impatiently to receive Jax's gift. Opening the box, she took out a small bright green bracelet. The bracelet's color was the same as Hijui's hair, and when one looked carefully, one could see various motifs embroidered on the bracelet, which showed legendary creatures. In addition to the ten colorful beads, the bracelet itself was beautiful. For those noble ladies who came with their husbands, they immediately noticed that the bracelet was made of shadow arachne silk. With only this, they gave more attention to the bracelet as they could tell that such a small piece of silk would cost at least five or six million jewels to get. As Hijui showed a bright smile on her face, she immediately put on the bracelet. It showed the difference between Jax's gift and the others as she would simply have the servants take them to store after opening it. Jax, you talked about a magic gift previously. Is this it? Asked the king as he wanted to increase Jax's prestige through this gift. After all, for those nobles, the higher the price of the present, the better the gift. Yes, this is it. I asked someone to make the bracelet while I turned it into a magic item myself. Each bead contains my magic inside. The white bead contains air magic. Each bead can be used eight times before I need to recharge it, and the air magic allows the user to fly in the air for 30 minutes each time. The blue bead contains water magic and can create a water wall the red bead is fire magic which can create a fireball. Then there is the earth wall of the earth magic, lightning discharge of the lightning magic, shockwave of the sound magic, healing of the fairy magic, binding of the nature magic, light orb of the light magic and shadow shift of the dark magic. He took a breath before continuing. The user can use them without spending any magic power, and except for the fire, lightning and sound magic which contains spells equivalent to an average A-rank spell, the rest of the magic spells are equivalent to a top A-rank magic. With this, she basically can save herself if she were to be attacked by a weak S-rank mage or at least flee without problems. Explained Jax to the king and the princess next to him. She loved the bracelet even more after learning that she could use it to fly in the air for half an hour each time or for a total of four hours. Hearing this, the king opened his mouth without knowing what to say. It was the same for the various nobles, including those waiting for him to make a joke out of himself. After all, the gift he gave let the otherwise ordinary civilian use magic on par with strong A-rank mages and flee from weak S-rank mages. It was necessary to know that S-rank mages are the background of any guild and the reason they can stand tall in any kingdom. Some guilds don't even have those mages amongst their members. This bracelet can make a temporary top A-rank mage that can block a weak S-rank mage for a while. This is a life-saving magical artifact. Thought the countless members present in the ballroom who listened to his explanation. While most people in the room wanted to have a chat with Jax to buy a few bracelets or create a business out of it depending on the amount he could make, it was the gift-giving ceremony, and they had to stay calm. In this way, the ceremony continued but with a weird atmosphere as all the gifts were trash compared to what Jax gave moreover, everyone only wanted to talk with Jax while the princess didn't care about any present after receiving the bracelet. It was understandable as this was an artifact that countless would want to own. In the end, the ceremony finished rapidly as some servants went to take the gifts back while other servants brought food to the venue once again. As for Jax, seeing that he would get stuck by all those people, he slipped from the room at the end of the ceremony and went to walk in the castle. He wasn't interested in doing business with those people at all currently. Anyway, if they really wanted to buy some, they would find him at the Fairy Tale Guild. Chapter 45 At the end of the birthday party of Hijui, Jack stayed for a total of a week before going back to Magnolia. Before leaving, 
Jax had one last breakfast with the father and daughter duo. So, Jax, you are going back to fairy tale today. Asked the small king as he ate his breakfast. Yes. I have been away for a week, and there are a few things I need to deal with at my place. Nodded Jax while smiling. The three of them continued to eat until it was time for Jax to leave they accompanied him to the door. Well, Jax, you are welcome to come back any time you want. I'm sure Hijui will be happy with your visit. Also, don't worry about the people giving you some problems due to your bracelet, I have warned them. I have also investigated the man who wanted to buy your land forcefully. It turned out that he did it countless times, so he lost his title of nobility, his territory, and most of his wealth. You don't have to worry about him anymore. I hope you have a good day. He said as he patted Jax's shoulder. Thanks for the help. Answered Jax as he was thankful for the help he gave him. Also, if the two of you ever want to come and visit Magnolia or just Hijui alone, feel free to come to my house. It's not far from the fairy tale guild, and it has enough protection to stop the attack from an S-rank mage for a while. It also has various defensive measures. So, feel free to visit me. He said as he gave the two of them a token to his house, which would open the gate for the two of them. Really, I can come and visit? Asked Hijui with big eyes and a smile on her mouth. Yes. At that time you can even take a room just for yourself. I can always add more rooms and floors to the house, so it's no problem at all. Answered Jax with a smile. All right, I have to go. Thank you for the hospitality of the last week. Thanked Jax as he used his air magic to fly in the direction of Magnolia after receiving the goodbyes of the members of the royal family of Fiori. Three months later, X772 13th of September. Over the three months, a few things happened. Firstly, Jax worked a bit on the house. He wanted to increase the defenses in the air while also creating a separated environment. For the house's territory, Jax added wind and water magic on all the trees surrounding the house and used them as a base to create a barrier surrounding the house like a sphere. With this barrier, he could decide whether there would be rain in the garden or great winds. The barrier mostly helped keep everything in place in the garden and gave the best environment to relax or go in the pool. This barrier could make things weird, as when there was a downfall, the barrier blocked all the rain, and the people inside the border could see the rain bouncing back. They could keep relaxing in the sphere without being bothered by the wind and water. As for the defenses, he added some magic over the barrier of wind and rain. Instead of simply leaving the border as a defense against the natural elements, he added lightning and sound magic. These two magics could not only stop a thunderbolt if he were ever to be that unlucky and the sound from getting in or out of the sphere, but it could also electrocute and send a shockwave attack to the attacker automatically. It was the modifications he gave the house. Next was his blizzard vern which had just recently hatched. The newly hatched pet had been reinforced countless times by Jax before it hatched. It now had a purer bloodline, had a better magic affinity in the blizzard vern, which should only have ice element affinity, also had wind and lightning. The lightning was a total surprise, but it was nonetheless a great surprise. Next was an increase in overall defense both outside and inside the body. It also reduced the weight and strengthened the body of the monster. Overall, it had a better defense, speed, sharpness and intelligence while reducing the weight and creating a telepathic link with Jax, its master. The blizzard Vern was still a baby, but it ate a lot. Luckily, it was happy with magically charged lacrima of the ice, wind and lightning category. Overall, the price wasn't that high, considering he set the lacrimas himself. However, he had been surprised the day the blizzard Vern hatched. The monster which should have been completely white with two rows of black horns on his back along his spinal cord was completely different as if another breed. Instead, his new pet was pale blue in color with completely different scales. The scales of his pet he named Snow were perfect and the wings were made for high-speed movement. Even the horns on its back were different as there was only one line in the middle of its back instead of two. It could have been due to the various resources he spent on her, but she had certainly mutated towards what he could only believe was a dragon. It was not to say that she was a dragon but she seemed to have taken certain traits. Except for that, 
two things had a specific link together. Jack started to train his magic. However, this time it was not in his power but its use. Indeed, he felt that the way he used his magic was quite basic, and he could develop it a lot more. For this, he stopped doing jobs and instead started training his magic. Over the three months, he created new moves for his magic, and there were great results. Over the three months, he had managed to create two moves for each of his magic except his fairy magic which he produced three. For his air magic, there was projectile deflection and repulsion, which used air to either make the projectile sent to the side or sent right back at the attacker. Unfortunately, currently, it only worked with physical attacks and not elemental attacks. Next was water walking and water detection for his water magic. Previously he could already water walk, but now he could do so with proficiency. As for water detection, it was to detect everything within a specific range around him. For his fire magic, there was a fire shield and explosion absorption, which was a shield made of fire and the ability to absorb explosion around himself to a certain extent, of course. For his earth magic, earth communication allowed him to detect everything within a particular domain and earth pillar creation which could be used as both an attack and a defense. For his lightning magic, there was lightning absorption to absorb lightning and electrified surface, which Jax could use to electrify any surface. With the right intensity, it could cause various effects to the one who touched the surface. For his sound magic, there was voice projection and sound bullet, which were self-explanatory. In addition to this, there was wood golem and animal repulsion in the nature magic, which was also self-explanatory. The most crucial point was that the animal repulsion skill also worked with weaker monsters. As for light and dark magic, they had a light sword and light treads to make a sword or threads made out of light. As for dark magic, there was shadow requip and shadow armor. The first spell would allow him to be submerged in his own shadow and instantly wear any equipment he had in his storage, while his second spell would allow him to wear shadows as armor. Finally, for his fairy magic, he had managed to create three different uses for it. The first one was disease detection which would detect any disease in the body. The second spell was wound transfer which allowed him to move one wound to another person. Finally, there was anti-healing which could be used in battle along with wound transfer as it stopped someone from healing. Finally, the reason why his fairy magic had such significant progress was that he had decided to open a small clinic in the fairy tale guild. He decided to treat the people who came to him for free, which allowed him not only to help a lot of people but also to improve his fairy magic. Of course, it was free, but most people would leave something as thanks for helping them. As such, over the three months, he made quite a considerable amount of profit without even trying. Finally, as it was the 13th of September, the master decided that it was his birthday since he didn't know the right time. As such, across the guild building, there were decorations, and Kana had prepared a cake for his anniversary. Jax took this day to relax, and since it was his birthday, even Hijui had decided to make a trip to Magnolia to celebrate it with the other guild members. Indeed, after Jax gave her a token to the house, she came from time to time to play with Jax. Moreover, with Kana, it became livelier, and both Hijui and Kana also became good friends. Of course, in Hijui's mind, no one could replace Jax's position. So, for her birthday, they made a strawberry cake since these fruits were his favorite, and everyone in the guild celebrated with Jax. It was a rare day that they didn't touch any alcohol and partied without a brawl starting in the guild building. It was both because of Jax and because of the princess who was celebrating with them. Moreover, Laxus, which Jax hadn't seen in a while, made his appearance in the building with a gift which surprised him since he heard that he took a job in another kingdom and shouldn't be back for a while. And with this, two years and three months passed quietly. And, I know two year three months time skip is a lot but well nothing would happen and instead of doing small time skips I'm doing a big one and showing everything that happened in that time, no worries haha. Chapter 46 X774, 17th of December Over the two years, multiple things happened. First thing, Jax turned 10 years old while Kana turned 8 and almost 9 years old. Hijui, the same as Jax, also turned 10 years old and her birthday was a few months back. Over the two years, Jax continued to work hard. 
His clinic is now known across the kingdom of Fiori and even the kingdom of Seven and the kingdom of Selim next to Fiori. Civilians have renamed his clinic as the Fairy Clinic since he doesn't ask for money for helping people, and instead, people can donate if they want. He has no idea how the matter went out. Still, someone spread the fact that he actively collects celestial spirit keys and magical equipment. Whenever someone wants to leave a donation, they will either leave money, give a celestial spirit key that they found somewhere or give magical equipment. Due to this, he has over 3,000 celestial spirit keys. Unfortunately, they were only silver celestial spirit keys and one black key he had previously obtained during his second job. Not only the celestial spirit keys, but he also collected over 237 magical armors and 532 magical weapons. Now, because of this, he had to enlarge his first basement to store more equipment. However, across all of this, Jax noticed that the people who gave money mainly were the ordinary civilians who gave a little as thanks. Those who left celestial spirit keys were the richer civilians, while the magical armor and magical weapons were from nobles, business people and royalty. Indeed, he even healed the royalty of Fiori, which wasn't that surprising in the royalty of the Kingdom of Seven as the king had been poisoned. Moreover, from the various jobs he took over the two years and three months with his clinic's addition, he now possesses a fortune of over 237 million jewels. It is necessary to know that even with this amount, he still gave a large part to the kingdom to help various orphanages because, honestly, he had too much money, and he wanted to help them as well. Over his jobs, he only collected various magical items such as explosive lacrimas, which are used way too often by dark mages, and he left there the other various regular magic items as they weren't worth anything. As for the explosive lacrima, he collected over 20,000 of those. Over time, he stored them in the basement of his house. There wasn't any chance of exploding since he deactivated them all, but even so, he kept them in an underground bunker a kilometer under his house. It had been reinforced, and even if they were all to explode, nothing would be felt at the surface even the bunker wouldn't be too much damaged. Overall, he collected way too many items without even trying, and this situation happened. Jax continued to take on various jobs as it was the fastest way to improve his magical abilities. With this and the clinic, he improved his sound, nature, dark and fairy magic to three pearls. All the others still only had two pearls, but they were getting better each day. His magics changed the moment he inserted the third pearl into the groove. His sound, nature, dark and fairy magic allowed him to take the characteristic of the magic. In other words, when he took the aspect of dark magic, he turned into a dark human, and physical attacks would phase through his body. If he transformed into his sound magic, he would become almost transparent. With his nature magic, he looked like an ethereal tree as he became almost like a tree but could still not be hit by physical attacks. Overall, this was great magic that revealed itself at this point. However, he also learned that whenever he took the trait of the magic and transformed, he would become unable to use other types of magic. As such, it was both practical and impractical. Except for his progress, a few other exciting things happened. Kana was finally allowed to take on jobs, and Jax accompanied her on her first two jobs. In the first job, he took the lead and explained everything to Kana, while in the second job, she took the lead, and Jax helped her if necessary. It was pretty easy since whenever they met the client, they would be respectful due to his reputation in the kingdom. As such, he helped her do two jobs, and she immediately started doing them alone afterwards. Of course, the master said that he was showing her the ropes, but the master had also asked him to confirm whether she was ready for taking a job alone. After accompanying her on her two first jobs, he had to follow secretly during the third job to confirm whether she was ready. Moreover, the master had decided that he would be accompanying the recruits on their three first jobs, the same way he did with Kana to help them integrate better. However, he didn't mind at all and accepted since he became an S-rank mage of the guild and supported the guild from the back. Indeed, he became an S-rank mage when he turned 10 due to his magical power, his reputation and his maturity. As for the S-class jobs he took, he only took those coming from the kingdom of Fiori and not private ones yet. Due to his status as an S-rank mage, 
he had been allowed on various secrets, and it became common for Jax to enter the royal palace to either meet with Hijui or take a job from the king. He came so much to the royal capital that he now had his room in the castle. It also became the second room of Hijui as she never went over the habit of sleeping with Jax and would always join him whenever he came to the castle. As for when she visited his house. She still slept with him. As for Jax. He didn't mind and was happy to sleep with her. Even Kana joined him from time to time because why not? Finally, over the two years that went by, Jax joined Laxus on a few jobs. He was specializing in taking down dark guilds, and whenever Jax joined him, it was because they were stronger than expected, and he needed to have Jax as a backup. Anyway, during one of their mission together, Laxus and Jax saved two boys and a girl. They were named Bixlow, Freed and Evergreen. Those three all had magical power and decided to become mages. As such, Laxus created the Thunder Legion with the three as subordinates. They kept taking jobs that required them to take down dark guilds as Laxus had something against them, and the three new members didn't have them in their hearts as before being saved, they were going to be sold as slaves. Of course, Laxus invited Jax to be a temporary member as they were both aware that he didn't have time to join them on all of their jobs as he had his duties as an S-rank, the jobs from the royal family and his clinic operating. However, they both agreed that Jax would be their backup whenever necessary. It was necessary to know that since Jax managed to reach an S-rank mage's strength, Laxus increased his training to become an S-rank mage as soon as possible. As for the three new members, Jax accompanied them on their two first missions and followed them secretly on the third to confirm everything went well. Moreover, just like he offered Kana, the three new members also started to live in his villa. There was enough space, and he could increase it if necessary, so there were no problems on this side. As for Laxus, who had previously rejected living in his house, he changed his mind and started living there as well. So, along with him, there was the room of Kana and Hijui on the top floor, while there was the room of Laxus, Bixlow, Freed and Evergreen on the second floor of the house. Jax made a few modifications to their rooms according to their wishes and added their names on their doors. He also slightly changed the house token only to open their room door or the door of anyone who allowed them. Jax figured it would be helpful for everyone's privacy. Finally, on the 17th of December X774, a new member appeared at the Fairy Tale Guild's doors. It was a black-haired, dark blue-eyed young boy. He seemed to have problems with his clothes as he kept taking them off only to wear them back after a while when he noticed they were gone. Jax was slightly surprised at his behavior but considering everything strange in this world he figured it might be standard for the boy. It will go fast until X777. So. Yeah a large time skip, as you can see nothing much happened. Yeah that's it. Chapter 47 As the boy pushed the doors open, it attracted the attention of everyone in the guild. Jax, who had just finished healing a civilian who had come to him due to a broken bone in his arm, got up and went to the new boy. Welcome to Fairy Tale. What is your purpose in coming here? Asked Jax with a smile while looking at the black-haired boy. I want to talk with the master of the guild. He answered impolitely. Lifting an eyebrow at his attitude, Jax shrugged and pointed towards the master sitting on the counter. Right, you should wear your shirt back first. He said as he noticed the boy taking his shirt off before walking towards the master. Seeing the surprised expression of the new boy, Jax knew that he was simply another weird guy. Walking back to the table where he had been practicing his fairy magic, a guild worker brought his food and juice before he started to eat his lunch. As for the other boy, he had walked to the master while putting his shirt back on. You're the master of the guild, right? Asked the kid as he looked at the short master. Yes, what's your name, kid? Asked the master as he stopped drinking. I'm Grey Full Buster. Do you know of any way to reverse the effect of the iced shell spell? He asked as he seemed to take this topic very seriously. Iced shell. The only method I know to reverse the effect would kill the caster as well. Once someone cast the iced shell spell, they kill their target by encasing them into the ice with their body. They place a curse upon themselves to transform into ice for eternity in exchange for their target's life. Theoretically, 
the only way to cancel the Iced Shell spell and allow the caster to have their body back would be to have a mage able to break a curse and a healer with the strength of the four gods of Ishgar. Unfortunately, currently, there is neither a curse breaker nor a healer mage of this power in Ishgar. Maybe in the next ten years, but currently, there isn't anyone close to this level. Answered the master while shaking his head and giving a glance at Jax. He knew that Jax's fairy magic allowed him to heal and break curses. However, currently, he only had the strength of an S-rank mage and was far from the Ten Saints, not to mention the god of Ishgar, the four strongest wizard saints. Is there no one strong enough? Asked Grey with an unwilling look. Indeed, currently, there isn't anyone strong enough to do it. The strongest known wizard in healing and curse-breaking magic is only S-rank. He is still far from the Ten Saints and even further from the god of Ishgar. What do you plan to do now? Nodded the master as he heard Grey's words. Then, can I join Fairy Tale? Asked the boy once again as he remembered his teacher's words, which was to become powerful in his magic. Sure. Nodded the master as he gave a signal to a guild worker who went to get the magic stamp tool. Where do you want your guild mark and which color? Asked the worker as he prepared the tool. Dark blue, on my right pectoral. Answered the boy immediately as he took off his shirt completely. Well, all right. Answered the guild worker, a little weirded out that he took off his whole shirt when he only had to lift it. Can I now take jobs from the guild? Asked Gray as the only thing remaining from his teacher was to become stronger. Maybe if he became stronger, he would find another way to bring his teacher back. Not now. You will have to take a bit of training before starting. Jax. Answered the master before shouting Jax's name in the guild building. Yeah. Answered Jax as he got up and approached the master. I want you to train him to be ready to take jobs for the next two weeks. Said the master as he turned around and drank from his mug. I don't need him to teach me anything. I'm sure I'm stronger than him anyway. Replied Gray to the master as he refused to be taught by Jax. Jax is an S-rank mage of fairy tale and also one of the strongest members. He will teach you for the next two weeks before taking a job. It's a requirement of this guild. Answered the master immediately as he wanted to use this chance to help Gray integrate properly into the guild and make sure he was ready to take jobs. The new boy frowned but didn't rebuke as he turned to Jax with an unconvinced expression. So, what do we do now? Asked the boy aggressively. Go behind the guild to train. Answered Jax as he turned to walk towards the back of the guild. At the same time, hearing that there would be a fight between Jax and Gray, the other members got up and walked behind the guild. Jax had once trashed everyone in a fight, and it now became some ritual for new guild members. As for the members who went to watch the fight, they always felt better when Jax trashed another member as it showed that they weren't that bad either. As Jax was walking in front of Grey and leading him to an open space behind the guild, Grey took this chance to attack from behind with his ice. Unfortunately, as he slowly took his pose to create his magic and shouted the name of his magic, Jax didn't bother to turn around and had more than enough time to make an earth pillar that blocked the ice attack. He then sent a lightning bolt back at the black-haired boy who thought his magic had hit the target and felt good about himself. Falling to the ground, electrified by the lightning bolt, he tried to get up. Before he could, Jax created a water geyser and electrified it with the spell, Electrified Surface, which kept Grey down as he received shocks at a specific interval. During this small battle, which the members almost didn't see, Jax kept a hand in his pants pocket and looked bored as he watched Grey try to get up only to fall again. Seeing the boy more honest after being shocked a couple of times, Jax started asking questions. Is ice your only magic? Why yes. Answered the boy unwillingly while still being shocked. How long have you trained your magic? Six months. Do you know how to read and write? Asked Jax as he hoped, he answered yes. Yes, I know. Answered the boy, much to Jax's relief as he didn't want to teach someone to read and write. Okay. For the next two weeks, we will train here in the evening from six to nine. During the day, you will think about how to improve your magic and communicate with the other members as they will be able to give you some ideas. Right now, it's 1830. 
we will start training immediately. You attack, and I defend while I give you advice. Start. Said Jax as he stood on one side and waited for Grey to attack. This way, two weeks rapidly passed. During those two weeks, Jax trained three hours every day with Grey, and during the day, he would exchange a few words with the new guild member in between the civilians who came to get help. While Grey's power didn't change much during this time, his magic became much more diverse with everyone's support, and he could now use his ice magic more fluently. During the two weeks he had spent in the fairy tale guild, Grey became more active and lost his always gloomy aura. Although he was getting beaten up by Jax, he also learned from the other members that it happened to them and that he would get used to it. And sure enough, after two weeks of getting beaten into shape by Jax, Grey got used to it. Finally, as promised by the master, Grey took two jobs with Jax. As he always did with the other new members, he led the first job while Grey took the lead on the second one, with Jax helping him from behind. Finally, on his third mission, Jax followed secretly and let Grey do everything by himself. Once Grey finished the mission, Jax made his way back to the guild building and went to see the master. So, how was his first solo mission? Asked the master as he saw Jax stopping next to him. Everything's fine. Grey had some trouble here and there with the job but nothing major. Answered Jax as he took a glass of juice the worker gave him. He'll become a good mage in the future. Also, as always, for the housing, I'll let him stay at the house. At this point, I think I'll make this a building for the fairy tale guild members, and in the future, I'll make another house for myself if I want more privacy. It's not like I need money. Moreover, I'm currently trying to learn teleportation, and if I can understand it correctly, then I can have my house wherever I want in the range of my teleportation. Maybe I'll find a better neighborhood somewhere. Well, of course, I don't plan on moving yet. Continued Jax as he shared his idea of making the house he built a new dormitory area for the guild members in the future as it would allow them to save more money until they moved out. No problem, if you don't mind having more members living in the house in the future, it will help a lot with the new members. However, there is something we need to talk about. Said the master as he looked gravely at Jax. Chapter 48 It's been a while since you've been on jobs. Some of your magics are falling behind. You should go and train on jobs for the next year or two. Come back once every two weeks for your clinic and try to at least bring all of your magic to the S rank level. Said the master as he retook his mug. We have recently received an S rank job requests from the Magic Council and various kingdoms. It seems that the Dark Guilds are getting more and more active, and kidnappings are occurring in every kingdom. The kidnapping includes both young and old people, and they are either sold as slaves or experimented on. Continued the master as he gave a quick look at Jax, whose face was becoming colder and colder as he remembered the experiments he had been a part of when he was younger. Finally, some weaker dark guilds have received job requests to get your bracelets at any costs. It also made more dark guilds active. Laxus has been using this opportunity to take care of the weaker dark guilds with his Thunder Legion, but the stronger ones will be left to you and the S-rank mages in other guilds. The Magic Council has created a special job request for this which is to take down as much dark guild as possible. For every S-rank dark mage taken down, the mage will receive a million jewel plus their bounty. For every A-rank mage taken down, the Magic Council will pay 100,000 jewels plus their bounties. For every mage under the A-rank, you will receive their bounties plus 10,000 jewels. They can be caught alive or dead, at this point, it doesn't matter to the council. They only ask that you call them once you finish taking care of them. They will collect the corpses or living mage and information in their base. Well, that's that. The Magic Council has sent information on the location of a few dark guilds and will update us whenever they get more news. Finished the master as he looked at Jax intently. Understood, I'll take this job. It should also allow me to improve my magic rapidly. Answered Jax darkly as he took all the guild's information and a communication lacrima and left the guild building. One year ten months time skip yeah again. It's already been one year and ten months since I've started the dark guild job. I don't even remember how many guilds I took down or how many dark mages I've taken care of. 
Luckily, it seems that the dark guilds are truly becoming scarcer as dozens of guilds are searching for them to destroy them. I should soon return to Fairy Tale. In the beginning, I continued to come back every two weeks for the clinic, but since last year I don't have the time for that. It's been a bit more than a year since I've been at the guild. I wonder how everyone's doing. Right. Now that I think about it, it was my birthday last month. I completely forgot. I should be 12 years old now. Alright, let's return to fairy tale. Decided the muscular young man. He had pale blue eyes, long silver hair reaching the middle of his back with a scar on his left eye, which added to his charm. With him being five foot six tall, he looked a bit older for his age. Using his nature magic to sense the life force around him, he concluded that he had taken care of every dark mage in this dark guild. Next to him were two unconscious S-rank dark mages, as this guild was undoubtedly one of the strongest dark guilds. Luckily, four months after he started hunting down dark guilds, he had managed to install the third pearl on all of his magic, making him an S-rank mage in all ten of his magical powers. Moreover, following the year and six months of constant fighting, he managed to increase the magic power in his grooves. His magics were now about half full after all of this time. He figured that if he continued to work hard on his magic, he would install the fourth pearls in about two years. Moreover, by filling the fourth groove, he got closer to the weakest of the ten wizard saints. The reason he knew that, was that he felt he was already getting closer to the strength of the master. However, as he used his nature magic to sense the life force of the people around him, he managed to catch an extremely weak life force near the ocean. Having called the magic council to round them up, he tied them up immediately and left towards the weak life signal he perceived. As he arrived close to the shore, he saw a stranded wooden boat with a red-haired young girl inside it, unconscious. As he looked up, he saw that the ocean was agitated and with the wind and rain, it was a miracle that she managed to reach the shore. Approaching the girl, he was surprised when he saw that she was still awake despite her body's declining life force, meaning that she was significantly injured and should be unconscious. Do you need help? Asked Jax as he looked straight into her eyes. Of course, he only asked to be polite since even if she said no, he would help. He didn't want the girl to die after managing to get through this. Seeing her keep silent, he took this as an affirmation as he approached her while she tried to distance herself from him as she summoned a sword and pointed it at him. I do don't need age help. She said in a weak voice. At this point, you're going to die. You're bleeding from your abdomen, and you will surely get cold due to the rain and wind. If I don't help you, you'll die within an hour. Explained Jax in the softest voice, he could muster. W where will you be bring me? I, I don't want to gg go be back there. She said while shivering due to the cold and the fear. Here. He answered as he created a small wooden house with his nature magic in an instant right next to the small boat. He opened the door and started a small fire in the place as he showed it to her. Seeing the house and fire which appeared out of nowhere, she was stunned. However, the warmth could reach her as she dropped her sword. Jax then came closer and noticed that she was unconscious. Using his magic to lift her, he brought her into the small wooden cabin and took out a table to treat her. Seeing her clothes which were soaked, dirty and completely torn up, he took them off as he needed to heal her. She was bleeding from the abdomen, and the girl had a piece of metal stuck in the wound. He first started his fairy magic as he slowly treated her wound as he took out the piece of metal which had ruptured one of her lungs. After the minor treatment, he washed her rapidly with some warm water to clean her and dried her before bringing out a bed and tucking her in. At the same time, he took out a dress he had purchased a few weeks back as a gift for Kana and left it by the side of the bed as he prepared some food for both him and the red-haired girl who would wake up at any moments. Thanks to him strengthening his fairy magic, he could now inject life force into others to recover faster. And indeed, not twenty minutes later, the girl opened her eyes slowly as she looked at the utterly unfamiliar ceiling. As she was slowly getting her bearings back, Jack spoke from the small cabin. Are you awake? Put on the dress next to you and come here to eat. From your figure, it seems you haven't eaten for quite a while. As he spoke, an alluring smell came from the food Jax had just put on the table. 
However, as she remembered his words, her cheeks heated up as she took the covers to hide her body and gave a quick look at the dress that was next to her. Why did you do to me? She asked as slight tears started coming from her left eye. Seeing her react this way, Jax understood her concern immediately. Your clothes were dirty, wet and torn up already. Moreover, you had a piece of metal stuck in your lungs which stopped you from breathing properly. After you fell unconscious, I brought you in, healed you and tucked you into bed. What do you think happened? Asked Jax with a smile on his face as he teased her slightly. With a still red face, the girl looked at her body and noticed that the wound that hurt the most was now completely healed and sighed in relief. Put on your dress and come to eat. Said Jax once again as she saw her in a daze. Ha, all right. See can you turn around? She asked a little shyly. She was completely taken aback by his words and couldn't even keep the cold exterior she wanted to show in front of others. What are you shy about? I've already seen you in your underwear once. Teased Jax again. However, he still turned around and showed his back to the girl as she sighed in relief despite the red hue on her cheeks. She then rapidly used her equip magic to put on the dress. All right, I'm done. Said the girl as Jax turned around again. Indeed, you look pretty in that dress. Smiled Jax as he gave her a bit of confidence as she walked to the table and sat down to eat. So. What's your name? Asked Jax as the girl started to eat. My name is Urza, Urza Scarlet. She replied slowly. Chapter 49. It's a pretty name. Complimented Jax as he looked at Urza, who was still eating. So, how do you feel? He immediately asked after. I'm feeling better, and what is your name? She asked back. I'm Jax, simply Jax. He answered with a smile. I saw that you had a lot of scars on your body, and I guess that since you are wearing this eye patch, something happened to your eye. Asked Jax as he wanted to understand her situation. Yes. I was captured as a slave, and they whipped us. As for my eye, it was when I was captured. She explained with a sad voice. I see. I can heal your scars and your eye if you want. I may not look like much, but I'm one of the best healers on the continent. He continued with a smile. As for the people who kept you as a slave, were they part of a dark guild? Jax asked with a frown. Can you heal me? And I don't know if they are part of a dark guild, but they are trying to resurrect the dark mage Xeroth. Urza answered as she looked at Jax, with some doubts but still hoping he could heal her. Yes, and I will heal you. Can you tell me the location of the slavers? I'm currently on a mission to get rid of people like that. Smiled Jax as he asked her. Yes. It's in the ocean a few kilometers away. Can I ask why you don't heal your scar on your face if you are such a great healer? Asked the red-haired girl. Thank you. And the reason I don't heal it is that whenever I see it, it will remind me of who I was before and who I want to become. As for you, let's get you treated now that you're done eating. We can't let such a beautiful girl like you have scars for the rest of your life, can we? Asked Jax as he winked at her. Jax felt good teasing this girl he had just encountered. His heartbeat was slightly accelerating when she smiled and looked at him. As he looked at her eyes, he coughed slightly and said, All right, let's begin. Please take off your eye patch. I'll start by healing your eye. He smiled as he transferred everything on the table into his shadow storage and brought her to the bed. Nodding, she slowly took off her eye patch. Jax's face turned cold as he saw that her torturers had taken her entire eye off. He really couldn't wait to go and get rid of those dark mages. However, before this, he had to heal her properly. Putting a hand on her head, he slowly stroked her red hair giving her a reassuring smile as he concentrated on the place where her missing eyeball should be. With one hand in her hair to calm her, his other hand stopped above the injury as he used his fairy magic. To be even more certain, he transformed into his fairy mode. His body turned a shade of pink as his fairy magic increased in both power and control. On Urza's side, as she saw Jax reassuring her before treating her, her heart couldn't help but beat a few times faster, especially when he smiled at her. 
she had never had feelings for other people since she had never had the opportunity. However, seeing the person who saved her, took care of her, fed her and healed her from an almost certain death scenario, she couldn't help but look at him a little more carefully. It helped a lot that he was good-looking. With blue eyes and long silver hair, paired with that scar that added to his charm and his gentle smile, she blushed slightly. Slowly, a pink aura appeared surrounding his palm as Jax felt his fairy magical power decrease rapidly. Regenerating an eyeball wasn't easy at all. It needed a lot of concentration and time. However, he had once restored a limb, and while it wasn't the same at all as the eye was a lot more complicated, he didn't doubt that he should be able to do it. And indeed, twenty minutes later, as Jax concentrated intently and Urza was lost in her thoughts with a red hue appearing on her cheeks from time to time as she looked at Jax's serious face, the eyeball was completely regenerated and looked the same as her other eye. It wasn't possible to notice that Urza had once lost her eye. Taking his hand from her eye, he looked at her two eyes and slightly smiled while he took a hand mirror from his shadow and showed her her reflection. As she looked at her reflection in a daze, she slowly recovered and saw that her face was now unblemished except for the few scars she had on her face. See can you help me heal my scars as well? She asked a little shyly. She was embarrassed to ask him to heal her scars when he had already given her her sight back. Showing a gentle smile at Urza, who had red cheeks, he nodded. He helped her get up before asking her to take off her dress and lie down on her stomach as he would start healing her. With wide eyes and a bashful look, she slowly undressed after Jax turned around and lay on the bed with her two fists clenched. While she knew it was necessary to show him her body to let him heal her, she was also shy to show the man she barely knew everything about her. I'm ready, Urza said in a resolute voice as she looked at Jax, who turned around and looked at her back. She saw his frown as he looked at the various scars all on the back of her body. All right, I'll start from healing your neck to your feet. It might tingle a little, so please bear with me as it only means that it's healing properly. Said Jax as he prepared to begin. He still had enough magical power to heal her completely. It's fine I'm sure it hurt a lot more when they whipped us. Said Urza with a resolute tone. Yes, you are good to stay positive even if you went through that answered Jax as he smiled a bit at her and started the treatment. She had countless scars, which had both poorly healed or not healed at all. However, through Jax's fairy magic, everything disappeared as he slowly got down her back and reached her ass. Giving it a few extra glances, Jax felt his cheeks redden up as he continued his work on her legs and finally her feet. All right, your back is healed. Please turn around. Said Jax with a straight face even if his heart was racing. It wasn't the first time he had seen a naked girl as it happened from time to time when he healed girls, but his heart only raced when he saw Hijui or Kana in underwear or swimsuit. At that time, he had thought that it was because he had known them for long, and it was a normal reaction. However, seeing that he felt the same thing with Urza, who he had just met a few hours prior, he thought there was something more about it. He firmly decided to do some research on this when he went back to the guild. As Urza turned around, Jack started from her feet but took a glimpse at her face, which was looking at him intently. He only felt that his face heat up, and his heart race even more. At the same time, he noticed that Urza's face was also getting redder. Bringing back his attention to her feet, he started to heal her as he continued to rise until her hip, upon which his face completely turned red, of which he noticed that Urza's skin also turned the same color as her hair. Giving a few nervous chuckles due to a nervosity that appeared out of nowhere, Jax touched her skin near her erogenous region before continuing his way up, much to both their reliefs. Unfortunately, this wasn't all as he finally arrived at her two small bumps on her chest and her tiny pink nipples. Holding his breath, he concentrated even more. He rapidly made his way to her face as he finished healing every scar she had on her face. Finally, as he finished, he looked at Urza's face, who was just as flushed as his own and said, I'm done, get up, and I'll confirm that I didn't miss a scar. Closing her eyes, Urza gradually got up and turned around slowly to let him admire cough confirm that Urza didn't have any scars left on her white skin. All right, you can dress up. You're completely healed. Said Jax after a moment as he felt his dick here up slightly and get a bit harder. 
Dashing to her dress, she quickly wore it on before standing once again in front of Jax. If it can help, you are gorgeous. Said Jax with a gentle smile on his face. You mean with or without the dress? Asked Urza as her face, which had just begun to cool down, heated up again. And intending to tease her again, Jax brought his mouth to her ear ear and whispered, I like both. With a wink as he backed off. Chapter 50 All right. Can you tell me the location of the Dark Guild? I'll need to go and take care of them. I was originally going back to my guild, but since there is one last Dark Guild not too far away, I'll clean them up as well. Explained Jax as he took a seat. Yes. As I said previously, it is a few kilometers in the ocean from where you found me. Unfortunately, I don't know the perfect direction since I was stuck in a storm. However, the Dark Guild is building a tower, and you really can't miss it. They call the tower the Tower of Heaven, and its purpose is to resurrect the Dark Mage Xeroth. In the tower, there are a few hundred slavers who know magic and even the one I considered a friend is now loyal to Xeroth and continues to use the others to build the tower. The cute red-haired girl explained while gesticulating to explain better. All right. Do you have any friends in the tower that I have to pay more attention to? Asked Jax as he was planning on helping Urza's friends. Yes. My friends' names are Wally, S.H., Simon, Miliana, and... That's all. Answered the girl while looking down at her feet with a few tears coming out of her eyes. Understanding that she might have gone through something hard, Jax nodded. I see. I'll be sure to look for the four of them in the tower. Do you want to wait for me here to come back with them? Asked Jax as he wanted to know whether or not to leave the cabin there. Yes, I'll wait for them here. Will it take long? Asked Urza as she hugged herself while sitting down on the bed. No, it won't take more than a few hours. Reassured Jax as he came closer and hugged the girl who was closing in on herself due to fear. Don't worry. After tonight, everything will be over, I promise. Smiled Jax as he slightly patted her head before turning around and took off his shirt to change for another one as it had been torn up when he fought the previous Dark Guild. You. Are you from Fairy Tale? She asked as she saw the same mark on the back of Rob, the one who had helped her in the Tower of Heaven. EUM. Yes, I am. Do you know Fairy Tale? Jax asked back with a frown on his face. Yes, the old man Rob had the same sign on his back. It's just that it was slightly smaller. Even the color is similar. But, he died while saving us. Said Urza before turning sad again. Patting her head, Jax encouraged her. I'm sure that he was happy by his choice to die to protect you and that if he had to make the same choice again, he would do the same. As fairy tale wizards, we rarely regret what we do as everything we do is to better our magic and protect our family. Alright, you stay here I'll go and get rid of these guys. Now that one of our fairy tale members died there, it became personal. Said Jax with a grim look on his face. A moment later, Jax disappeared from the cabin as he arrived at the ocean. The first thing he did was to submerge into the sea as he turned into his water form and used his water detection magic which would allow him to detect anything in water within a specific range. Thankfully, by changing into his water form, he could easily see everything within almost 10 kilometers. A few minutes later, he finally found a relatively large piece of rock. He didn't doubt that this was the Tower of Heaven named by Urza as there wasn't anything else that went out of the water in his surroundings. Accelerating as fast as he could, Jax merely took two minutes to surf across the sea at his highest speed possible. As he came closer and closer to the tower, he was surprised by the size of it. However, what surprised him more was that some shield created an illusion to hide the building. Arriving at the tower entrance, Jax was ready to take it on alone and destroy it if necessary. He first worked on tying all the hidden boats to the tower with his water magic before reverting to his previous appearance. Growing a tree from the tower's base, he rapidly grew branches and twigs all around the building to close any openings and prevent anyone from escaping from the tower. It didn't take more than a few minutes before the tree surrounded the entire tower. He then dived down into a shadow in the tower as he activated his night vision. 
At this point, everyone in the building was ultimately in panic as all the openings closed up and the previously bright sky was entirely blocked by a tree that grew out of nowhere. However, the alarm was only beginning as they started to find more and more slavers' corpses. After killing a few, Jax confirmed that they were from a dark guild as they had the mark and started to hunt them all down. He didn't plan on keeping much of them alive as they were slavers, they killed a member of Fairy Tail, and they were dark mages. They were born to be against Jax. On the first floor, Jax killed the dark mages and released the slaves before moving on to another floor. On the floor, he had verified that no one fitted the description of Urza's friends. Just like the first floor, Jax took twenty minutes to clean the entire floor once again. At this time, the dark mages were all fleeing to the upper levels as the panic had now spread all across the Tower of Heaven. Luckily, by this time, there weren't any strong dark mages who met Jax, so he was fighting and releasing prisoners uninterrupted. It continued until the sixth floor, where he finally met resistance from an S-rank dark mage who was handling this floor. However, with Jax's speed and various means, Jax blocked his firestorm attack with a water shield and hid with the generated mist. He then used his dark magic to equip a sword that stabbed the S-rank mage in the heart from the back. He was never one to talk and answer questions during his fights. When he fought with his life on the line, he directly went for the kill with 100%. Moving on from the Dark Mage, he continued to the seventh floor, where he found traces of Urza's friends. However, seeing that they weren't in any danger at this time, he left a branch not far from their respective room, which could detect enemies and act by itself before moving on to the eighth floor, where he found another Dark Mage. This enemy was a little bit more skilled, but weak s rank Dark Mages already didn't pose any threat to Jax as he killed him and moved to the ninth floor and finally the tenth floor where the supposed boss of the Tower of Heaven was living. And indeed, as Jax arrived on this floor, he was presented with two s rank Dark Mages and a blue-haired young boy with a tattoo on his right eye who excluded traces of evil. Who are you, and why did you attack this tower? Asked an s rank member with hate in his voice. Not bothering to answer, he created two clones made of light and immediately rushed towards the enemy. Taking advantage of their lack of focus due to their talking, Jax's attack took them by surprise. W.H. Before the other S-rank mage tried to talk, Jax used his magic and started to attack. Anyway, in this battle, there would only be two outcomes, either they died, or he died. In this way, it didn't make much sense to argue with them. With a swing of his hand, a projectile of water rushed towards the second S-rank mage who was trying to talk. According to his understanding of the Dark Guilds, the stronger often spoke first due to dominance or something like that. As such, except for the young boy sitting behind the two S-rank mages, the wizard on the right was the weakest and thus the best opportunity for a breakthrough. Seeing him attack, the three, including the young boy, started to fight back. Evading the spells to the side, Jax used his water geyser spell right in between the three mages, which erupted a lot of water everywhere in the room and allowed Jax to use his new magic spell, water teleportation. While this spell was exceptionally helpful, he couldn't teleport very far to travel but was perfect in battle. He even turned back into his water form as it allowed him to take his opponents by surprise when one tried to stab him with a hidden knife, only to receive a water blade that cut his arm. Creating various animals made of water to attack surprised the three dark mages, and Jax took this time to kill the strongest of the two S-rank mages. He then turned towards the young boy of his age. Jax didn't feel a tiny bit of remorse in trying to kill him. He didn't doubt that this was the friend who had turned, Urza was talking about. However, from the air the boy was currently releasing, he was truly evil. Jax even made sure to use his fairy magic to verify whether the blue-haired boy was controlled, and he indeed was. However, after using his fairy magic, all traces of control disappeared, and he still had traces of evil in him which had nothing to do with exterior forces. The most important point was that despite not being controlled by anything, he was still trying to kill him. That was who he truly was. As he approached the young boy who sent a spell to kill him, Jax teleported on the boy's right. Since he thought he was behind him due to Jax's previous teleportation attack, he turned his head towards the left to look behind him, only to find nothing but a sword handle that crashed in his head, knocking him out cold. 
After taking him down, Jack sped up and fought the last of the three mages. He released all kinds of magic, ranging from his fire to his lightning and sound magic to disrupt him, before finally managing to kill the last S-rank mage. He then bound the boy before he woke up and left him there as there as he didn't want to bother about him anymore. He would hand him over to the magic council and that would be the end of it. He didn't plan on saving him or anything. He tried to kill him and not killing him was already overextending his kindness. Changing shirt. That was a plot armor and a massive one at that, uh huh. As for Rob having the mark at the same place, honestly, I only noticed now. Chapter 51 Releasing his nature magic in the entire tower, Jax confirmed that he didn't miss any dark mages in the building and immediately took out a communication lacrima to contact the magic council. They had to send people over immediately to take care of the situation. Hundreds of dark mages, a total of four S-rank dark mages, thousands of slaves, and a group that had been trying to resurrect the legendary wizard Xerif in a particular tower. Jax. What can I do for you on this fine evening? The magic councilman asked with a good attitude since Jax had taken down hundreds of dark guilds since he started hunting them down. I found another group of dark mages. However, they are slightly different. There are hundreds of dark mages, including four S-rank dark mages. The most important thing, however, is that there are thousands of slaves here in this tower, which they call the Tower of Heaven. Their goal is to resurrect the dark mage Xerif supposedly. Anyway, can you send a few hundred people over with transportation? I am seven kilometers from the coast, near Akane Beach. However, there is an illusion around the tower. When you get closer with your men, call me, and I'll send a signal in the sky. Explain Jax with a grave face. Understood. We will prepare everything to bring the survivors out of this place and bring back all the evidence of the Tower of Heaven before destroying it. As for the Dark Mages, I guess there shouldn't be many alive, right? Ask the Magic Council worker. Well, you know I have problem with slavers and people who experiment on others. Moreover, I was alone against all those guys and couldn't afford any mistakes. There is a lot still alive, but they either lost a limb or are on the verge of death. The faster you arrive, the more chance to get them alive. I also kept their leader alive. Answered Jax with a dark look. All right, we have a few teams not far away will be there within the next 20 minutes. Don't let anyone enter the room where the leader lived. Added the man before rapidly closing the communication lacrima to order his teams to move. On the other side, Jax once again used his communication lacrima to call the master at Fairy Tail. Oh. It's Jax. It's been a long time since you've been to the guild. What can I do for you today? Asked the master with curiosity since Jax rarely needed help. Well, I'll be coming back in a few days to the guild. Also, I called this time because I found information on the member Rob you mentioned to me a few years back. I'm afraid I have bad news. Said Jax as he shook his head with a sad face. Seeing the face of the master, who seemed to have been aware that something happened to his former teammate, he asked Jax to continue. He was captured and turned into a slave before being forced to build a tower called the Tower of Heaven. I just took care of all the dark mages in the tower. Rob died while using his magic to protect a few kids during a rebellion in the tower. He saved their lives but was hit by fire magic and used all of his magic to protect the kids behind him, resulting in death. I'm sorry, master. Jack said as he saw a few tears on the older man's face, who rapidly chugged down one drink after another. A hey, alright, I see. Thank you, Jax. I'll see you in a few days. I have to notify poor Leusica. Said the master who tried to hold back the sadness in his voice before immediately hanging up. Jax wasn't that surprised as he sealed up the room where he fought the two S-rank mages and the kid before going down to meet Urza's friends. Walking down to the seventh floor, Jax arrived in front of four rooms next to each other. As he walked to the leftmost room, he knocked on the door only to have a girl the same age as Urza open the door in front of him. Hi, are you Miliana? Asked Jax with the kindest smile, he could muster. Hi, yes, I am Miliana. Who are you? Asked the young girl with a curious look. 
I was asked by Urza to come and get you out of the tower safely. Explained Jax. Urza? That traitor? But she just left today. Said Miliana with her brows in a constant frown. As Jax was about to explain, a big man appeared behind him and started to explain to Miliana that everything Jalal had told them about was a lie and that Urza had to leave for their security since she was forced. Moreover, his story collaborated well with Jax's presence in the Tower of Heaven since Urza was the one who told him about the four of them. Right, before I came here, Urza asked me to bring you back with me since she wanted to meet the four of you. Of course, it's also fine if you would rather go back with the members of the Magic Council, they should be coming soon. Just as Jax was explaining, his lacrima crystal immediately lit up, and Jax made a hole in the side of the tower before releasing the brightest beam of light he could make into the air. All right, we see it. We will be coming as soon as possible. Please open the entrances. Said the man before once again closing the connection between the lacrimas. Well, I'll come with you. Said Simon which was soon followed by Miliana and the other two young men. All right. We'll be leaving as soon as the members of the Magic Council arrive. Nodded Jax as he started to manipulate the tree around the tower to lower and return to the bottom of the ocean. Well, Jax, thank you for the hard work. As always, you can leave everything here to us, and you can leave first. All right. Also, I need to bring those four with me. They were slaves in the tower who were friends with my informant. I promise to bring them back. Explained Jax. All right, I just need your names, and you can go. Nodded the man before taking their names. All right, let's go. Said Jax as he brought the four friends of Urza with him. As they arrived at the tower's exit, Jax controlled a boat to move to their position before having everyone seated in it. Wait. How come there are still boats left? Jelal told us that Urza destroyed all of the boats before leaving the tower, leaving us here to fend for ourselves. Exclaimed Miliana, who was a bit slow on the update. From the moment Urza told me about the tower and the four of you, you should have realized that she didn't want to leave you behind. So, why would she destroy the boats? Asked Jax as he shook his head, wondering whether she would be fine in the future. All right. Hang tight. I'll accelerate the boat for us. Said Jax as he controlled the water around the boat to accelerate it towards the coast where he had found Urza. As they arrived, Jax saw from afar the small cabin made of wood. So, he pointed the house to the four friends as he made himself another place for the moment. He didn't doubt that the five of them had some things to talk about. Besides, he was getting tired and could take a nap. As he entered his newly built cabin, he took out a bed and installed various defenses and detector traps all around the place before falling into a deep sleep. Due to the two consecutive dark guilds he had taken care of, he had been awake for almost thirty hours and was truly tired. A few hours later, someone activated his detection traps. It woke Jax up as he immediately took a stand, ready to fight. However, as he scanned his surroundings, he noticed that the four he had saved and Urza were standing outside the cabin. Walking outside, he looked at them. It seems like it went well. So, what do you guys plan to do from now on? Asked Jax as he saw the five of them in a line in front of him. Do you think I can join Fairy Tail? Me, Miliana and Simon want to join. As for SH and Wally, they want to go and travel as they have people to find. Explained Urza. Sure, the three of you are welcome to join Fairy Tail. I was originally going back there, so I'll take you guys along. As for the two of you, I hope you can find who you are looking for. Said Jax as he nodded his head at Urza's request. Well, let's go. We will leave now and arrive at Fairy Tale in a few hours. Said Jax as he turned and stretched himself, inadvertently showing the scars on his back. Taking down the two temporary cabins, Jax brought the five of them to Akane town and gave Wally and SH some money so that they could live freely for a while before taking the three others and flying in the direction of Fairy Tale. It was a lot faster than taking the train, which would stop at every town. Chapter 52 After a few hours, the four finally arrived at Magnolia. Jax, however, didn't stop at the gate as he wanted to get to Fairy Tale as soon as possible. 
It had been a long time since he saw the guild, and he missed Kana very much. While he had met Hijui a few times over the years since a few dark guilds had established their base in the royal city, he had been away from Magnolia and didn't have time to stop at Fairy Tail due to a mount of dark guild across the continent. Due to this, he hadn't met Kana for a while. They talked from time to time through the communication lacrima, but it wasn't the same. As the four arrived in front of the gate, Jax couldn't stop his excitement as he pushed the gate open with a lot of noise. Behind him, the three followed closely. Jax. Ha ha ha, Jax is back. Shouted a member as cheers suddenly resounded across the guild building as a member fired magic in the air. However, it wasn't long before a brawl started as someone threw a spell on someone else. Laughing a bit, Jax walked across the guild building with the three future members following behind as they looked shocked at the crazy guild members. Whenever an object came close to them, however, a burst of air would appear, and Jax would reflect the thing directly in the face of the person who threw it. As he was coming closer to the bar, Jax was tackled by Kana, who had been eating and drinking by the bar. As soon as she saw him appear in the guild hall, she stood stunned, and as he approached, she couldn't help but hug her first friend and the one she cared the most for. Hey, Kana. It's been a long time. Smiled Jax as he tightly hugged her back. Mm. Why didn't you come back sooner? Asked Kana with slight tears of joy appeared in her eyes. Well, you know. There were way too many dark guilds across the continent, and almost all of the S-rank mages across the continent had to take part in this hunting mission. But it's finally done now. I'll stay at Fairy Tale for a while. Smiled Jay as he used his thumb to dry the tears coming out of her eyes gently. Hmm. We'll be sleeping together tonight. Said Kana in an irrefutable tone. All right. Nodded Jax happily as he also missed sleeping with other people. He would always feel better this way. I'll tell Sister Hijui to come as well tonight. She'll be happy to learn that you are back. Added Kana as she held him tighter. No problem. Nodded Jax again. Right, let me introduce you. Said Jax as he turned towards the three people behind him. Kana, this is Urza, Miliana and Simon. They will be joining Fairy Tale from today. Guys, this is Kana. She has been a member of Fairy Tale for five years already. Smiled Jax as he introduced the four people to each other. Nice to meet you. Nodded Kana as she looked at the three new members. Nice to meet you too. Answered the group of three simultaneously. Right, Kana. Is the master here? I have to report and introduce them. Asked Jax once he saw that the greetings were over. Yes, he is in his office. Said Kana as she pointed towards it. All right, thanks. I'll be back soon. He said while he passed his hand in her hair. Walking up the stairs with the three future members, Jax made his way to the office, where he knocked on the door. Who is it? Asked the aged voice of Makarov. Master, I'm back. I also brought back three people who would like to join Fairy Tale. Said Jax loudly through the door. All right, come in. Answered the master with a cheerful voice. Pushing the door, Jax looked at the pile of paper on the desk and the mug full of alcohol next to the master. However, compared to regular days, Jax didn't say anything about his drinking behavior and introduced Urza and her friends. Master, they are the members I was talking about. She is Urza. He said as he pointed to the red-haired girl. She is Miliana. While pointing to the brown-haired girl. And the boy his Simon. At the same time, swinging his head towards Simon, who was behind him. They were captives of the Tower of Heaven, and I met Urza as she managed to get out. Afterwards, I heard about the tower from her and destroyed the Dark Guild there, saving those two at the same time. Added Jax as he simplified the process. Well, I see. Answered the master while nodding at Jax, who went to the side. Are the three of you sure that you want to join Fairy Tale? Asked the master as he became serious. Yes. Answered Urza, which was soon followed by the two others. All right. In that case, we will give the three of you the fairy tale guild mark, 
and you will formally join Fairy Tale. Congratulations! said the master as he smiled kindly at the three new members of Fairy Tale. Where would you like to receive the guild mark? asked Jax as he took the magic stamp tool from the desk of the master and approached the three of them. This time, Simon was the first to walk in front. I would like to have it in green on my right pectoral. Said Simon as he lifted his shirt just enough to show the area for the guild mark. After giving the guild mark to Simon, Jax turned towards the two other new members. Miliana came forward and showed her back to Jax. I would like to have it on my lower left backside in color black. She said gently as she lifted the back of her shirt to show her lower back to Jax. All right. Nodded Jax as he used the tool to put the mark. Here, it's done. Said Jax a moment later while smiling at her. What about you? Asked Jax as he looked at Urza, who was silent in the background. I'd like to have it in silver on my left arm. Answered Urza shyly as Jax approached her and held her arm to imprint the new guild mark. Well, welcome to Fairy Tale. Added Jax as he finished giving the guild mark to the three girls. Upon seeing them nodding, the master interrupted. Well, since this is done, go back to the guild hall to meet with your colleagues. I still have some things to talk about with Jax. He said as he sent them out of his office. Seeing them leave with a smile while Urza was looking at her new tattoo, the master lost his smile as he looked at Jax. How was the mission? He asked with seriousness. It went pretty well, but it was tiring. I don't know how many guilds and dark mages I took down, but it easily goes above a hundred dark guild and ten thousand dark wizards. I have no idea how there can be so many across the continent. Except for that, my magic got stronger across this mission. I should have around the strength of a top S ranked mage while coming closer to the ten wizard saints weakest. However, I can tell that it's getting harder to improve my magic. Answered Jax as he took a seat in one of the few chairs in the office. Yeah, it happens to every mage. What do you plan to do now? Asked the master as he looked at Jax. I plan on taking a break of a few months. This last year and ten months have been way too hard, and I'm exhausted. I'll relax for a bit and take the new members on two jobs each before leaving them to themselves. Answered Jax as he wanted to spend more time with Kana. Well, that's good. Gildart's left on a long job this time so that you will be the only S-class mage in the guild. Next month I plan to take Laxus and a few more mages to take the S-class trial. I'll have you stay in the guild to look over it while I'm gone. Said the master as he looked at Jax. All right, no problem. I don't plan to leave for at least half a year this time. Nodded Jax. Perfect. This time you should be getting huge pay for the job you just took, so use this time to relax. Maybe open the clinic a few days each week and make some more bracelets. The guild members have bought them all since you left. Smiled the master as he gave him some jobs. All right, I'll do that. Answered Jax as he turned around and left the office. He would offer the three new members to live in the guild house he built and enjoy the day with Kana, who was undoubtedly waiting for him. Going down the stairs and arriving in the guild hall, which had already stopped fighting while welcoming the new members, Jax walked down and sat next to Kana while the guild worker prepared him some food. So, do you have another mission from the master? Asked Kana as she looked hopefully at Jax. Deciding to mess with her a bit, he nodded. I do. He just gave me a new mission which will have me occupied for the next half a year. What? exclaimed Kana while showing a sorrowful face. Yeah. The master had me stay in the guild for the next six months so that he can take some members to the S-class trial. He also wants me to open the clinic and make some more bracelets. Smiled Jax fondly at Kana while taking her hand and squeezing it a little. Hearing Jax's words, her sad face turned happy all of a sudden as she once again threw herself in Jax's arms with a bright smile on her face. That's great. I won't be taking any jobs for the next six months in that case. She said in Jax's ears in an excited voice. Perfect, let's enjoy some holidays. Right, how's Snow? I haven't seen her for a year already. Did she grow bigger? 
Asked Jax as he hadn't brought his pet to his mission since she was still too young. Yes. She became big enough to ride on. However, she won't let anyone ride her until you do, I think. Answered Kana. She is living in the back of the house. However, from time to time, she will leave to the mountains to hunt and train. Her body has also changed a bit since she now looks a bit more like the dragons in Legends. Smiled Kana as she explained the changes of snow. Well, that's good. Blizzard Vern is the evolution of wyverns which are the descendants of dragons. Blizzard Vern is also the closest race to dragons in this world. I wonder if there's a chance to help her evolve into a real dragon. Smiled Jax as he liked the thought of it. From now on, there will be a lot of time skip cause there's not much happening. P.S. For Urza's different color of the mark. There was a rumor going on a while back that the characters had the hair color of their crush love as the guild mark color. Well it only worked for a few but I loved the idea so here it happened. As for those who gonna cry. Come on it's just a color. Chapter 53 At night, Jack sat in the bath as he completely relaxed. He hadn't had the chance to do so since he always had to think about whether a dark mage would suddenly creep upon him. However, now that he was back, he could enjoy life once more. He spent half an hour in the bath before he got up and changed into his pajamas bottoms and went to bed. He hadn't gotten a night of good sleep for a long time, and today was the day he would enjoy his bed once more. Going under the sheets, Jax yawned as he was ready to fall asleep. However, the next moment, he showed a smile as he felt Kana and Hijui enter the room and get on both of his sides. Spreading his arms, both of them were surprised to feel his arms under them. However, a moment later, Jax brought them closer to him and hugged them both on his sides as he kissed them on the cheek. Giving a quick look at both girls, he saw a red blush on their faces as he smiled a bit more. He had missed them a lot. Simultaneously, both girls came even closer to him and rested their heads on his shoulders with an arm on his body. Hugging them a bit more tightly, all three of them rapidly fell asleep as they enjoyed the proximity they had with each other. The following day, Jax didn't bother to get up for his training as he had decided to take a month of rest, something he hadn't done in years. Instead, he looked at the two girls who were sprawled on his chest with a smile. They each had half gotten onto him during their sleep, and their heads were close to his. Due to his small movements, as he got more comfortable, the two girls slowly woke up and looked up only to see Jax staring at both of them. Good morning. He said, smiling towards the two girls. Gee good morning. They replied bashfully as they tried to distance themselves from him. However, before they could, Jax softly hugged them again. I missed the two of you during my mission. Smiled Jax as he looked at them gently. With a red hue appearing on their cheeks, they looked away from Jax. I missed you too. Answered both girls at the same time. Seeing them looking so cute, Jax couldn't help but hug them before giving them a quick kiss on their mouth one after. A moment later, Jax opened his eyes wide, not believing what he had just done. However, compared to him, the two girls were only stunned for a moment before they looked at each other and replied to him with a kiss. Seeing and feeling their action, Jax smiled brightly while the two girls buried their heads on Jax's chest. In this way, the three of them spent an entire morning simply cuddling and giving a small kiss here and there as they wanted to refresh their memory of the feeling they felt. Next week, Jax accompanied the new members to complete their first jobs before the master left the guild. Simon and Miliana took some low-rank jobs in the surroundings of Magnolia as they were a lot weaker than Urza, who came back with them. As for the latter, Jax accompanied her on a job the second day she joined the guild. Due to her already high strength, she was allowed by the master to take B-rank missions. As such, the two of them took the train and left Magnolia behind. The job was pretty simple as they had to take care of a group of bandits in a village's surroundings. Along with their mission, Jax and Urza chatted a lot, and they got closer quickly. Moreover, during the night, as they camped, Urza joined Jax's bed in the temporary wooden house he had made. Flashback Hearing the sound of knocking on the door, Jax lifted an eyebrow in surprise. Come in. He said as he watched the red-haired girl open the door shyly. 
Can I sleep with you? I've been having nightmares of that place since I came out. Asked the girl with her head hung down, looking at her feet. Sure, come here. Answered Jax as he didn't mind at all. He was used to sleeping with someone, and he prefers that to sleep alone. Nodding her head, she quickly climbed on the bed next to Jax and took one side of the bed as Jax was on the other. That night, they talked a lot about her experience and nightmares as she talked about everything to Jax, who listened to her. In the end, as she got more sleepy as it was the middle of the night, she got closer to Jax, and he hugged her in her sleep as he saw some tears flow down from her eyes as she remembered her past in the Tower of Heaven. End of flashback. From that day, Urza came more and more often to his bed to sleep at night. The first time she did so in the mansion back in Magnolia, she was surprised to see both Kama and Hijui already sleeping with him. However, while she was hesitating, Jax invited her to come, and they all slept peacefully. From that day, his bed changed from three people to four. For the next six months, until the beginning of April X-777, a lot of things happened. Firstly, Jack's relationship with the girls improved tremendously. He so in times with the girls and went to dates with them. They spent some time kissing while Jax also helped them relax by using his fairy magic while using massaging skills. Except for his personal life, Jax received his payment from the Magic Council. In total, he easily surpassed a hundred million jewels, and he decided to use this money on essential things. Firstly, under the guild member's incentive, they bought a lot of alcohol with his money, and they stored it in his cellar, which became full soon after. Besides, Jack spent some time with Snow, his female mutated blizzard Vern. After such a long time, she already had the strength of an S-class mage, and after growing up, her body was surprisingly big, a lot bigger than the one he had killed during his mission. Moreover, he was surprised to hear from Snow that with some chance, she would be able to one day evolve into a dragon as long as she managed to purify her blood and get some opportunities. Hearing this, Jax bought her five dragon blood leaves. Each leaf was worth 10 million jewels and could only be taken by a monster with dragon blood as it would improve their bloodline, purifying it. The monsters could only take these scarce herbs five times in their lifetime, and the reason they had such a fantastic effect was that they had been washed by the blood of the dragons in the past. Simply with this method of growing, it was possible to see that the herbs were limited, and they would become even rarer in the future unless a dragon reappeared. Along with the dragon blood leaves, Jax bought her the ice dragon blood. This blood had been sold to Jax for 50 million jewels by the Magic Council. This blood had been found a hundred years back by the council and kept in case that there was some research value. However, until this day, the blood hadn't been used, and the magic council, who hadn't thought that so many dark guilds would be destroyed, were tight on finances. As such, they sold the dragon blood to Jax, regaining some money that would allow the council to function correctly. After giving Snow the ice dragon blood, she could feel that there were chances for an evolution. As such, Jax personally sent her to Dragon Island. An island ruled by dragons hundreds of years ago that wasn't accessible to humans due to the island's dangerous currents. According to a few books he read on this island, the island had been the paradise of dragons in the past, and maybe Snow could find what she was looking for, a way to evolve into an actual dragon. Once Jax did this, he often contacted Snow to ensure her safety while returning to his previous business. He reopened the clinic in the guild hall as he had to be present when the master was gone. With the clinic's news reopening, countless civilians, mages, mercenaries, business people, nobles and royalty came to meet him. Over the months, Jack spread his and fairy tale reputation across Fiori, Selim, Bosco, Seven, Ministral and the Iceberg Kingdom. He was already known as one of the best healers on the continent, if not the best. However, the clinic reopening and the increased reputation came many gifts as thanks for healing them. Silver celestial keys, magic armors, magic weapons, random magical objects along with some money was often given as thanks. However, with his attitude to treat everyone even if they didn't have anything to pay with, Jax's reputation as the fairy's hand spread. It was both due to being a fairy tale member and due to his magic being named fairy magic. 
Finally, in the free time he had, Jax made a lot more magic bracelets, selling them to the guild members and simply storing the excess under the mansion, next to the safe of explosive lacrimas. Finally, he improved the house's defenses, allowing it to resist an S-rank mage attack easily. On the side of the trial for the S-rank mage, Laxus was the one to complete it. He had been training a lot harder thanks to Jack surpassing it, and he had become one of the youngest S-rank mages on the continent. Chapter 54 From the moment the master returned, Jack started doing jobs once again. He was still doing his best to improve and develop his magical power. As such, beginning from April until July, Jax completed an extreme amount of S-rank jobs released by the kingdoms. Either taking down dangerous beasts, rescuing nobles or escorting the royal family, he did all kinds of jobs for the country. However, in the middle of July, as Jax was leaving for another mission, he met a poor girl begging for food from a merchant who merely kicked her aside. Seeing this, Jax couldn't help but go forwards and help the girl. He had a lot of money and often gave some to orphanages in the past six months. Gradually, it became customary for him to help children who hadn't had his chance to be rescued by other people. So, seeing this, he went ahead to help the girl. Walking to her side, Jax helped the girl get up. Giving her a quick look, he couldn't help but frown. She wore a dirty, patched dress and didn't have any shoes. Her messy light blue hair covered her face as she didn't look up as she was slightly trembling under Jax's touch. As he felt her hand as he lifted her, Jax could tell that she hadn't eaten for a long time as he couldn't see any muscles on the girl. Turning towards the merchant and buying two pieces of bread, he took the girl's hand and walked to a small bench not far from him. Taking one of the two loaves of bread he had just bought, he gave it to her. Here, eat this. He said in a gentle voice. Seeing the girl start to eat, Jax smiled slightly and sat silently next to her as she ate rapidly. So, can you tell me your name? Asked Jax as he looked at the girl who was looking at the second piece of bread in his hand. I'm Serrano. Said the girl in a small voice as she kept staring at the food in front of her. Nice to meet you. I'm Jax. He answered while handing out the food in his hand. Do you have any family with you? He asked again as he tried to understand her situation. He could feel some magical power in her. So, if she didn't have anywhere to go, he would bring her back to fairy tale. I'm looking for my sister. She is called Yukino. You wouldn't know her would you? Asked the girl as she took a moment to answer in between two mouthfuls of food. No, I never heard of someone of that name. Answered Jax as he shook his head. I see. I don't think she is in this town so. I'll leave soon and look somewhere else. Added the girl with a faint sight. Well, before that, let me help you out a bit. Smiled Jax as he took her hand. The two spent the afternoon together as Jax helped her buy new clothes and had her take a bath in the public bath while he waited at the exterior. He could tell that the girl went through a lot, and he helped her on a whim. Anyway, he had time to waste before starting his next mission. In this way, the two spent a week together. They spoke a lot together and they learned a lot about each other. Jax had to wait for the client to arrive while Serrano was looking for her sister. He used this time to bring her back to her feet and help her take a few pounds, not to be only bones. A week later, the two of them parted ways as Serrano left for another city while Jax's mission client had arrived in town. However, before they did, Serrano gave Jax one of the few pictures she had of her sister, asking him to look for her during his travels while she promised to keep a look at the Golden Celestial Spirit Keys, something he was searching for. At the beginning of August X777, while Jax returned from a job, he met a woman on the road. However, that typical encounter that shouldn't have been spectacular was broken when the woman called out to him. Are you Jax from Fairy Tale? Asked the woman as she called with a hopeful tone. Yes, I am. What can I do for you? Asked Jax as he turned and stared at the women who didn't release strong magical power. He was quite surprised that she had managed to recognize him. My name is Grammy, and I just came back from the Alvarez Empire. I heard that you were strong. I want to request you to bring back my daughter, her name is Brandishu, and she is ten years old. 
The Alvarez Empire wants to train her to become one of their members, and she was forcefully taken away from me. I know that you are collecting celestial keys, and I would pay you with the Aquarius key. Said the woman in one go as she showed the golden celestial key to Jax. She wasn't scared that he would steal it since she had a contract with the spirit, and Jax wouldn't be able to make use of it even if he got it. As Jax was planning on rejecting since the Alvarez Empire was an enemy of the entire continent, and it was equally dangerous to go over there, Jax threw his rejection out the window the moment he saw the key. Sure, I'll go and bring her back. Do you have a picture or something so that I can identify her? Asked Jax as he kept looking at the key intently. Yes, here. Nodded the woman as she showed the picture to Jax. She was surprised that he would quickly agree the moment he saw the key. However, it didn't matter as she only wanted to get her daughter back. All right, where do I meet you when I found your daughter? Asked Jax as he looked at the woman. I'll wait for you here if it takes less than a month. Answered the green-haired mother. All right, I'll be back as soon as possible. Nodded Jax as he made his way towards the Alvarez Empire. Of course, he didn't forget to contact the master to inform him of the job he received. In this way, two weeks rapidly passed, Jax entered and searched for his mission's target. He didn't bother wondering whether the girl he was planning on saving was the women's daughter. After all, no one would offer a golden celestial spirit key for the kidnapping of someone. Finally, after searching for a long time, he found the girl in the Alvarez Empire Center. At that time, she was alone, learning how to control her magical power. Confirming that there wasn't anyone near her, Jax appeared next to Brandishu, a girl a bit younger than himself. Who are you? Asked the girl as Jax could see her getting on her guard. Pardon me, are you Brandishu? Do you know someone called Grammy? Asked Jax as he stayed far from the girl to let her calm down. Yes, I am, and she is my mother. Answered the girl as she frowned, wondering how he could know them both. I see. I was asked by your mother to come and bring you back to her. She said something about the Alvarez Empire taking you forcefully from her. Added Jax as he once again confirmed that his surroundings were clear. Impossible, my mother is dead. Said the girl a bit louder while some tears flew down from her eyes. Frowning, Jax used his nature magic to create a lifelike statue of the women who gave him the mission. Is this your mother? He asked while sending the figure towards the girl with air magic. Catching the piece of wood sent by the boy in front of her, Brandish looked carefully and slowly nodded after seeing that the statue was a perfect replica of her mother. Yes, she is my mother. She answered as she looked at Jax with tear-filled eyes. In that case, your mother is still alive since I saw her two weeks ago, and she sent me here to get you. She is paying me with the celestial key of Aquarius. Jax added as he tried to make her believe him. She's paying you with the Aquarius key. Repeated the girl while her eyes gradually became larger. All right, can you bring me to her? Asked the girl as she immediately got up from her chair and came closer to Jax. Her eyes were filled with enthusiasm as she learned that her mother was still alive, contrary to what the Alvarez Empire told her. Yes, let's go right now. It's better to leave while no one noticed us, or it would get complicated. Answered Jax as he took her with his air magic and used light magic to hide their bodies by reflecting the light. He was quite shocked at the speed she believed him. However, Considering the few proofs he had and she seemed like the kind of person who would trust anyone easily, she followed him without complaining. In this way, three days later, they both arrived back at Fiori, and Jax managed to complete the mission, granting him his first golden celestial spirit key. Thank you for the help, Jax. Said Brandishu as she saw Jax ready to leave. No problem. Also, since you have such powerful magic, if you want to continue training it, feel free to come and join the fairy tale guild in Magnolia. It is the guild I am in. Smiled Jax as he petted Brandish green hair with his hand while looking at her mother, who gave him the job. If you don't have any place to go and Brandish wants to come, feel free to come to fairy tale as well. I heard from the master that we are always looking for new workers in the guild. Thank you. I don't know for Brandish, 
but now I have to go and see my previous employer and explain to her why I don't have the key anymore. Answered Grammy with a weak smile on her face. I see. In that case, I hope you have a good day. Smiled Jax as he slightly bowed his head as he turned around and flew in the direction of Magnolia. Chapter 55 Finally, after a long time, Jax returned to the guild. As he entered through the familiar doors, Jax looked right and left, and sure enough, another brawl was going on. Rolling his eyes, he made his way towards the bar counter to meet with the master. While walking towards the master, he looked around and saw Urza at a table eating her strawberry cake. Smiling, he decided to meet her first since it had been a while since he had seen her. However, as he was approaching her, he saw a chair smash her entire cake. Seeing his favorite red-haired getting angry, Jax also frowned before amplifying the sound around his hand and clapping it. The clap created a shockwave around his hands which knocked down all the brawling members and quieted them down as they turned to see Jax with a black face. Of course, with the careful use of his magic, he had made sure to keep Urza safe from the shockwave and also everything behind the counter as he didn't want to trouble the guild workers. As Jax slowly looked at them one by one, he was about to start talking when a pink-haired boy suddenly rushed and punched him from nowhere while shouting at him. Frowning even more, the members all around the guild could only express sympathy to the new member as they slowly backed off before Jax blocked the hit and slapped him towards the guild wall and used his nature magic to hold him into it with only his head out. Not bothering to spare a glance at the boy, Jax looked at all of them. I don't care if you fight in the guild. You can hit each other as much as you want but don't come crying to me when you want to heal a broken arm or leg. Jack said calmly. The members slowly relaxed as they thought it would be worse. However, Jax wasn't finished yet. However, one of you just smashed Urza's strawberry cake. Added Jax with a nasty look while he was looking at the members. Is there still someone who wants to fight here? I'll accompany you. Said Jax, as his nature power started to radiate all around him. As everyone was backing away, Jax used the opportunity to repair the chairs, tables, walls, roof and floor to bring them back to the way they were before. If you have nothing to do, go and complete jobs. The board is full. I can't believe you won't find something interesting. Finished Jax as he walked towards the bar to get Urza another strawberry cake the worker had already prepared. Hi, Urza. It's been a while. He said while getting down and giving her a quick kiss on the lips as he sat next to her while giving her a new cake. Hum, taste like strawberries. He added while licking his lips. Hi, how were you? You were supposed to come back almost three weeks ago. Answered Urza while she blushed and stared fearfully at Jax. Yeah. However, I met a woman on the road, and she offered me an urgent rescue job. I didn't have time to come back before taking it. Explained Jax while explaining what he had done in this urgent job. While he was telling his story, he asked Urza curiously. Who's the new kid? While looking at the pink-haired boy who finally managed to get out of the wall and was getting irritated by Grey, who once again lost all of his clothes. He's Natsu Dragneel. The master found him and brought him back about a month and a half ago. He uses fire dragon slayer magic. Moreover, he says that the one who taught him this magic, is his father, a fire dragon. Explained Urza while eating her cake and snuggling with Jax, who she hadn't seen for a while. A dragon slayer, huh? I wonder when snow will evolve. Continued Jax in another topic. Right, where's that guy Simon? He was almost sticking to you before. What happened? Asked Jax as he took Urza's hand. Well, he went to search for his sister. Since getting out of the tower, he searched for her, and he found some clues not long ago. Maybe he'll find her this time. Smiled Urza. Well, it's good to find family. Smiled Jax as he nodded his head. At Jax said that he saw Urza lowering her head slightly. Why are you sad? Aren't we family? Asked Jax as he held Urza's hand a bit tighter. Lifting her head, she also held Jax's hand tighter as she hugged him him once again. Yeah, we're family. Smiled Urza, in a better mood. As the two were about to continue their conversation, 
they were interrupted by the master, who shouted from the other side of the room. Jax. I've got the perfect job for you. It won't take long, and you'll get two golden celestial spirit keys. He said while waving a job request in his hand. Approaching the master after giving a smile at Urza, he took the request and started to read it. Urgent, healing the magic deficiency disease. Mission level, S. Requirement, healer. Location, Hartfilia Conzern. Type of mission, healing. Details, my wife has the magic deficiency disease. I need someone to heal her from this disease as fast as possible as she doesn't have much time left to live. Countless mages have already tried, but no one has managed to heal her yet. Reward, two golden celestial spirit keys, the keys of Cancer and Taurus. Requester, Jude Hartfilia. Jax's eyes lit up as he nodded to the master. I'll take the mission master. I'll go immediately. Said Jax as he waved his hand at Urza, who saw him leave and flew in the direction of the Conzern at his fastest speed. He didn't want the mission target to die, or he wouldn't be able to get the reward. Moreover, he was certain that the mission was directed at himself since the rewards were the celestial spirit keys and not money. Moreover, considering that he was the only renowned healing mage who loved to collect those keys, it was easy to make the connection. It took him less than an hour before arriving at the job's location. He stopped in front of the enormous gates and knocked on them. The sun was still up, so he didn't believe that they wouldn't make him see the patient as soon as possible. As he waited for a while, the door opened only for Grammy to appear on the other side. Mr. Jax, what can I do for you? She asked with surprise as she wasn't expecting to meet him so soon. They had parted ways a few hours earlier, and here they were meeting again. Hello, Miss Grammy. I am here due to the job requested by Mr. Jude Hartfilia. The job about healing his wife of the magic deficiency disease. Smiled Jax in surprise as he felt everything would be easy now that he knew the one who opened the door. Ha, yes. Please, come in. I'll immediately notify Mr. Hartfilia. She answered as she brought Jax inside of the manor and let him sit on one of the chairs while she went to get the master of the house. A few minutes later, a man arrived with great strides as he approached Jax. The man had a severe face as he judged Jax. However, Jax wasn't caring much about it as he looked back in the eyes of the man in front of him. So, you think you can heal her? Asked the man while exuding as much pressure as he could. Well, if I can't, there shouldn't be many people on this continent who could heal her. Freely answered Jax as he didn't bother about such a weak pressure. He nodded his head before turning around. All right, please follow me. After a few minutes, they arrived in front of a bedroom. There were two guards in front of the door, and they opened the doors when the three of them came. Entering the room, the first thing Jax noticed was the woman sleeping with a frown on the bed. She had beads of sweat dripping down her face as her face showed an unhealthy white color. Approaching her, he used his fairy magic on his palm and touched her neck, using this point of her body to conduct an inspection. After a while, he turned towards the two waiting. The man was distressed by this situation as he looked at Jax with hope. Well, I have both a piece of good news and a piece of bad news. Which one would you like to hear first? Asked Jax with a slight smile. Bad news first. Said the man as he looked intently at Jax. Well, the bad news is that those doctors that you hired previously, I don't know what they gave her, but it's making her condition worse, Jack said while shaking his head. The good news is that I can heal her. However, due to the previous doctors, I'll have to forcefully get rid of all those useless substances in her body. Explained Jax as he looked at the man. So, do I start? Jax asked as he saw that the man wasn't answering him. Yes, immediately. Almost shouted the man as Jax nodded and turned towards the woman and took off the sheets covering her. Using his fairy magic on his hands, he started to press at her heart to inject magical power into her body. The magic deficiency disease was an overdraft of the magic power in the body, hurting her vitality and blocking her from absorbing magical energy in her body due to the state of the magic container in one's body. 
It could be said that by overusing her magical power, she had almost destroyed the magical container, stopping her from keeping magic in her body and healing her lost vitality. As such, the first thing he did was to heal the magic container in the body before moving to the rest of her body and expelling the harmful substances from her body. By the time he was done, a disgusting smell had spread through the room as some black substances came out of her pores. However, at the same time, her body could be said to be better than before she did her magic overdraft, making it a blessing in disguise. With everything done, Jax used some water magic to wash the black substances and used his fire magic to dry her up before using his air magic to place the sheets back on her and clean the room's air. It shouldn't be long before she wakes up. Explained Jax as he saw the worried look of the man and Grammy. And just as he was explaining, the woman behind him slowly woke up and sat down in her bed. Her face was full of colors, and she stopped sweating. Half an hour later, after saying his goodbyes to the requester, the lady and Grammy, who he once again invited to send Brandishu to Fairy Tale, he made his way back to the guild with two new golden celestial spirit keys. Now, the only thing he wanted was to go and sleep with Urza for the night. No bullshit were going straight through the plot. Let's go. Chapter 56 From the moment he collected the second and third golden celestial spirit key, not much happened. He went back to his daily life. Sleeping and making out with the girls, completing jobs and completing some paperwork for the master when he was too drunk to do it himself. As for the new member, Brandishu decided to join Fairy Tail as recommended by Jax. She also started to live in the mansion which hosted almost all of the new generation of members. As for the exterior of the Fairy Tail Guild, Jax met Serrano once more. She had joined a dark guild, Oration Cease but made sure that she did not commit any crime as to not become a criminal. Her goal was to use the Dark Guild to search for her sister. In addition to this, at the beginning of X778, Snow finally came back from Dragon Island with success. Indeed, in the beginning of January, a bit after the new year, a dragon appeared for the world to see. Snow, who had spent a long time in Dragon Island had managed to complete her evolution, becoming one of the few dragons still alive across the world. After her evolution, her scales had turned completely whitish-blue with some purple patterns similar to lightning. With two large wings, four legs and a mouth full of sharp teeth, she evolved into a predator at the top of the food chain. However, thankfully, the telepathic link was still perfect. With a lot of work and conversation from Jax, the Magical Council and the Near Kingdoms all approved of him owning a dragon pet. The Magic Council became quite insupportable during the negotiations since they believed a dragon to be too dangerous and that the Magic Council should be in total control of it. However, when explaining everything he did for Snow to evolve, they couldn't forcefully occupy Snow since Jax was the one who hatched her and bought the necessary resources which easily went over a hundred million jewels. In the end, despite the uncounselable gred towards Snow from the Magic Council members, they couldn't do anything after the royal families of various kingdoms spoke for Jax. Finally, after everything was completed, Jax could freely ride Snow, the pet he had invested so much into. In the beginning of March X778, Jax for the first time rode in the air on his own beautiful personal pet dragon. This was a scene recorded in Fairy Tale as Redus took the time to paint the scenery as every members were around Snow with Jax sitting on top of her. It was worth noting that Natsu, the personal dragon scare of Fairy Tale, tried to sneak attack Snow only to get sent flying by a movement of her wing. All right, let's go, Snow. Patted Jax as he sat on a saddle specifically made for riding Snow. Roar! Roared Snow as she flapped her wings rapidly and rushed into the clouds. Riding on Snow was obviously easier than flying around with his air magic and a lot more comfortable and fast as well. All right, let's visit the kingdom of Fiori," said Jax telepathically as he decided to let Snow decide their next destination as he wanted to spend time with her. After all, he hadn't had much chance to ride on her before her evolution as he was always on a mission or she was too small. However, now that she completed her evolution, they were free to complete jobs together. In this way, the two spent hours flying freely in the sky and showing the civilians a true dragon, something one could only hear in legends previously. 
Thankfully, the kingdoms had sent some news out explaining the appearance of snow to stop the civilians from feeling fear. Finally, as they were planning on going back to Fairy Tail, snow descended and flew next to the ground in the desert, making sand fly up in the air due to the wind. Thankfully, with snow becoming an ice lightning dragon, the temperature of the desert didn't become bothersome as there was always a fresh breeze around her which prevented him from feeling the heat of the desert. As they were flying through the desert, Jack saw from afar a group of three walking in the desert. They seemed to be unprepared as none of them had clothes suitable for this and the boy wore a lot of luggage. However, as he looked at them, he could tell that none of them had drunk water in a while since they didn't have gourds and they seemed to be ready to fall at any moments. Snow, slow down for a while and let's go see those three. Said Jax telepathically as Snow also noticed the three far away thanks to his great eyesight. She then made her way towards the three young teenagers who still didn't notice Snow due to the sandstorm that came with her appearance. Getting off of Snow who would scare the three, Jax used his air magic to approach the three wanderers. Hey, are you guys okay? Asked Jax as he approached them from the air and stayed at a certain distance from the three who seemed to be ready to fall at any moments. Turning to look at Jax, the first girl, a white-haired girl, looked provokingly at Jax. Do we look like we need help? She asked while looking proud despite the obvious thirst she felt. I don't know I was just asking. Besides, seeing that you are currently walking towards the center of the desert without water, I figured that you might. Explain Jax gently while looking at her with a teasing smile. He had recently taken to tease girls and that cute girl seemed to be hot-headed. Yeah, that's where we were going. Do you have a problem with that? She asked again while thinking about rectifying her path after the boy left. No, feel free to go there. However, considering that to traverse the entire desert will take you almost two weeks on feet, you should reevaluate whether you have enough water and food. Nodded Jack sagely once again, making the girl lose her calm. Just as the girl was about to retort once again, the younger girl of the trio, wearing a pink dress, spoke before she had time to retort. Sister Mira, stop. We've already been walking in the desert for a whole week and we almost have no provisions left. She said before turning towards Jax who was still flying in the sky. Please pardon my sister, she's always like that. She apologized before continuing. Would you be kind enough to tell us which direction we should take to go to the fairy tale guild? She asked while looking hopefully at Jax. Her sister who should be named Mira wanted to once again interrupt but the younger girl gave her a look which stopped her from talking as she simply looked at Jax with an hateful face. As for the third person of the trio, the man, who was holding all the bags, he simply kept silent while looking at everything happening. Yeah I know where is the fairy tale guild, I'm a member of the guild. Smiled Jax as he looked at the younger of the two sisters. Are you going there immediately? He asked as he looked at the youngest girl. Yes. She nodded again while looking hopeful once hearing he was a part of the magic guild. Well, it's that way. While pointing towards the east. It's not towards the center of the desert. He added, with a grin towards the hot-tempered sister. It seemed to have hit a sore spot as the girl immediately turned angry. Come down of there you bastard, I'll kick your ass. She shouted while holding her fist tight. With a light chuckle, Jax turned his attention back to the younger girl as he slowly got down to the ground to continue messing with the cute and angry older girl. So, are you going to fairy tale immediately? It will take you about a week at your traveling speed. Do you want me to bring you guys there? He asked while easily catching the fist of Mira and pulling her in his arms before hugging her and looking down on her, their face in front of each other. Am I bullying her? Nah, she was the one who attacked me first. Let's continue. Thought Jax as he continued his conversation with the well-mannered sister. Seeing her trying to get out of his arms, he smiled a bit more and found it fun to tease her as he tightened his hold on her without giving her a single glance before looking at the younger girl who couldn't feel any malicious feelings from Jax. Well, it would be appreciated. She nodded as the boy also nodded his head rapidly, hearing that someone strong like Jax would bring them to fairy tale. In his opinion, Jax was strong since he could stop his sister as if nothing happened. All right then, Lou. 
Jack started talking only to be interrupted by the angry girl in his arms. Bastard, let me go. She shouted as Jax gave a slight smile before turning his head and ignoring her again. As I was saying, follow me. He said while flying in the air towards snow with the girl still in his embrace. Are you sure, you still want me to let go? He asked with a smile as he purposefully looked down at the ground. Yes, let me gee. She said before stopping mid-sentence as she saw the ground far from her. Don't let go. She said as she clung on him. Well, that's better. He laughed as he took the girl in a princess carry position and flew near the two younger siblings of the girl. Mira, are you alright? Asked the younger girl, seeing her silent in Jax's arms. I I am fine. She replied with a blush on her face which made her younger sister smile. Right, what are your names? Asked Jax as he still didn't know them. I'm Lee Sanna. The girl in your arms is Mira Jane and he is Elfman. Ha, nice to meet you three. I'm Jax, a mage of fairy tale. He nodded to the two still walking on the ground. All right, we're almost there. Smiled Jax mysteriously as he saw the confused look of the three. Meet Snow. He said as they walked over a mound of sand. I say that a dragon. Shouted the three of them at the same time. Yes, she's Snow, my dragon pet. He nodded at their words. Let's go. He added as he used air magic on the two on the ground to make them fly on the saddle of Snow. Will you let me down? Asked Mira Jane in his arms while looking up at Jax. Nope. He answered with a bright smile and holding her a bit tighter on him. That's your punishment for trying to hit me. He added while looking down on her with their face close to each other. All right you two, hold on to the saddle, don't worry you won't fall. He said before giving a mental command to Snow. Snow, we're going back to fairy tale. Don't like the interaction. I really don't care anymore, uh huh. Chapter 57 From the moment Jax brought back the three siblings to fairy tale, the guild changed noticeably. Urza entered a competition with Mira Jane, Natsu calmed down and spent more time with Lisanna, Gray spent more time training since Natsu wasn't bothering him anymore. As for Elfman, the brother of the two Strauss girls, he spent some time training with Gray, trying to control his magic correctly. Overall, a lot happened in the guild. Following their arrival, Jax offered the new members to stay at the house, housing most of the new members of Fairy Tale. From that moment on, Jax turned back to his training. He trained in the morning, and in the afternoon, he spent some time with the girls, going on dates. Not surprisingly, traveling across the continent on snow with a girl was indeed one of the best dates he could offer her. As for the evening, he went to sleep and cuddled with the girls, who now surprisingly had to make space for Mira Jane on the bed. The reason she was coming to rest with him was that he had to take responsibility for holding her for so long while they flew on snow. In his opinion, he was simply too awesome and had attracted her attention. Of course, Jax wouldn't be the one rejecting her. Their bed went from four to five with Jax, Hijui, Kana, Urza and Mira. However, when the girls all went into bed and wanted to sleep next to him, Jax could only conclude that the mattress didn't have more place with the four girls. Moreover, he could also confirm that he was indeed a lucky man. The relationship between him and the girls got closer as the guild members could often see them kissing everywhere. The only thing they did not yet do was the last step, as the five of them were still a bit young. Moreover, Jax was the only one who could stop Urza and Mira from fighting everywhere. However, he could also tell that despite their constant glare, they still cared for each other as they never went overboard. Their competition never stopped and for anything as well. Urza was turning into someone who followed every rules as much as possible while Mira Jane turned into a small hooligan. Apart from this, the relationship between Natsu and Lisanna seemed to be improving, especially from the moment Natsu appeared with a supposed dragon egg, and Lisanna decided to help him hatch it. Secretly, Jax had Snow verify whether it was a dragon egg as he had her sniff the egg. As a dragon, she would be supposed to be able to tell whether it was an egg from her kin. In the end, the result was negative which Jax found was unfortunate but dragons had been extinct for hundred of years and for a dragon egg to still exist would be surprising. 
Time continued to flow as in April X778, Jax finally added the fourth pearl to all of his different magics. It significantly increased his strength as his magic reached the level of the four gods of Ishgar. The reason he could tell he had this strength was that he once saw a god of Ishgar in action, indeed a spectacular and rare show. From May X778 to December X779, some things happened. The first thing was the ever-increasing relationship between him and the girls. At this point, there wasn't a need to say it as Jax loved the four girls as much as the girls loved him. Their dates went over the entirety of the continent, and they often came close to go over the line, doing what should only be done between husband and wife. In addition to this, Jax finally found and saved the younger sister of Sorano, Yukino Agria, during a mission. She lived in a poor orphanage where she was often humiliated by the caretakers and the other children. As such, he didn't leave her there but brought her back to Fairy Tale, offering her a place to learn magic and live freely. In the beginning, she was wondering why he helped her. It was only when he mentioned knowing her sister and keeping a lookout for her that she understood and came with him, which made him sweat since it had been easy, way too easy. Seeing this, he decided to protect her and not let her get kidnapped by some bad people. As for the orphanage, he sent some news to the King of Fiori, who was more than happy to send some people to take a look and deal with it. For Yukino, as he brought her back to Fairy Tale, she mentioned wanting to learn true magic and not fake magic such as celestial magic as she called it. Jax was more than happy to teach her water magic, magic she was surprisingly good at in exchange for the Libra and Pisces keys, which were in her possession. Finally, in X779, Urza became an S-rank mage of fairy tale as she had everything for her, power, respect and love for the guild. In X780, following the capture of the hero of Rubengard, Jax was sent on an urgent mission of the Magic Council to go and capture the Dark Mage Zoldio. Many things happened on the way, which included destroying over a dozen of Dark Guilds, much to the job of the Magic Council. However, in the end, he found his way to his target, beat him up until even the Magic Council couldn't recognize him with a wanted poster and took the Celestial Key of Capricorn. Talking of Zoldio, it was necessary to mention Grammy, the mother of Brandishu, who had managed to survive an attack from the Dark Mage. This threat was also everything that Brandishu needed to join Fairy Tail to increase her magic strength and magic control. In addition to this, that year's S-Class exam was won by Kana, who had been training with Jax for a long time. With this, she completed one of her dreams and took her courage to talk with her father, Gildarts, who was surprisingly happy to learn that he had a daughter. Chapter 58 Following the promotion of Kana as an S-rank mage, nothing interesting happened in the following few years. From the guild side, Gildarts took the most challenging and deadliest mission there were, the Hundred Years' Quests. And even though he was happy to learn that he had a daughter, nothing would stop him from adventuring the world and complete dangerous missions. This had always been a truth for him as he always left his various women behind. So, although Kana was extremely sad, Jack still took it upon himself to give him as many bracelets as necessary to guarantee his safe return. Following this significant event, another one shook a few magical guilds. In July X781, a fight started between Serrano and a celestial wizard, Karen Lilica as the latter wanted to steal the golden celestial keys that she had collected for Jax over the years. The celestial wizard had supposedly found that Serrano or Angel as she called herself was in possession of the golden celestial keys and tried to take her down as take the keys for herself. Unfortunately, due to her strongest celestial key not following her commands, she quickly lost and was beaten by Serrano who had gotten a lot stronger over the years. A lot happened through this encounter but everything ended with Jack stopping his friend from trashing the girl and him getting four golden keys, the keys of Leo, Ares, Scorpion and Gemini. Moreover, after bringing back Karen to her guild, which was a mission released by Bob, he brought back Serrano to Fairy Tale as he was currently taking care of her sister he had previously found in an orphanage. That year, right after bringing Serrano back to the guild, Jax took the information Serrano had on her dark guild and went to take them down. He only truly took the guild master down as the others, after being beaten down by Jax decided to join Fairy Tale. Despite being a dark guild they were not labeled as criminals since they had yet to do any criminal acts and only their leader had done something worth the prison or death punishment, which he received during Jax's attack. 
A few months later, the S-Class promotion exam happened with both Mira Jane and Brandishu becoming the new S-Class mage of Fairy Tail. At this point, Fairy Tail had ushered in its best years as S-Class mages kept popping up in their guild. At this point Mira and Brandish were the 6th and 7th S-Class mage of the guild but it was only up front Asthir were still a few members who hadn't been promoted yet. Those members were a few of the previously Oration Cease members. Continuing over the years, in March X782, Natsu and Grey who saw many members promoting to S-Rank decided to steal an S-Rank mission which was the Galuna Island mission. After a long beating of Jax on the three members which included Happy, Jax took care to finish the mission after saving Grey's master, UR, who had been sealed in the Ice of Iced Shell. To reverse the curse of the woman, Jax used almost all of his fairy magic, promptly countering the curse and healing her body which had been transformed into ice. Finally, after destroying the Red Moon, the goal mission of the job they took, Jax collected the Sagittarius key and brought back the members to the guild along with a completely lost UR, a crying Altair and Happy Mirdi. A month later was the S-Class exams which happens at each year's and Mistigan along with Serrano became the new S-Rank mages of Fairy Tail. It fueled the drive of Natsu and Grey, prompting them to become stronger faster. In August of the same year, Mira Jane took a new S-Rank mission to take down the beast and while they are overwhelmed by Elfman who lost control, Mira managed to save her dying sister and beat Elfman unconscious thanks to the magic bracelet Jax prepared before. This bracelet, managed to save the life of her little sister and prevented their family from being separated forever. The consequences of this mission was that Mira decided to protect the guild in her own way by becoming a waitress in fairy tale since she no longer cared about growing truly stronger and keeping her family safe and happy was more than enough for her. On the other side, this fueled her love for Jax as the bracelet he prepared saved her sister. This pushed their already hot relationship to the next level, going over the line. Jax and Mira Jane finally did the act which left her completely exhausted and happy while Jax only became more protective of his girlfriend. The fact that Jax and Mira went over the line also pushed the other girls for the following month as Mira, Urza, Kana and Hijui who learned the situation from her castle decided to stop restraining their affection for each others. This caused Jax to eventually feel exhausted as he conquered the four girls. Thankfully, his stamina allowed him to take care of the needs of his four little girlfriends who understood that anything could happen during a mission and became a lot more effective. And while the situation made all four girls extremely happy as Jax was able to keep all four of them completely filled. It also caused a major disturbance in the kingdom of Fiori as Jax became the boyfriend of Hijui with the intent to marry, this would make Jax the future king of Fiori along with Hijui as his queen. A month after the battle against the beast, Mira had Jax take Lee Sanna on a mission. She was hoping for Lee Sanna to get back her confidence through taking a mission with Jax who became the strongest of their guild. Mira herself, despite still having all of her powers didn't want to continue doing mission while Elfman still didn't get over the fact that he almost killed his younger sister. As such, Jax became the man of the situation as he brought Lee Sanna on a small and easy quest at the Everloom Mansion with the goal to bring back a book. Everything obviously went well as not many people could make Jax have it difficult and he managed to get the last celestial golden key, the key of Virgo. Possessing all twelve gold celestial keys, Jax managed to complete his goal and the moment he spread all twelve golden keys and the black key in front of him, all of them turned into light and entered directly in his mind. With a questioning look, Jax went back in his mind, to look at the statues which were situated there and he finally found the reason why he was so obsessed with the keys. He could find the twelve golden ones currently turning behind the giant statue with the black key standing still in the center of the turbillion of golden color. The situation didn't continue for long as a gate appeared in midair and the twelve keys stored themselves in the gate while the black one got straight in the middle. Finally, all that was left on the gate except the keys was a picture of the giant statue ingrained in the door. He seemed to come to an understanding as he would need to have all of his magics completed for the gate to open itself and probably reach another level of magic. He finally found the way to continue improving despite the statues which was previously limiting him in magical power. Following this, in April X783, four new members became S-rank wizards. Altoug in previous years, the master always tried to keep the number of S-rank mage low, he simply couldn't do it due to the strength of UR who was previously a wizard saint. 
Altair who had been one of the strongest of the Magic Council and a member of the Seven Kin of Purgatory, along with Cobra and Midnight who had been the strongest of Oration Seas. In June of the same year, Jax finally managed to increase all of his magic to the Fifth Pearl, bringing him to the strength of the strongest of the Spriggan. Yes, he had seen a fight amongst the Spriggan in the past and while he would have easily beaten the weaker of them, now with his power, he easily had the magic power to beat any one of them. The only one problematic would most likely be their unknown leader who he had never had the chance to see in the past. Now, the only way to improve his magic was by constantly making the seal of his magic which held the pearls on the groove fuse with the small statue which would then fuse with the bigger one. The goal of this Jax's guess was to make the magic a part of himself and not something he could only borrow from outside. The next step of the magic was to become one with it. In the following time, Jax noticed that the previous rivalry between Fairy Tail and Phantom Lord seemed to dissipate as if nothing happened as Fairy Tail grew in strength and they did not. In the end, it seemed that their master, Jose Porla became scared of their strength as their main base completely relocated after some threats to Fairy Tail. Through this, two of their S-Class members decided to abandon Phantom Lord as they didn't want to follow someone who could only talk and not act, something Jax learned a few days later as Gajil and Juviet joined Fairy Tail. In November of the year X-784, two important events happened. The first one being that Gildarts came back from its hundred years quest, Altoag alive, he had used all of the bracelets prepared by Jax and came back with both arm and one leg gone. He had supposedly met a large dragon during his mission which took an arm and leg from him. However, despite being injured he decided to continue the mission thanks to the help of Jax's bracelets. He was unfortunately extremely unlucky as he met a dangerous beast a few days later, making him lose his second arm. The only reason he managed to come back was thanks to the over 20 bracelets filled with magic prepared by Jax. Especially his air magic which allowed him to fly back to Fairy Tail after doing a basic healing using the fairy magic from the bracelet to close his most of his wounds and not die on the way. The moment he came back to the guild, he immediately crashed through the ceiling and fell unconscious in the middle of the guild hall. The brawl which had been going on seemed to immediately stop as everyone started to panic. Some people went to get the master while some did their best to keep Gildarts alive who despite healing most of his wounds continued to lose a large amount of blood. A few minutes later, as Jax was swimming in the pool of the house, Jet. One of the fastest members of the guild came running to the house and explained everything that happened to Jax who immediately used his light magic to teleport by becoming light itself and reappearing in the guild. After some extensive treatments, which only he across the continent was able to do, he managed to save Gildarts as he was previously hovering between life and death. The good things was that he wouldn't have any sequels and even his limbs were regrown by Jax. However, Gildarts wouldn't be able to go back on mission for at least a month as he had to recover. The second event was a few minutes after he finally finished Gildarts' treatment. Some sort of wormhole seemed to have taken everything into it along with him. At this point Jax was pissed as he had first been disturbed by Gildarts who was on the verge of death so it was okay. However, a few moments later when he was about to go back to relax, he was sent into another world. He didn't bother to make it complicated as he used his sound magic to locate anyone he knew across the kingdom which was made possible after started to fuse with his sound magic and he located Mystigan who wasn't that far from him. So, with a teleportation, he arrived in front of Mystigan who explained everything to him. As for everything that Mystigan considered complicated. Jack simply decided to trash everyone by taking care of the king and bringing back everyone through a reverse anima which included Mystigan who didn't have time to understand what was happening as he completed everything under 10 minutes. As for the consequences of that kingdom, it wasn't any of his business as what truly happened was only that magic disappeared from their world and their king died. Nothing much really as they could easily fill back the king position and the magic was already almost non-existent so they didn't lose much. Chapter 59 Finally, in December X-784, the S-Class trial once again happened. However, this here was different as everyone had to go to Tenru Island. For the master and the S-rank it was to go to the grave of the first sect master while for the others it was their S-Class mission. Nothing much happened at first since it was the same as all the previous years. However, at some point, they were attacked by a dark guild, Grimoire Heart. However, due to various situation, 
the renowned seven kin of purgatory were down to four along with the guild leader and the vice guild leader. As for the other three, well Oltair and Myrdi defected while Zoldio was unfortunately killed by him during one of his previous missions. As such, this guild which relied on its seven main members and countless dark guilds was reduced to such a state which was also majoritarily Jax's fault as he enjoyed taking down dark guilds. With this started. A one-sided fight. On Fairy Tail's side was, Makarov, Jax, Gildarts, Urza, Mira Jane, Kana, Brandishu, Serrano, Laxus, Mystigan, UR, Altair, Cobra and Midnight for a total of 14 S-rank mages with Makarov. Jax, Gildarts, UR, Altair, Laxus and Brandishu having the strength of the 10 wizard saints with Jax having the strength of taking the first place. On Grimoire Heart's side was, Hades, Blue Note, Azuma, Rusty Rose, Zancro and Kane. It was not even a one-sided fight as Jax took care of the master of the enemy guild in under half a minute while Blue Note was taken care of by Makarov and Gildarts. As for Azuma, UR and Mystigan took care of him. Rusty Rose was taken care of by Ultair who made all the objects created disappear with her time magic with Serrano to do the damage. Zancro was finished by Laxus and Midnight with Kane being ganged up by everyone else. It truly was a one-sided fight. They only managed to hold on for five minutes before every one of them were either crippled or killed. Due to the trial being interrupted, everyone packed up and went back to the guild. However, during the travel back, the Dragon King, Acnologia faced up against Jax as he was attracted by his strength. However, it didn't intend to talk as he immediately started to attack with Jax being able to barely hold him back thanks to his almost inexhaustible magic power. Finally, after some talking and a promise to fight again in the future when he became stronger against the King of Dragon who had been without opponents for centuries, everyone mommaged to go back to Fairy Tail unstopped. After all, once he killed all of the dragons and became one at the same time, his only goal was to find a true strong opponent to give it everything he had and maybe find back the excitement of battle. In the following year, Jax during one of his missions managed to meet one of the members of Tartaros, the only remaining guild in the Balam Alliance. After following him discreetly for a few days, he managed to find their headquarter, destroying every single demons of the Dark Guild and erasing the last trace of the Balam Alliance with it. With his strength, it wasn't even a challenge anymore. His only true opponent was Acnologia and maybe the leader of the Sprig gone back in the Alvarez Empire. Across the years, Jax and Acnologia met often, fighting to the death at the beginning. To sparring and eventually they became good friends as there weren't many people of their level across the world and having the chance to being friend with someone in a similar position was rare. After all, no one wanted to be lonely at the pinnacle of the world. In March X788, Jax having reached the pinnacle of this world in strength, after being in a relationship with Kana, Urza, Mira and Hijui for years decided along with them that it was time to take the next step in their lives. Indeed, they decided to get married. After two months of planning, Jax, along with Kana, Urza, Mira Jane and Hijui stood on the podium in front of an incredible crowd. They had recited their vows and kissed with the world as witness of their love for each other's. Fairy tale, along with the kings of all the kingdoms of the continent, the leader of the magic council with most of the wizard saints and even his new good friend Acnologia assisted to the greatest wedding of the century. The five of them, having reached a new step in their lives decided to calm down on the missions as they started to enjoy their lives together. As for children, they all agreed that it was a bit early as Jax wished to become one with his magics and become the strongest in the world before having children to protect. And finally, in the year X791, when he turned 27 years old, Jax finally reached the limit of the statue in his mind and became one with his magic, allowing him to open the gate. In the end, opening the gate brought him to a completely new level of magic as he mastered the world, became the god of fairies. End